What's up, Bird Dub Nation? Finally, I'm on now. Apologize for the slight delay, but there's still 2.57 to go in the uh, 96-95 Lakers game over there in uh, New Orleans. So we're cruising into this. Thank you to uh, Ruckus already in the comments talking about that stuff. Can can you guys vote or no? This sucks. Can you vote on this? Uh, is the poll working now? I think it might be a bug or undocumented feature <laughs> that you can't start a poll when you're not live, oddly enough. Let me know. So our bell says Zion is injured. Okay, anyways, the refs for tonight, James Williams, I like him, Gucci Mane. <laughs> the other two I'm not, I don't really care about. Aaron Smith, not. don't really think he's that good. Mar Marek Kogan, let's, let's hope that no refs get injured because uh, he's the worst. He's in my bottom five. Mark Lindsay, these, these two guys don't move the needle at all for me. Uh, but thanks, Ruckus, for listing the uh, the refs. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this poll is working. That means I need to retype it in. An error occurred. Oh shit! Yeah, start a poll. Yep, I wouldn't be able to start a new one. Anyways. Let's fix the poll. There we go. Error occurred. Oh, shit. I have to hit refresh, don't I? No, it worked. Okay. <laughs> Zero votes. <laughs> no, thanks for the details. All right. Yeah. So uh, if you're new to this channel, what I'm going to do here is the Manning cast. And hopefully we'll get Dean. Let's, let's at Dean in the comments. Is Dean around? Uh, Dean Chambers is not around. But... Maybe he'll be around. He said he's available, but didn't sound very, what do you call it, enthused to uh, join us. Um, really? Hey. Let me hit refresh then. How about now, Cholo? I hit refresh in the comment screen. If it doesn't work, I'll try one more time. Just starting all over. Yeah, it looks like zeros. Wow, we found an undocumented feature of YouTube. Bloomer in the house. Monet in the house. Uh, saw your comment where we don't want to light the beam. All right, let's end that damn poll. <laughs> oh, this is so frustrating. Hate grappling with technology. Hate it. <sighs> the 
Look at all this typing I'm doing for nothing, huh? It's not going to work, is it? Star pull for the third time. Oh, let's hope that works. Error and check quota. God, it's an undocumented, uh, undocumented feature, as they like to say. What are we doing here? Is that the end of the game? 50 seconds, Lakers up four. Vote didn't go through again. Oh. Why do I bother with this crap? Hold on, let me change uh, channels because uh, I forgot. I was on uh, NBC Sports Bay Area, and it's only on TNT, people. Uh, Pelicans down two, 38 seconds left. Okay, I've got 38.2 left. Uh, you two messing up? Have you experienced... Problems elsewhere. Oh, I, I keep wanting to tell people who are new here what it's all about. Um, do we really only have five concurrence on right now? Literally, literally can name them off. Uh, or is there a problem with the stream that has been maybe the poll screwed it up? I don't know. Here, let me see if I can, I don't know, log in as somebody else and see what happens. Um, how would I do that? I know. Let me check. Well, at least you can hear me <laughs> and see me. At least there's that. It's just the, the comments are one way. Test from my phone. Okay, I, I think it's working. Let's see, skip. Yep, I think it's working. So there's there's only four concurrence. I better just, it says I'm not subscribed to other channels. Weird, huh, okay. So it's just an overall problem with YouTube right now. And uh, forget that poll. That ain't working. Oh, well. That sucks. All right, Denzel. What's up? So uh, 38.0 seconds. Uh, Lakers ball, I believe. Uh, we'll just enjoy them biting their nails through that one. And because uh, we got our own problems. Well, I tried to do the poll three times, and I'm not going to do that again. Uh, it tells me we have five concurrence. Hold on. So let me refresh my StreamYard. <laughs> okay. Be right back. Refresh. Oh, Lord. Nerve-wracking. Okay, I'm back. Did, did that work? No, we still have five concurrence. Oh, well, I mean, just just from just from all the uh, comments, I'm pretty sure we have more than five. Uh, what happened? Anthony Davis got blocked or fouled? Okay, he got fouled. Finally added your like. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Oh, it went, it went up to seven. We have seven concurrence well then i can start all over and say if you're new to this channel i am going to do the manning cast our version of it 
of the uh, Warriors at the Kings playing game. Now we're down to five concurrence. It just doesn't make sense. It's like usually we have 20, 25 by now, but um, yeah, that's what I'm here to do. And I'm here to do it with the, I guess, third or fourth word in the title, which is positivity, which is we're not like your local radio station who is in it for the clickbait and wants to just throw up controversial stuff and throw warriors under the bus, throw Steve Kerr under the bus for a bad rotation or whatever. Like we're here to enjoy our lives. We're here to have positivity in our lives, not, not be all bitter about everything. Uh, Pelicans are down by four with 14.8 to go. So, um, looks like, looks like the Lakers pulled off, uh, the, uh, the unlikely, which is the go to new Orleans, win a one and done. And, and it looks like if we can beat the Kings tonight, then we would have to go to new Orleans, but per my poll that didn't work i think i would actually want to face the pelicans just because they're younger and they might have deer in the headlights right they might they might be like oh no we better not lose this one because that would be embarrassing for us to lose go from uh seventh all the way to out but that's just my theory and uh who cares we got to win this game that's about to happen right after the final buzzer here. Uh, so that's what we're about. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, so one more thing is the refs. Again, uh, thank you, Ruckus, for listing them way the heck in the beginning, though, I, I can't scroll up that far anymore, so I can't see it anymore. <laughs> oh, lovely. Let's try Top Chat. Top Chat doesn't get me to the refs either. Well, they need to shoot a three, don't they? CJ's going to get a two ball. 11 seconds, now they got a foul, and Austin Reeves gets fouled. So they got to hope Austin goes one for two. With 10 seconds left. But anyways, the refs are James Williams, a.k.a. Gucci Mane. Uh, and I got to do this all over again. But I have nothing else to do right now anyway. So, But my apologies to Ruckus as I am unable to go and uh, go up and uh, copy-paste your work. 14th season. That's surprisingly low. Uh, and then these guys, Mark Lindsay, not impressed by again. 17th season, but he's not a lead ref. What does that tell you, you know? And and then the third guy we've had problems with in the past. I don't know if you remember, but we've had problems. And I, I remember guys that we've had problems with, and this is definitely one of those guys. Oh, well, <laughs> just don't give a tech to Draymond, please, tonight. All right. Oh, I can watch it on my laptop here. Uh, they're down two with 3.4. Running out of time. Pelicans, the inbound. And they're going to call a foul with 2.7. Anthony Davis will go to the line. Just don't spoil. My lame YouTube TV live stream is pretty slow. Plus, I got the 30 sec delay from StreamYard. But we have 10 concurrence. Wow, that's it? Man, it's so small. Anyways. Ingram didn't play well, and Green sent him down. Wow. Willie Green. Yeah. Wow. All right. Here is the uh, clinching free throw, possibly. 
he got it. I saw my laptop. My TV is like an additional 15 seconds even further behind, sadly. CJ McCollum with a meaningless shot at the buzzer. Wow. Pelicans really lost at home. That'd be funny if we won as well. Both lower seeds win. That would be funny. That would be funny. Lakers will face the Nuggets in the first round. Wow. That, that is must-see TV as well. Oh, man. Gosh, we better win this game tonight because and, – and the next game, hopefully, at New Orleans on Friday. Is it Friday or Thursday? I don't want to know. I don't want to know what when the next game is because I don't want to look past this game. Anyway, man, if we don't if we don't get into a a playoff series, i.e., as the number eight seed against OKC, then what are we gonna watch, man? Do I really need to watch Nuggets Lakers? I mean, I would I would definitely I would definitely root for the Nuggets, obviously. Oops, I forgot to send Dean the stream yard. My fault. Okay, let's see. Uh, what are we doing here? Dean, oh, I lost my screen. Oh, that better not flicker all day and night. It's going to be problematic if that happens. So what happened to Zion? Was it, what kind of an injury was it? Oh, and I got a JD John Dickinson. Gotta send him the link as well. Okay, thank you to JVABC for liking my article right here, which I just put up there. By the way, did you know? Draymond drove the boat as well. Breaking news, Draymond drove the boat. So go check that one out. And uh, we shall wait for us to tip off. The game is on TNT. Oh, suddenly we have 43 concurrence. Hey, maybe, maybe YouTube is working. But I don't have a poll for you. So... Ah, Phoenix. Good call, Dean. Yeah. Even though it's boring. Yeah. Katie Love, even though their offense is so predictable. <laughs> Jasmine in the house. Yeah, I got Dean's number. Uh, anything but Lakers sons. Hey, Alan Watson, what's up? Winning ways in the house. Just fun to see people and Dean. Let's get Dean live now. Everybody tag him. Go. Tag Dean. Tag Dean. Nobody tag Dean. What's up with that? Oh, let me check my uh, DMs because uh, we got we got a hold of uh, strength and numbers, bro. But he's probably busy uh, uh, cheering his head off right now. Oh, trendy Trent is in the house. Trendy Trent in the house. Franco Finn is live on Instagram from Thrive City. That's pretty neat. I would not want to watch a game at Thrive City, man. Come on, guys. 
you can't be that lonely, please. You can't, you can't think that you're lonely and I got to go, nah, nah, stay in a comfortable house. Don't go to China Basin in San Francisco. Sorry, uh, Warrior COO, if you're watching this, because like, I know that's that's not what you like to hear. <laughs> and local businesses like Dumpling Time over there. I know, I know you don't want to hear that, but it's like, dude, stay safe. Uh, watching a game at Thrive City to me is is uh, it's too cold. It's just too cold over there. That's just my own personal opinion. We're gonna tip off pretty soon. Gonna tip off pretty soon. Don't forget to check my website. Thank you, JVABC, for liking it. The one like. Actually, that should be two likes by now because I like my own. Two likes. Yeah. Quality of likes, not quantity. Oh, man. Anyways, uh, where are you, dear Dean? Where are you? Oh, Zion was a menace. Oh, man. Too bad. All right. We are going to tip off. And it should be interesting to see just how well Keon Ellis plays in that backup role with uh, Herder out. Trace gets the start and loses the tip to Sabonis. No, it's off Keegan. Ah, he won the tip. All right. That's at the 2140 mark. Uh, one tip off Keegan. All right, Clay has the ball. It's uh, Stan Van Gundy on the call. Wiggins, Keon Ellis. Bye-bye, Keon. Oh, he had the drive. Go over to Draymond for three. Uh, good first step by Wiggs. Past Keon, really. Dre three corner. Three ball, Keegan. Oh, good. And, and Clay does the old shrug thing. Don't do that. Um, you know, because Dre let him shoot. Oh, and we get Trace on the back door, or really the cut on the roll, kind of. Uh, just Sabonis completely lost him. <laughs> uh, wow, I gotta, I gotta keep up, keep up with this. Uh oh, Keegan for three, back rim, no good. Whew. Draymond closed out that time. Clay gets a screen. He's got two guys on him, shoots it. What are you doing? Come on. <laughs> he couldn't, he couldn't resist. Golly. Good switch by uh Draymond, but Harrison finds Keegan for three. And I think Steph lost him. So that's Steph's fault. Finds Wiggins, corner. Oh, and he does the little twirl, uh, weird rotation, three ball. Good. Very good to see Wiggs. Strong coming out. Oh, Fox bricks it against uh, Wiggs. Wiggs gets a touchdown pass. Sabonis reaches in. It might have been off of Wiggins, but it might have also been a foul. They didn't call it. That's fine. I'll take it. I'll take it, man. I'll take it. So far, it's only been two minutes. Early challenge by Mike Brown. He's got a point. I think it is off of Wiggins. But it also could have been a foul. But I guess they're not going to call those early on, so whatever. Challenge Mike Brown. Thanks, Robbie. Appreciate you. PM Yushinkov. Welcome. We got some new names in here. Yeah. Love it. Uh, so far, two minutes played. Um, uh, best player has been Wiggins, which is, which is great. It's not like you want to pick a best player every two minutes. Who does that? I'm just saying, thank goodness. Seems like good wigs, knock on wood, uh, came to play. OK, 
cowbells yeah yeah clay can't help the shrug it, it makes you wonder if draymond just either missed an assignment or wanted to play with keegan's head because keegan is currently shooting what, what's my instagram here oh yeah the boat uh keegan is at Keegan Murray, BK Ref, 35.8%. Therefore, we can conclude Dre probably missed his assignment. Or with Clay, the exasperated shrug <laughs> on the Sabonis pick. But maybe Dre wanted to test Keegan, which, uh, you know, Dre does, the, does those risky things. John Mordak's tear. Yeah, super nervous. Should be. Feels good to be nervous, quite honestly, you know? <laughs> It's just, unfortunately, if we feel nervous and we lose, then we don't get to feel nervous for another, you know, really it's not that bad. We're going to get, you know, Steph in the Olympics. Not that bad this, this off season. Yeah, no turnovers, huh? Totally. What else are we talking about? Oh, hey, yeah, it's always good to to find other people around here who uh, want to just enjoy the game without blaming somebody all the time. Like, let me nitpick every play like I do. I'm literally keeping notes in the description if you haven't noticed. Go refresh your description. I'm keeping notes. I will run out of characters. <laughs> that should be a foul. Clearly off wigs, yeah. Stan Van Gundy's right, but they didn't call the foul on Sabonis. All right, you know, I'm I'm okay with it as long as you let us do that. So better let us do that. <laughs> you know, I'm a little, you know, a, a little nitpicky about that. All right. Uh, Draymond does a series of switches. Now it's Sabonis on Clay, Keegan. Draymond does close out, and Keegan goes in and misses the layup. Pretty good help by Steph. Pretty good help. All right. Oh, and Wiggins. Oh, he missed the layup, so we traded missed layups. Oh, we don't want missed layup, Wiggs. Fox dribbled off his foot. A little bit jittery. little bit jittery. Screen by Trace. Steph doubled in the corner. Stops his dribble. Finds Wiggins over to Clay. Fakes it. Gets held by Harrison. No call. Lob to Trace. No. Knocked away. Clay got it. Pick and roll Trace. Three balls. Clay. Oh, back rimmed it. Oh, well. Good sequence, Clay. Good try. Sabonis. Draymond. Trace is there. Uh-oh. Keegan shooting another one. Hit it. Come on, guys. You got to step out. That's Trace's fault. I'm looking at the replay. You got to get out. Man, it's uh, Murray 9, Warriors 8, Wiggins baseline. Good pass to uh, Draymond, but uh, Draymond airball. I mean, totally went off the palm of his hand. That was horrible. Keon Ellis over to Sabonis. Inside Harrison, fakes out Draymond. Drives, but Draymond does this patented recovery. It's a dunk by Fox. Let's watch Clay lose Fox completely. Yep. Clay lost Fox completely, so our defense sucks. <laughs> dunk put back. Good Lord. I got to put three asterisks on every bad defense. Trace throws the ball away. God, guys, I would call timeout. I would call it right now. 
Only down three. That's three bad plays in a row. You get seven timeouts. Come on. <laughs> like, come on, Steve. Grow some balls. Keegan, want now timeout? No. I guess we're going to let him just hit another one after this. I'm watching Keegan the whole way next time down. Uh, Draymond inside. Throws the ball away. I told you, you don't let the third or fourth in, the, in a row happen. Keegan for three. Missed it. And it's a foul on Keon Ellis climbing Draymond's back. Good, good box out. Four bad basketball plays by the Warriors in a row. If I ever bump into Steve Kerr, um, Kaminga in for Clay and Trace. Honestly, they played the worst. Actually, Draymond has been playing well, except for the three ball. But Clay, nah. Maybe one good defensive play. Good pass to Trace, he was. Yeah. Oh, Steph goes down the lane, wanted a foul, threw the ball up, and it went in. <laughs> it's a goat banker. Fox pushes it up, and Draymond's there to meet, meet him. So we got switches. Kaminga has to guard Sabonis. Could have been an and one. He scored anyways. Uh, good job by J.K. not to draw a foul. But, uh, yeah, you got switched immediately. So we're down 15-10. And nearly a turnover, they want to complain again. But hey, bros, you guys, you guys fouled Wiggins on that one. Turn the turn the momentum around on that. Of course, we should have called timeout, but so uh not good defense by us so far, I would I would say. Um, I, I think maybe a little bit deer in the headlights by Trace. Somebody held uh Keon held Brandon no call uh weak side. Draymond goes by Fox, blows a layup. You got to make those. That's two blown layups. Good move, but blew it. Keon throws the ball away to Dre. Dre makes up for it. Kaminga loses it. Jitters. Kaminga tried to get downhill. Will fade away too. Made up for it. Way to go, Kaminga. Oh, thank goodness. Fox for two. Good. Over Brandon. Steph hasn't even shot the ball yet. Well, no, he shot that one time, but he thought he was fouled. So, anyways, 532, 531, 530. Draymond to Steph. Steph, hero ball. Why? <laughs> We're not good coming out. It's, it's a good thing our defense is meh, okay, here and there. Draymond Sabonis, one-on-one, -on -one, scores. Good score by Sabonis. 19-12. Kerr finally calls timeout, and Draymond's arguing to Lindsay isn't going to work. That's why I don't like Mark Lindsay. You, don't, you can't talk to some of these people. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed by the non-timeout call. Uh, Keegan Murray uh, and uh, Trace messing up multiple times. Um, so we deserve this seven-point deficit, but maybe it's a wake-up call. Thankfully, it's a long game. Thankfully, you know, just play 12 minutes and that's it. You know, one time I remember um, the Indopac community, uh, they they would have a tournament and they change the rules such that the pool play games would be like 20 minute games just to establish that. And I'm like, thank goodness I don't have an Indopac team because I would never go for that. Like a real game is like a whole game. So we we came out. We sucked on defense. That's why we're down seven and the jitteriness of Trace. Uh, but it's only, you know, 
less than seven minutes have passed. So everybody relax. So the good news, plenty of game left. The bad news, we, we came out and uh, Trace had deer in the headlights and uh, Clay rushed a shot. And uh, everything changed after the Wiggins uh, thing that wasn't called a foul. Uh, so they're, they're going to play physical, and we haven't really matched that yet. So uh, problems, although less than seven minutes have passed only. Uh, TJD Deer in the headlights. Uh, Clay, bad D, bad shot. Um, Physicality on wigs and challenge was successful. Um, some porous defense. Um, all reasons we are down seven at this timeout. Turning timestamps on. What does that mean? Uh, let's see. Yeah, well, the, the closeout, I mean, you, you can't close out if you're running back on D after Draymond throws the ball to the other team. So... It's, I would say it's it's bad offense and some lazy defense. Bad gamble, first bucket by Dre not to close, uh, not to close on Keegan. Then horrific defense by Clay to let Fox dunk. Dunks change the game. So, yeah, you have every right to be pissed. Uh, Looney's in the game. Over to Steph. Gets picked by Keon. Looney fouls him 94 feet later. It's our veterans. Uh, it's our veterans and, and Trace having a little deer in the headlights right away. Yep. In retrospect, where where's all the Steve Kerr haters? In retrospect, if if I was being a Steve Kerr hater, I would be saying should have started Looney, given what transpired. But no one's gonna say that, right? Did anybody say that in our comments? See, but like, I don't, I don't hate Kerr. So I would have started Trace. I would have started Trace. I thought about that. I thought about making that a poll. In fact, I can see reasons why both. Uh, Wiggins misses Steph on the flare and then gets picked from behind out of bounds on the drive. But he had Steph. Baseline inbound, down nine. Hopefully that one stretch we just saw doesn't cost us the game. Steph finally gets free after a long delay, and he curls around, scores the layup. Good job by Wiggins. Eventual Steph curl three. Now we got a D up, Keon. Back to Sabonis. We leave him open as Looney does. Hand off Keegan. Good job by Brandon. They're not calling the holding, so that's good. <laughs> that would be a regular season foul. Sabonis so in and out from three, no good. JK downhill, doubled, and uh, he, he got swatted. You got to change that up. <sighs> Youngsters. Fox scores from two, you know. He probes and he jumps from 15 feet and he hits those. Fox gets picked, picks uh, Wiggins. 
And what, we're not going to call timeout again? Is that what we're doing? Still no timeout. Just, I don't understand that, but whatever. Looney loses the ball, and they finally call a foul on Sabonis. Although I, you know, I I wouldn't have called that a foul just because it's already been established. It's physical, but hey, we need a break. So we got the break we needed. Down 10 very early. Very, very disappointing performance. But we've seen it all year, and uh, – this is what we are. I, I think it's just growing pains of the integration of the new guys. Steph's going to come out exasperated a bit. You know, he wants to play and he knows he hasn't played well. I mean, he has five points. That's playing well. Times four, that's 20 points a game. That's pretty good. But like he lost the ball completely to Keon. BP will shoot a three. He's ready for the big stage. Manu Ginobili style scores a three. <laughs> Manu nerves of steel. Wow, they didn't call JK for the trip of Fox. Incredible. <laughs> We're getting away with it. We're getting away with the uh, Nintendo way of, um, was that a foul or no? Uh, I don't know. Anybody call that? No, jump ball, BP Fox. Yep. Fox trip by JK, no call. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> the old uh, Nintendo uh, even up the game working in our favor. BP, nope. Keegan won the uh, tip against Clay. And Clay. Good job by Keegan to step back for the two. Did not get it. Draymond, good fight against Lyles to get the rebound. Good job, Dre. And kid JK tries to get downhill. Not quite. JK in the post. Spin fade. Tough shot. He wants a foul. Come on, kid. <laughs> You're not going to get that. And Davion's in there. He's going to shoot a three on CP3. No good. Draymond rebound. CP3 in there. With Clay. Oh, crosses over. Bye-bye, Davion. Kicks it out. Draymond will shoot the three. No good. Down by seven. Feels like worse. Fox Clay. Fox shoots a three. Might be a two, but no. No good. That's kind of his weakness is that threes don't always go down. But I'll bet you at the timeout, if I look it up, he's got pretty good. Clay misses a three on the catch from CP. No good. Outlet Davion wants to go downhill. He slips. And Chris does not object. Probably tripped on Chris. And it'll be side out. Aaron Smith made the call. 150 to go. Down seven. Yeah, just, just got him on the uh on the foot. Uh, which is odd because that's the exact same call. JK should have been called on to Fox, but it doesn't matter because they won the tip on that one anyways. Len over to Keegan. We switch, and they throw it away. Thanks, Keegan. Okay, take it. It's a rare turnover. 144 to go, down, uh, down seven. Steph on the bench. JK brings it up. BP tries to figure out what, what play we're running. CP, left wing. Pick and roll Draymond. Got the switch. Gets it to JK. Back to Draymond. Well-designed play. Well-designed play by Steve. CP to JK to Dre. Only down five. Considering it all. Fox on JK over to Len. Mid post. High post, really. Hand off Davion. Oh, we got too much space. Now we're on our heels. Lyles for three. Good. Ah, yeah, yeah. CP. Not good point of attack again. And Clay comes around, gets into Draymond again. Double pump scores. All right, Clay. 
Not bad, not bad. Down by six, 42 seconds. We're going to trap Fox. Davion in the middle. Misses it. Oh, got his own rebound. Oh, well. Now Fox. Hash mark against Clay. Uh, JK. Clay. Uh, inside. Nope. Goes to the corner to Keegan. No good. In and out. Len tips it. No good. JK. Come on. Get the ball. Keegan gets a reload three. You got to get the ball, JK. He just hasn't learned that. Golly. <laughs> just grab it. You have to want it. You have to jump and go get it. It was a little bit out of his reach. I'd love to replay that to see if it was like really his fault or not. But it, you can't really teach wanting the ball. Anyways, three seconds left. CP dribbling around at the buzzer. No good. And, and we deserve this. 31-22. Just... Uh, if, if we're going to play like this, you know, you, you got three quarters to correct this. But if we're going to play like this every quarter, I don't want to watch anymore. Like, that's just bad. So, and it's it's just growth. I, I think some of the mistakes we're seeing are a combination of being old and being young. I just don't know. I mean, that's our problem. That's really been the problem. Uh Anytime we've lost a game in the last, you know, we're, we're 27 and 11 close out the game. That's not too bad. So we're 16 games over. Uh, that's pretty good. But like those 11 losses, it, it's this. It's this, you know, very subpar basketball that, you know, just you see over and over. They're bad habits or they're skill development things that uh, got to be corrected. So why don't I come through on that promise and let's go clip that one where JK just couldn't quite get the rebound. Like if if BP and uh, and JK did a Freaky Friday, that's a rebound. That's a rebound, but uh, you know that didn't didn't work out for us. <laughs> It's just the timing. I mean, well, let's take a look at it. Um, hopefully the TNT timeouts last a long time because uh, it's going to take a while to airdrop this over. So what can we learn next year? JK's got to learn to go get the ball, number one. Trace has to execute. Uh, in a high pressure game. Um, and the old guy's got to stop doing the old guy turnovers and or forget to play defense a la clay. And, uh, you know, those things can be corrected next year. Uh, but uh, right now we're just susceptible to it all the time. Uh, so let's show you what I mean by uh, just, I, I don't know what to make of this. Like, here you are. It, it tips around. Here's JK. The ball's going to get tipped. You, you just have to come up with that. You have to come up with it. You don't. Davion does. Reload, easy three. So, I mean, like, I don't know what to do other than to just get in a gym and do the old high school drill that I used to have, which is uh, first team to rebound 10 times without the ball hitting the floor wins and then you start getting used to the physicality and you come to welcome it and um you, you learn to be brandon pajemski you learn to go get the ball i mean i i hate to nitpick that but you know that's that's what we are but i'm not like mad about it or anything it's it's just literally that's just who we are now if if we somehow play out of our minds and JK and Trace suddenly mature within a game and goes and gets the ball and our old guys realize, oh yeah, I'm, I'm old. Maybe I shouldn't do those risky passes or maybe I should protect the ball better from this guy, Keon Ellis. Things love, like that. Can we do that in a game? Eh, I mean, it's possible. I don't know if, if Steve's going to suddenly adopt a uh, 
Popovich method of uh, calling timeouts when to stop momentum. But, uh, you know, there's a chance. By the way, great defense by J.K. against uh, Harrison. Good, good contest. Harrison missed it. Chris Paul, Trace. Bad pass, Chris Paul. Oh, my God. Says my bad. It's one of those, like, I don't want the my bad. I don't want the my, Just don't do it. Oh, my gosh. Gush, gushness. I don't know. I don't know what to say, man. So, the thesis of the night we look old and we look young. <laughs> There's some physicality. CP not letting Keon do a play. Davion gets, turns the corner. Missed it, though. Wow. We got away with that. Davion, maybe a little bit of lights, uh, deer in the headlights. Who knows? He, he was in game seven, though. Wiggs misses a three. We got numbers back, thank goodness. Harrison against Wiggs. Trace. Got to switch back, Trace. Switch back, Trace. Uh, he doesn't know how to switch back yet. Oh, man. The growing pains. But it's a foul off ball on Chris. Side out. Yeah, this is uh, not good. Down nine, Harrison. Way to play defense. Keep him in front, JK. Can Clay do it? Nope, he can't. It's against the slowest guy on the floor, Trey Lyles. Oh, my goodness. Oh, God. That's not that hard to stay in front of Trey Lyles. It's just not. Oh. Uh. I don't know what to say, man. Look at all the asterisks in my notes. It's it's really bad. But um, should should my asterisk? I'll do I'll do six, six asterisks on uh, point of attack. As Lyles, I I think he missed a free. No, he made it down ten. Uh, there's three asterisks for bad offense and six asterisks for uh, bad defense. There's a lot. I just. At least I'm starting the notes in the second quarter. I mean, golly. It's pretty bad. <laughs> All right. Well, we still got time. We're down 11. Man, if the Kings don't pull this out. Oh, man. Clay, catch three. Missed another one. Ah, at least we're back five on four because one guy tried to flop. Sabonis Clay in the post. Oh, boy. Kick out to Lyles for three. No good. Thank goodness. J.K. flies in for a rebound. Brings it up left side. Hash mark Davion. Don't lose the ball. You got small guy on you. He drives on two guys. Throws up a nothing. Had nothing there. He, he doesn't have a plan. <laughs> what are you going to do when, it, when there's the help and they get a corner three on the break? Oh, my God. JK, no plan again on attack. HB transition three. Timeout. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> the crazy thing is the most correctable thing right now is for the veterans not to make any more mistakes. That's the most correctable thing. So the turnover by Draymond, the turnover by Steph, the turnover by CP. Uh, but that only accounts for like six points. Uh, so we'd be down eight. Well, the, the clay lost Fox on the dunk. Uh, you don't do that, then maybe we wouldn't be down. We'd only be down six. But that's still net minus six. You had a trace bad pass, and then uh, you had a trace not get around the pick to Keegan. He's a rookie. I can't expect him to suddenly, you know, not throw a turnover or get around the screen. So overall, we'd still be down six and uh and that's without malik monk of course we don't have gary payton be nice to have him kind of 
sew up some holes that are on defense. Um, but yeah. Refs are pathetic. I, I don't know, man. Like, you got to go in. When you drive past a guy, there's going to get help, especially if your name is Jonathan Kaminga. You got to have a plan. Jump stop, something or nothing, some something or other. So I, I don't, I'm going to have to delete that because I, I think it's, you know, basically false information. Yeah, you have to, you have to come and play with physicality. Need to play with physicality. Yeah, and and now it, you got to bring in Steph now. Down fourteen. Let's just get it to eight by halftime. That's only a plus six. Just get it to eight by halftime with Steph out there, and then from there, no more mistakes, veterans. We're counting on you not to make mistakes, and yet you're making mistakes. And that's that's really just. It's all psychological, man. It's really not physical. Like Clay standing around and Fox getting a dunk. That part is really the I hate to use the word inexcusable one, but like you are a veteran, you can't do that. You can't. You have to look in the mirror and go, "Yeah, you know, I'm old, so I need to really be sharp at all times." And if you have a problem with, uh, you know, how many minutes you played and you're dead tired after that because you're old, you know, then then you adjust your entire uh, mental preparation for that. But in that moment, you can't do that. And uh, on a team that has two rookies, you you got to not do that. Moody's in the game. Steph is not in there. All right. Inside the Looney, he's one on one. Ellis, oh, they're gonna go back outside the CP one on one. Davion, oh boy, and he gets a call. Davion can't believe it, but Aaron Smith says, No, nope, well, I'm gonna even out the uh fouls a little bit starting right now. Yeah, that's a very uh. Ticky tack foul, but we got called for that as well. And Clay loses the ball to Keon Ellis. Did you not look at the at the uh, scattering report? Come on, oh. they got no one to look at but themselves in the mirror. And Sabonis scores as uh, somebody lost the ball and Clay couldn't quite get to it. We're down sixteen. And when are you going to bring in Steph? Because we've got nothing going on here. Moody over to Chris. Chris going to dance around and shoot a three. Hits it. That's a hero ball three. Right when we needed it. Wow. Steph finally checks in. Yeah, I think I think you're going to have to play Steph 40 minutes later. Oh, well, so much for the plan of, you know, trying to go a whole week. All right, Harrison misses, Looney rebound. BP will shoot a three in transition. No good. Knuckleballed it. And they're going to call a late foul on Looney uh, for reaching in a uh, little bit of physicality. My problem with that call is that it didn't affect Sabonis that much. So he still had the ball. <laughs> it just – I don't think – the refs have been, you know, oh, zero free throws. We haven't deserved to go there. And JK has been driving two times with reckless abandon with no plan in sight. But it's inconsistent still. So it's like, oh, you can be physical, but you can't. And, you know, we had the challenge call, right? That was physicality. Davion for three, good. As uh, Sabonis drove and, and like, what it, did Moody forget? Moody's doubling Sabonis. Why? Moody for three, speaking of which, makes up for it. Okay, don't double Sabonis now. Oh, my God. What are we doing? Uh, Davion for three again. No good. Good jump by Looney, and it'll be foul on Lyles. Good job. 
pretty good try on a closeout by Clay there, but uh, I'm surprised Davion missed that one. All right, Steph in the game. Over to Clay. Over to Moody. Moody got the step. Over to Looney. Dunk. There's Moody. Down by 11. Hopefully not too late. Great drive by Moody. Can we play some defense? Need three stops. Oh, we hedge way from Fox, and he shoots it. Missed it. Got lucky. Man, Clay's defense uh, kind of suspect tonight, but we'll, we'll see. Clay against Davion. Post spins. Sabonis doesn't double, and he blew a layup. Another layup blown. Jeez. But Clay uh, slipped a little bit, so I don't know if he lost his footing or whatnot. Nah, he landed near Sabonis's heel, so that was dangerous. So, But he's okay, it looks like. Clay subbed out. Moody for three, got fouled by Lyles. Three shots. Way to go, Mo. Clay goes out. Uh, overall, um, I, I just you got to control the things you can control. Uh, they need to hire me as a uh, psychologist. You just, you just got to – the things you can control are the turnovers. And you, you've got to really, because you're older, you've got to come into a game and really commit zero. You know, the era's over with where you can throw the ball around and get away with it. And yet, if we take away those three turnovers, really four with Chris Paul, that's like eight points. Ah, we'd be down two. I mean, you got to play perfect like that. Of course, the game is a long game, so we still got seven minutes here. Down nine, and modern era, anything can happen with nine. Keon gets a screen over to Sabonis. We let him shoot. Missed it. Lyles, no. Good job, Wiggins. Good box out, I think. Good box out by Steph. Yep, excellent box out. Wiggins crosses, throws the ball away. Another one. Can't do that. You got to have a plan. Sabonis against Looney. Misses. Chris Paul steals it, but they're going to call it on Looney. Wow. At least he's got six fouls to use. And I'm sure Stan is driving you nuts because that's what you get when the, you got the national guy. This is the first Warriors game for you in a long time. You don't watch the Warriors on a day-to-day -day basis like us, which is why I'm here to do this Manning cast, honestly. So it's got some of the things coming out of his mouth. It's kind of annoying. All right, Fox sidesteps a three. No good. Keon rebound over Mo. Switch it around. Stefan Keon crosses him. Over to Sabonis. Crossed him too easy. Didn't stay in front. Steph Keegan over to Draymond. Draymond upstairs. Wiggins cannot hit another layup. We've missed four layups. Wow. Three ball, dagger, Keon. Down by 14. Well, we were down 14 when I thought Steph would come in, but he didn't. We trap, They trapped Steph, leaving CP, leaving Moses. Moses fouled by Sabonis. Time to check the fouls on Sabonis. Two of them. Make a free throw, Moses. <laughs> Time to make a free throw. Four for five, though. So he probably just made one just now. Hope the comments aren't total carnage. Uh, haven't really been looking at the uh, comments at all, but Moody hits. Um, 
Yep, stop turning the ball over as if the Pelicans game didn't teach you already. Eight turnovers already. Clay comes back in, BP in, Wiggins out. So you got Steph, Draymond. So Moody is kind of the, the new guy of the of the rotation, which is kind of neat. He's he's cracked the closing rotation technically. Sat Wiggins down. Fox Moody. Pick and roll Sab. Sabonis. Over to Sabonis. Dre drops. And BP tried to get a foul on Sabonis. Didn't work, but Keegan missed the three, and it's off of Steph. Wow. Yeah, Moody and Steph reached for it. It wasn't anybody's fault. Uh, unless... Moody has like a super fast brain and can process the fact that Steph's right there with probably one of the best hands in the league. But uh, yeah, that could have been a foul on Sabonis. Could have been. BP complained during that inbounds. Speaking of which, Keon against BP. Man, he's quick. Keon bricks a three, though. Kaminga rebound. Oh, so Kaminga came in for CP, maybe? No, Moody. Came in for Moody. Yeah. Steph and Sabonis. Sabonis Island, they're not doubling. Three ball, Steph. No good. Fox rebound. And uh, Mike Brown breathed a sigh of relief. Sabonis runs the floor. Scores. So Draymond had to cover him, and, and uh, J.K. couldn't figure out who to guard. That's J.K.'s fault. Draymond loses the ball, but it's actually a reach in, but it's out of bounds. And there's our bad transition defense. Like, again, Kaminga never taught. You got to race back to the paint and pick up the biggest guy. He doesn't know that. Inbound by Steph. He wasn't there, though. JK wasn't there. A lot of horrific execution today. But it's out of bounds on, on them. So, luckily... JK over to Dre, over to BP, looking for Steph. Let's see how much Keegan fouls him. Nothing, but uh, good defense by Fox to just switch over to Steph. Four on the clock, JK's got to go. Pull up, good. Saves the day versus Keon. That's that's what he does. We got to get him to do more of that. Fox, JK, just keep him in front of you, JK. Harrison will shoot over Clay. No good. Rebound BP. Almost double dribbles <laughs> over to JK. Up top, Sabonis. Yep. Pull up right there. Good. There you go. There you go. That's decisive. That's exactly what we need. Down 10. If we can get it to eight or six, I'm happy because we've played bad. Keon, finally, Steph stays in front over to Sabonis. Left wide open, blows another jumper. <laughs> That's what we want. JK hesitates, rises, scores. Banker, Sabonis, Mike Brown calls timeout. We're only down eight. Of course, JK wanted a foul, but uh, you can't. Come on, man. <laughs> Those aren't fouls. They're not. Not playoff fouls. I wouldn't want them to call it on us. But good job. Good job, JK. Yay. We got that side of JK. At least some minimum foundational value of JK. Yes. He hasn't disappeared. All right. Let's... Uh, Take a look at the comments. I mean,
I got to disagree with the referee assessment. I think it's been okay. I just just don't call any of the touch ones. Like, um, but if you're going to call one on a uh, loony 92 feet away from the basket, I get it. I get it in terms of like, oh, well, that's just loony. And, you know, we know we're not going to foul out loony, you know. So, okay. I think the refereeing has been okay. It's been physical. And Mike Brown, this is right up Mike Brown's alley. But it's also up our alley because we can't keep it, stay in front of anybody. So we need to be able to reach in and hold people. That's how bad our offense, our, our our point of attack defense is. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I like refs letting physicality go because our point of attack defense generally sucks. So what we what we do is we we reach in and all that, and if they don't call those, great. So, uh, but we'll see. I mean, it, it, they got to keep it consistent. You don't see uh, Fox driving in there. And, you know, that's kind of by design. Why would – Fox can get any shot he wants off, right? Why would he go to that this early in the game? Yeah, you, you have to think about this even when you play rec league. You don't come into the first quarter trying to get bumped in the lane for layups, right? Not even Jordan did that. You, you read the game. It's going to come. You know, Fox is going to start doing that in the third and fourth. So I better be ready for it. Let's see. DL in the house. Been a while, huh? No ball movement. Yep. Well, that's that gets back to the physicality part. And then if you're going to turn it over and deal with physicality, I mean, you, you just got to you got to not turn the ball over. You just can't. <laughs> Anywhere that you jump, you got to have a plan. Fox on JK. Steph trying to Fox does a great job getting the eventual switch. Spin for two good. That's, I mean, Jesus, man. Fox, man, that's not nice to do that switch. He did a great job of getting a switch on the shorter Steph, who has the ball on Keegan, over to Dre, over to JK. Leaps, does not score. There's, there's some contact by Keon. Steph wanted a foul. Uh-oh, Fox for three. Nope. Great box out, BP. Look at that box out. Wow. And Steph one on one. Over to JK. Over to BP. Over to Draymond. Running out of clock. Eight, seven. Lob inside to JK. Finish him. Go now. God, JK. Two ladies blocked. What are you waiting for, young fella? And then Keon loses the ball completely to BP. BP attacks. Got to score this. He scores it. Oh, boy. Fox uh, scissors his way in and misses a jumper. BP rebound, 157 to go. Down eight. JK, 94 feet later, finally draws a foul. They finally called one of them, but kept attacking. So tip my hat to JK. He didn't quit. You don't get the call. You keep going. I mean, there's a couple ways to go about it, right? Keep arguing with the ref and just say, you know, I'm, I'm relentless. But credit BP. Nice push. Finally gets a call. It's, it's also pounding the rock. You get in there, you get in there, you get in, you keep attacking, keep attacking. Touch foul, no call, touch foul, no call. You know, they're going to call something eventually. So you, you tip your hat. Okay. So all of that said, we are about to go down by six. 
all of that were down by six. I love it, man. That's that's the beauty of the team as well. We got some resiliency and and the youngsters. And by the way, pretty good rotations right now. Wiggins back in the game. Keon turns the corner, got a screen by Sabonis. Steph blocks it, and JK couldn't come up with it. We got to do tap drills for JK. Harrison almost threw it away. Keon scores. Well, pretty good defense, but they stuck with it. Steph gets it stolen by Keegan again. Uh, at least Draymond came back and stole the ball and yells at Keegan. Come on, Steph. God, Lee, these are AAU turnovers. Wiggins, Euro step fouled by Harrison. Sacramento bench can't believe it. And we're so we are getting some calls back. So that's good. That won't be called in the fourth quarter. Be careful. It is a foul, but it won't be called in the fourth quarter. That's an unsung play, by the way. Draymond Green hustles back to strip the ball away. And Steve having a talk with Steph. I mean, it basketball's hard, man. This is nowhere near, near the Game 7 performance, and we're just talking about turnovers, let alone points. <laughs> Two turnovers. I think he had one turnover in that whole game. Uh, but basketball's hard. So, you know, if you get – just the same finish of game seven. If he can muster that, then he's still a great player. Keegan over to Sabonis looking for a handoff and BP loses Keegan, but reaches down. Good job by Kaminga. And he ends up fouling him. It's okay, but uh, at least he really wanted to help there. So the intention's good. Where did Draymond go, though? He needs to come back into the lane. Yeah, I guess he couldn't really do it. There were multiple people there looking at the replay. Yeah. Keegan going off in the first quarter, uh, 14 points, they say. So 15 points now, possibly 16, which would put us down eight. And Keegan, good. All right, Steph, please no more turnovers. I mean, come on. Keegan Murray, he can't cover you. Steph and Keegan, screen Wiggs. And they double him. Wiggs flares, finds JK, blows a layup, got it back and scored. Yay. Tic-tac-toe, baby. That's how you do it. And we double Fox. We're in zone. I think it's 3-2 zone. Sabonis so high post Draymond. One-on-one. -on -one. Nobody else on the floor. Draymond steals it. Push. Push. Yeah. Sabonis so 3 fouls in the first half. Yes, sir. All right. I think we're finally turning the corner. I mean, it looks like JK, <laughs> the JK that we know has arrived. Uh, but Draymond's at the free throw line. Yikes. They got to take Sabonis out, right? That's three fouls. Yep, they got to take him out. So they won't have him on offense. There's no way. Sub him out, Mike. He subbed out. BP in the game. Did we get our defensive guys in there or is Steph in there, I wonder? We're only down five. 23.2. Wow. Talk about big brother, little brother, man. We we take we took some blows from the little brother, and yet we're down far. I mean, little bro. Yeah. I mean, we just keep playing like this. They they're not gonna be able to withstand this for another 24 minutes. Harrison against JK, knock on wood, of course. Anything can happen. One game playing. Harrison can't turn the corner, misses it. BP jumps and gets the rebound. Amazing. Steph, half court. Can he do it? Oh, in and out. Bank shot in and out. Oh, my God. Greatest shooter ever. Barely misses. 
what an incredible defensive play by BP. Incredible. Wow. Great rebound by BP. Steph misses from half court. Oh, we got ourselves a game because it's only 54-50. It's incredible. 54-50. Halftime. Oh, BP. You're so good. Oh, what a game. What a game. Man, if, if we just came out and, and played well to start. <laughs> oh, well, that's the game of basketball for you. It's all these ups and downs. It's just, uh, it's kind of like life, isn't it? You know, kind of, kind of mirrors life, does it not? Uh, let me check my messages. I have a feeling uh, if we don't get JD at halftime, it's because it's a rather difficult environment over there. Because I know that I know that uh, the Wi-Fi situation is not easy out there. So let's go ahead and check my messages and see. Are we ever going to get Dean Chambers, though? Dean, where are you? <laughs> I hope Steph and Clay wake up. I know. Isn't that crazy? Oh, man. Steph and Clay, they need to wake up. Oh, that's crazy, man. Oh, man, that was so close. Yeah, we're, we're down four, and Steph has five points. And Clay has zero points. Oh, man. Isn't that crazy? Oh, good job, JK, BP, Draymond. <laughs> oh, man. The odds are that they will wake up. But, yeah, incredibly poor performance by the two Hall of Famers, but who knows? Okay, what do we got here? Yeah, they'll come out. They'll come out. <laughs> I have TV on mute. Yeah, man. That's what I like. To, I'm, I'm a, yeah. I'm going to screenshot that and uh, make it our uh, Twitter tweet. Thank you, DL. And good to have you back. Yeah, Moody played great, right? He always plays well. JK start. Ooh, good question. I would start JK and sit TJD. Uh, Bogus said uh, it wasn't a clay game. I, I think number one on that list is TJD. Actually, clay just needs to make a shot. So, yeah, good point, good point. All right, time for me to do some tweeting. Uh, I don't think we'll get JD. I'm not confident of that, but he, he might be popping in the green room right now. I don't know because I'm busy tweeting. So, uh, and I went through the whole trouble of, uh, oh, let's see if uh, our strength in numbers, bro, wore the uh, orange. I told him to wear the orange, but I don't know. Going to have to look at the... Okay, uh, but ba -ba 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 -ba. <sighs> where is Splash G? Let's look at his Instagrams. Yep, he's wearing the orange, baby. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go tweet right now, real quick. 
hang tight, guys. Uh, in the meantime, why don't you watch my clay boat uh, video that uh, is awesome. Not this clay boat one. That one's old, and that one's with uh, Javon Johnson. But this one, because uh, da, ba, 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 where is Let's Go Warriors? Oh, YouTube.com. I'm in luck, though. This halftime is probably going to be long by uh, TNT standards. Is JD in the green room? No. All right, videos and Clay, Captain Clay. And it has the Draymond driving the boat, too, that nobody else has because that's a clip from Travis. They always say practice makes perfect. Oh, you know, I'm a just believer enjoy this for a minute. While hard work, good things can happen. I put a court and I want to make that happen on my smile. The vision line treatment doesn't interfere with my practice. It's more comfortable, so I'm allowed to focus on my game, make sure I focus on getting the win. Find a doctor today and click the link in my bio. Change like a second. Catch Oh, I did some editing on this, guys. Oh, to get rid of the copyrighted music. Ooh. I got myself on the back. That's that scary, one. I think they're going somewhere. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go left. Oh, yeah. Go left. Yeah. She got it. See how he's going this way? Oh, they're going to Alcatraz. Right, right. Yeah. Hey, he's going around the back of him. What does? No rush to get there. Right? Uh, 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 no rush, you know. Never like never like getting you know, it's all just fine at this speed. Oh, <laughs> Sir. Hey, Mo. Yeah, you comfortable with that, Mo? Uh, <laughs> yeah, hold up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold up. Man, my dog Mo out here. Splash, Splash Express. Yeah, headed to the game. Got KT back there, you got me played. Uh, uh, it's a tunnel up. Here's the uh, Draymond. Captain Killer, Captain Money Green, Assistant Captain, Assistant. Send me to get up. All right, I'm back from tweeting and stuff. Uh, let's see. TJD getting another chance. I, uh, uh, I don't know. Dean Chambers. What is Dean Chambers doing in the comments? Oh, I, I get it. He's got to use his phone to watch the game. So, okay. Uh, Wiggins and Cl I know Wiggins two turnovers, so that's not good. Blueberry turnovers. Oh, uh, yeah. This one, my favorite. 
non-copyrighted background music thingies. Oh, where's the music for this? Well, this is all Warriors content, so. Man, I thought there was music here, but they stripped it out. She is the number two overall pick of this 2024 draft and will pick to the LA Sparks is a foundational piece of this rebuild in LA. Let's go, Cam. Let's go, let's go. You hear that that key Glock song? Yeah. Let's go. Oh my God, that is fire, is it not? Oh, it's coming. Don't worry. Oh yes, sir. Versatility, <laughs> versatility. Talk to him. Let's go. Let's go. All right, two cards in the building. Let's go. I love that song. Cam Brink. Top two WNBA draft. Let's go. Yeah, JK. So crazy seeing you do. Come on, Cam. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, I, hope, shout out. I hope this doesn't <laughs> actually. We got to be careful here. Obviously, he's been through this. Because uh, uh, it, it, uh, it might like demonetize me on the live stream. I don't know. Uh, it's been WNBA, ESPN. Call. I called Seth Curry coverage. Well, he hung up immediately because yeah. that's Seth. Uh, but then he called back right after. But yeah, they're just both great sounding boards for me. <laughs> See if I heard from anybody. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Shingles. The rash can feel like an unbearable itch. Ask your doctor about shingles. You, you love how the uh, pharmaceutical industry always uses fear as a tactic. Oh, you're going to get shingles. Knock on wood. Hopefully, I don't get sick. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, 48 likes. Come on, guys. Please tap the like button. Get more people to join us. It's easy. Singles are painful? Oh no. Yikes. You're, you're a free agent at the end of the year. It means like any of these games could be the last time you play in a Warriors uniform. Um, is it difficult at all to, to not let that creep into your mind? No. That's life, man. Like, can't let There's so much success here. I'm not going to let whatever the future happens make me salty about what I've been able to accomplish in a Warriors uniform. So I don't let that. I don't uh, let that seep in the Watching film on them, how different are they considering their injuries and how they've kind of had to remake their rotation? Uh, still a very explosive team, especially in the, on the offensive side. Uh, we got the whole interview the here up on the channel. So it's an ideal for them, but we want the whole thing. thing. So, yeah. They're off ball cutting and little wrinkles they're throwing their offensive set. So just because uh, too many guys are out, doesn't, we don't relax at all. We actually heighten our awareness even more. Do you expect them to kind of, you know, let you shoot tonight, the jumper? Uh, we don't know. We'll see what their uh, game plan is. Uh, the starters. Yeah. Yeah. playing a lot different than uh, last year, so we'll, we'll see when we get out there. What are you – you mentioned them playing different, obviously, different personnel in the interior. Ooh, how have you seen that change? Who they are? Yeah. Um, we're just watching all their uh, last games and how they're playing. You know, uh, we're going to focus on our game and uh, play what we can. Tomorrow goes well, play my game. Just try to be physical as possible. Uh, try to throw the glass, throw the, throw the paint. Uh, 
uh, you know, he's, he's a lot deeper this year. So, uh, like I said, it's going to be shorter for me, but uh, I know Trace and Draymond are going to do just as good as job as I did. So, uh, we have the ultimate trust in us each other and uh, just out there and execute our game plan. Right now, and kind of your recovery. What do you mean? Like, how close do you feel to getting on the court, contact, that kind of stuff? Uh, I wish I could say that, man. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I'm feeling good, though. I'm feeling good. Yeah. How desperate are y'all to not only move on, but get to a point where you feel like you can maybe get back on the get court? Back. Yeah, super desperate. I'm desperate for the guys, and I know they're desperate for me to get back out there, too. Because uh, there's a big piece missing. Uh, with energy and everything, man. Um, and I, I just miss being out there with, uh, with my guys, too. So, uh, I try. I try. We're in that match. If these guys were able to get to the uh, I can't tell you that because uh, I haven't ran yet. So. All right, we're still in uh, timeout mode of TNT. Uh, not yet, man, because the season's not over. Uh, I try not to think about um, me not being here. Um, I just try to think about the guys um, and trying to get back on the court. Good to have you, man. Let me take you with these guys. What does he mean to you guys? Yeah, figured out something defensively. All right, we're ready to uh, get back going here. But Zeljans may. Yay! At last. Uh, let's go to the box score and we will inbound. They will inbound because we won the tip. Keon handoff, Keegan on Clay. So we kept the. Nope. The JK for. Is sorry. still very much alive. Oh, give me some champagne. Oh, God. Where's the champagne? Oh, here it is. <laughs> All right. They moved the ball a few times. Fox against Clay. Clay keeps him in front, but Fox creates space. So at least he kept him in front. I'm going to go like this. So JK started. Whoops. Steph against Keegan. Loses the ball a little bit. Now he crosses over. Now he turns the corner. Now he scores. Way to go, Steph. Just attacked him. Keegan, 94 feet later, missed it. Good rim protection, but Keegan dives, and J.K. will get a jump ball. Good job, J.K. Uh, J.K. at the beginning of the season wouldn't have gotten the jump ball. Keegan tips it. Sabonis. Oh, he was out of bounds. Oh, they called it. Yay. It was pretty obvious, man. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Yep, Sabonis has three fouls. Let's take advantage. Oh, gosh. Stan is definitely an annoying voice. I'm sorry. JK left hash mark against Sabonis. Over to Steph. I guess we want to get the ball to the hot guy. Steph Keegan shoots a three. Got him. Keegan Island. We are down one point. Down one point. Fox uh, goaltending on Wiggins or maybe Draymond. I think maybe it was Draymond. Yep. Draymond. Down by three. Yeah, I'm okay with this. Down by three. Older, more vulnerable, vulnerable team that we have. Steph inside to Dre over to Wiggs. Stuck. Oh, everybody left. <laughs> Wiggs fooled everybody. A really bad defense by Sabonis is really it. Fox around the corner. Missed the layup. Draymond pulls the ball away from Sabonis. How did he do that? Amazing. JK is one on three, two on three, so forget it. Over to Clay. Clay gets the step. Draws contact. No call. They're not calling that. Oh, man. A lot of contact. 
I think Stan is even saying that was a foul. I thought that was enough physicality for a foul. Damn, Keon got a three in transition. So, yeah, that's a little inconsistent. Ah, Draymond threw the ball away. Fox downhill. Draymond smothers him. Clay shoots a three in transition. Still can't hit it. JK rebound. Reload Steph. No. He probes. Two guys on him now. Probing too much, but Fox a little bit too much. Not a good foul, especially with really nothing happening, but we'll take it. Down by four. All right, Wiggins to inbound. Goes a step up top. Keon jabs too much, and it's a pick. They're not calling the physicality. Clay's back. Fox gets a rebound. Tip out by JK. Draymond's back, though. Keon got it. Goes over to Keegan for three, and he already stepped into it by the time he had it. And uh, forgot about Keegan. Wiggs forgot about Keegan. I'm looking at the replay. Timeout. Down by seven. Uh, 64.57. Q3845. Timeout, Steve. Uh, what notes was I going to write? Uh, Yeah, uh, reach in by Keon, no call. Then uh, good rim protection, but Wicks forgets about Keegan three. He he was already shooting the ball by the time he got it, uh, and that's they teach that. Um, shot doctor for uh, BP taught him to get ready and ba basically do your dip before the ball arrives. So the ball arrives, you've already done your dip. Okay. <laughs> Black guy. Ah, uh, funny. Oh, let's see. What else we got? <laughs> Clay, please hit something. The thing is, is he he will. You, you just you just have to trust it. <laughs> Ten turnovers by the starters. <laughs> so it's a free game for Draymond to kick somebody, I guess. Yeah, don't worry about Clay. He'll get it going. It should have been a foul on that one. Yeah, he just needs one to go in. That's the beauty of Clay. Yep, trust them. Yep. The defense is there. So yeah, I agree. Like we've had we've had a couple amazing rim protections and then Wiggins forgot about Keegan. <laughs> oh gosh, just forgot about him. Should have clipped that one for you, but you forgot about him. You you can't do that. You can't forget. You have to know. 
it's a scramble, so you damn well better be covering somebody. You you can't be just covering an area. And uh, if if you're in the paint and nobody else is in their paint with you, you got to know where Keegan is and you got to figure that out. And we didn't. All right, they do a little token pressure. Steph finally gets the ball from J.K. over to Clay. What set do we do? It's a double pick. Clay can't get by Keon though. Over to Wiggins, three ball late, and it's a brick. Golly. Wiggs and Clay, man. Uh, Keegan Steph. Uh, Sabonis looking for a handoff. Got it from Fox. Oh, boy. Switch to Draymond. Kick to Barnes. Three ball good. I mean, that's what they do. That's the whole plan. Let me watch JK on that. Yep, lost him. It's Wiggs and JK again. Wiggs downhill. Finds Draymond. Corner three. Need that one like no tomorrow, and he hits it. Down by seven. Sabonis. Luke misses a layup. Another stop by Draymond. Clay for two. In and out. No good. Jeez, man. God, Clay. And uh, ball trickles out of bounds. We could have had a steal there, but nope. Steph is like, damn, I had that. Oops. Oh, gosh, Rich. Don't, don't be making mistakes now in my notes. I'm not going to have time to recover. They kick it to Sabonis, wide open free throw line, does not take it over to Fox. Draymond late close, bounces on the rim twice, should be out of bounds, Sabonis. Oh, King's ball. Watching the replay. Well, the thing is, is Sabonis tapped it back, BP tapped it that way, and the ball went that way. So, yeah, that's off on BP. They show the replay. Baseline inbounds over to Sabonis. Handoff Fox. One on one JK. Very quick move. JK fouls him from behind. And uh, what are you going to do? I mean, even if he didn't foul him, it still counts as a bucket. I think he got him on the head, but it doesn't matter. They called it. Uh, I think he got him on the head. And. Uh, more often than not, they will call that. We're about to go down by 10. Fox too shifty. <laughs> but he missed the free throw. All right. Steph will bring it up. We're down nine. Steph and Clay, uh, abysmal numbers here. Man, my screen just screwed up. Oh, I'll have to wait till timeout. Steph. Turns the corner on Sabonis. Gets a late call. Four fouls on Sabonis. Hey, we got a makeup call. Wow. Yeah, these, these refs are very, very inconsistent. But, hey, we got Sabonis with four fouls. Who cares? And he turned the corner. Oh, it's forearm. Left forearm. Let's see if I can fix my screen here. Wish me luck. Oh, no. Oh, my screen has this uh, sideline things, and I didn't even do anything. It didn't drop. None of that. It's just, ugh. It's still readable, though. But, man, I'm, what am I doing? What do I do with this? Can I get a refund? Steph makes both. We're down seven. Let's get some bonus five fouls. Keon, switch to JK. HB wants to post up Steph. Gets it. Draymond, good switch. Oh, Sabonis so BP. Good job by BP. Barnes, fade away good. That's, that's a good offense. Good defense with better offense. Steph gets a pick from JK. Sabonis so Island, shoots a three. No good. Wiggins tapped it. BP got it. Back out Draymond. Back to BP. Back to Wiggs. Come on. Make one. Missed another one. 
Steph finagles a rebound and throws it to the other team. What are you doing? Why do you do that? What is it about that? Uh, <laughs> it's so middle school. I just don't understand it. God. Uh, Sideline inbounds. Sabonis left open. Handoff Keegan. BP jumps over. They, Draymond jumps too, so Keon gets a free look and he scores. We're back down by 12. Oh, man. What a game to have the veterans not show up. What the hell? JK will shoot a three. Bricked it. Oh, my God. Is that really our only set? Keon fouled by Draymond because he uh, closed out. Eh. Aaron Smith didn't know there was a foul call and he called a he called basically an N1, but there was a foul way before that. It must be loud over there, but that's kind of, it's kind of funny. They called two fouls on one play. Yeah. Steph four turnovers in an elimination game. Clay zero for eight. Wow. Wow. What are you gonna do? At least there's still 547 to go in the Q3. Looney in the game does a good job on the cut. What a good defense. But Fox will shoot a three and hit it, so it doesn't matter. We're down 15. Wiggins again. Can't just – why? God, Wiggins, not a good game by Wiggins on defense. Three ball good. Amazing three. Did they call a foul yet? Thank you. Maybe that'll change the game. Down 12 now and one. Keon Ellis, how many fouls? Two. We need more of this, Stan Van Good. Bro, that's a hero ball. Steph can't do it every single possession. Stop it with your horrible color play-by-play, -play, man. Golly. Okay. Oh, God. Can we get a stop, please? We need a stop and then stop turning the ball over. Work around the Sabonis, who uh, does a useless fake and goes to Keegan. Foul and reached in again. That's the, uh, the slow feet of Looney. <sighs> That's a ticky-tack one. Down by 11. BP talking to Steve about something. Something he doesn't agree with. They're, they're showing Trace Jackson Davis on the bench, but, I mean, honestly, it's Steph's turnovers and Clay 0 for 8. That's the story of the game. I mean, right there. <laughs> Down 12. What's the problem with the one game? Where the Rocky Balboa? I wrote about it on the website. We we can we can go seven rounds or twelve rounds. I mean, really, seven rounds is like a seven game series. When it's one round, it's really hard to adjust. And uh, Steph has trouble with that. Looney over to Wiggs. Wiggs one on one push shot. No good. Looney, good chase. Got another rebound. Lens all over him. Looney attacks him. No call. BP tap out Moody. Free light reload. Hits it. BP saves the day again. Wow. But Fox gets downhill again. We can't stop Fox. Oh, man. You miss Gary Payton. Wiggins can't stay in front. And more uh, pressure on Steph. 
He wants a foul. Let me watch the replay. I don't know. It's hard to tell from the replay, but uh, I'd assume that there was a foul there. But uh, Steph's always had a problem with the lengthy types like that. Looney to Steph, crosses Len, shoots a two, no good. Lyles rebound. Down 12, 416, 415, 414. Fox goes by Moody, finds Len. Good physicality, Looney. Len, no good. Looney rebound. Great defense, Looney. And they're going to trap uh, Steph over to Wiggins. Gets blocked, but Moody's there. Moody saves the day. I don't know if that was a pass or not, but we watch the replay. Yeah, it got blocked. Fox over to Keegan. Moody all over him. Hustling to get back on Moody. I mean, Keegan. And Keegan scores as uh, quite a circuitous path. Moody had to go on defense there. Pretty good defense. It's not good enough. Uh, Steph blows a layup. Wow. Dude, what's going on? Blocked by Wiggs. Yay. BP rebound. We've had... Uh, Five blown layups. Moody for three. Can't hit. Oh, now they got two on two downhill. Three on four. So good job, BP, getting back. 2.56 to go, down 12. Fox. Steps around Looney. No good. Tap out by Len. Lyles over to Fox again. Off balance three good over BP. Down 15. Are we going to see Clay again, or what's going on with Clay, man? 21 minutes played. Clay gets up off the bench. Nothing. He's standing there with CP. Wiggs will go one-on-one. -on -one. Bye-bye, Keegan. Finally scores. And Mike Brown with a 2-0 Popovich. He's a disciple of Popovich. Timeout. So, good timeout. A pop timeout. Seventy-three eighty-six two twenty-one. All right, Ruckus, take care. Oh man. I mean, you guys can you guys can ask Moody more minutes, but it's like, honestly, it's it's not about Moody; it's about Clay. Yeah, don't state the obvious. I got to put you in timeout if you're saying doomsday stuff.
Why would you come here to say you lost faith? This is Let's Go Warriors. Right? Ridiculous. All right. Here comes Fox. And, uh, yeah, because that was a Popovich timeout by Brown. Good job by Wiggins to just shadow Fox. That's tough to do, man. Davion in there. One-on-one -on -one Draymond on the switch. Find Lyles against Moody. Baseline scored on Moody. Oh, uh, well. Uh, Draymond. So we're, we sat staff regardless. Dre attacks. No call. He's not good at finishing those. Fox in the corner. No good. Tap out. They're just longer. We got to get longer next season. Lyle's another reload. Clay, good box out. Clay got a box out. Yay. <laughs> Hopefully not too late. CP over to Moody. No hesitation. Three. Bricked it. Keegan brings it up. 112, 111, down by 15. Draymond over to Len and Clay will switch out to Keegan over to Fox. Moody, ISO right side. The lefty goes right, fades away. Moody gets a rebound. Pretty good job, Moody. Chris will go inside the Wigs, 101, Davion. Clear out your world. Doubled by Lyles. Attacks. No call. It bounces in three times. Should have been an and one. I don't know what they're doing. Wow. Down by 13. Davion. Trying to keep his body with uh, Moody goes to Keegan and Clay lost him for the brief second. That's what happens. Three ball good. Let me watch the replay. You got to just stay on him. <laughs> you can't just, oh my God. <sighs> Wiggins with the shot clock winding down and Len fouls him. From three. Got to make all three. Down by 16. Man. Are they not giving him three shots? Going to challenge this? Uh, Kerr is asking for a review. I told you Aaron Smith is horrible. I told you. Good Lord, man. That's why Draymond always gets technicals because you have refs of this level of incompetence that just, they don't even realize the uh, bottom line type of conclusions that they're coming to. <laughs> so they finally get a flagrant foul look. Uh, so we'll review this. It should be a landing spot foul, but anyways. It's, it's just like... <laughs> uh, Aaron Smith, absolutely horrible. 
I mean, that's why you have the rule. They just showed the replay on TNT. No question it's a flagrant. But will they screw it up? I don't think James Williams will screw it up. If you had Aaron Smith, It's a flagrant. We finally got it. But if if that was Aaron Smith in charge, he wouldn't have given the flagrant. And that's why he sucks. But anyway. Oh, God. Let's put Uday in 10-minute timeout. One hundred watchers, yeah. Smash the likes. Clay literally, literally won four rings for you, and then you got to type those things in. Wiggins misses a free throw. Don't get discouraged, kid. Did he miss two free throws? One out of three for Wiggins. My God. So we'll get the ball back, but man, could have been a five point trip and nothing. Uh, really, just one point so far. Down 15 with 5.6 seconds. Clay and Steph. Into Chris. Four. Over to Steph. Running two ball blocked. They're everywhere. Keon Ellis again. <sighs> Down by 15. Uh, end of Q3. I'm going to do a restroom break. I'm going to do a restroom break. I'll be right back. Hope it gets a little bit better in the comments. has advisors in Chase branches and tools like Wealth Plan to help keep you on track. When you're planning for it all, the answer is JP Morgan Wealth Management. How much is the brand Zeno? It's market price. CarMax has upcome pricing on cars. You can't tell me how much a fish costs? Man. Man. You can't use our bathtubs. CarMax has just arrived. You can't have to All right. I'm back. Down. 15 going into the fourth quarter. Golly. Well, if Sacramento doesn't pull this out, there's going to be some heads rolling <laughs> out there. I don't know. Um, uh, as for us, we'll talk about that if we need to talk about it. I don't mind talking about it, but we'll talk about it if we lose. Uh, yeah, really, really bad showing for the veterans. And uh, we'll talk about stuff if we lose. 
but only if we lose. We still got 12 more minutes, and uh, we've we've come back. We've come back before. I think it's doable. It's really, really tough, but, you know, maybe, maybe finally, you know, clay will erupt or something, but uh, that's – that's one good quarter and two bad quarters uh, that you can do. So, well, if 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 you're not one to lose faith, then why? <laughs> oh God, I'm not one to lose faith, but I'll lose faith. <laughs> okay. Wow, what a what a profound statement. Like, should we should we quote you and put that on Instagram and stuff? Like, is that a is that a new book, coffee book you're coming out with? I'm just playing. JK weaves around and good job. <laughs> Too bad we couldn't have started out with plays like that, but Harrison wind zone. Corner Lyles uh, over to Sabonis, one-on-one. -on -one. Draymond, we like this matchup. Sabonis, double fake, fade away, bricked it. Steph couldn't box out Harrison. JK fouls Sabonis, and it was almost an and one, so we got lucky that he missed it. JK now has three fouls. And... Steph is saying you guys got to come back and get the ball. Kind of late to be telling your teammates that, uh, but he's looking right at, I think, is Clay in there? I thought he was talking to Clay, but I'm not sure. No, I was talking to BP. Clay's not in there. Yep, I think that would be one to go back to and realize that BP could have helped. Somebody had to help Steph against uh, Harrison. Yeah, you know, if you're a blue wrench, just feel free to just, you know, we we need to just get rid of a lot of the negativity. It's just make it makes everything unpleasant. All the doomsday stuff and all the absolutes, the Sith Lord absolutes. Come on. We don't need that. Steph throws the ball to the other team. Yeah, that's kind of how it's going today. Uh, Chris Paul gets a hand on something. Nope. Over to Davion for a dagger. Nope. I thought it went out of bounds. Sabonis got the ball, though, and dunked it. But, geez, Steph, I mean, you just can't make turnovers like that. I don't care how they game plan you. Down by 17. Kaminga will just shoot a three because Sabonis lets him, and, and it was an incredible brick that I don't think I've ever seen a brick like that, that pinballed the way it did. That's a no-confidence shot. Sabonis, back rim, he missed another one. I, I thought he might make that, and then that'd be over. Steph, one on five, over to Chris. He thought about it. He goes, yeah, maybe I shouldn't shoot this hero shot. Draymond over to Chris, over to Steph for three. Fouled by Harrison. They're going to call BP for the bad screen. Let me see. Wow, that is, that is ticky-tack. Really ticky-tack. I don't think you can challenge it though, because it's it's fairly ticky tack. Like it's a foul, but barely. Like uh, I thought you're supposed to Nintendo this, James Williams. All right, I don't like James Williams no more. <laughs> Harrison can't go baseline on Draymond. He's stuck. We'll shoot a deep fade. Hits it anyways. We are down 19. Steve finally calls a timeout. 9.35 to go. A 
five turnovers for Steph. It's just it it doesn't matter if they if they trap you like that. You cannot have five turnovers. So we'll talk about it if we need to talk about it. It's a moving screen, but it's also a bad call. Like you're calling it so physical, and you know, just because Keon flops, like there's no consistency in that. Like, you're gonna call that right now with us down 19? Like they need any help? Like, come on. That's if it's a 50-50 call, you're not supposed to call it. Like, I would actually tell my refs when I ran my league back in the day. You know, 50-50 call and a team's down by 19 or 18, 17, 16. Why would you call a 50-50 call? Like, And that's where it gets really weird. Gets really weird with the refs. Like, I don't think they understand what the mission is here. The mission is to call the game so that it doesn't get ridiculous like it's a pickup game like you wouldn't call that in a pickup game so don't call it in the freaking nba like anybody that's ever played basketball on the playground or at the rec center knows that you don't call that you call that in a pickup game man you 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 leave they they tell you to leave the gym and the fact that the refs don't realize what they're doing is is really a travesty of Adam Silver. I mean, but that's where the guy that knows how to make money and squeeze all these billions of dollars from networks has no clue how to protect the game. But I've said that a million times on here. But that doesn't change the fact that <laughs> Clay has zero points, literally zero points in an elimination game, and Steph has five turnovers in an elimination game when your whole franchise depends on three guys, and two of them are playing like non Hall of Fame caliber. You're going to lose. So this is on them. It's on them. You can't do this. You have to expect Mike Brown's going to throw some real crazy shit at you. You cannot turn the ball over, let alone give it to them, and then they've got a fast break. And then you can't miss eight shots. You just can't. I'm sorry. Like, I know you can get hot and make eight straight shots, but that's what happens. And so – Really, I'm just saying that this is this is Steph and Clay's fault. They're number one and number two uh, for not coming out on tip off and uh, and doing what they do best, which is score buckets. Now, Clay has come in. You might as well just throw it up, and you know you, you might as well. That's what you do. So go ahead. Go ahead and take, you know, shots that are marginally open. Clay against Harrison. Here comes Steph. Keon all over him. Tries to turn the corner. Goes layup. In and out and in. So a go layup to start. ATO. Down by 17. We need some stops, guys. Trace Jackson Davis is in the game. That way Draymond can... Uh, Roam around. Davion against Steph. One-on-one. -on -one. Got to keep him in front. Doesn't. Scores. Yep, Steph knew it. Draymond over to Steph. Three guys on him. You got to score here on three guys. Moody scores. Thank you. Uh, but that's, that's what Mike Brown does. You got to score, guys. But, yeah, it's a good game plan. Wide open for Davion. No good. Draymond saves it. What are you doing? He saved it at the last second. Oh, my God. Are we just old and we have brain farts now? 
Good Lord. That's incredible. Absolutely do not deserve to win this game. Uh, anyway, 17-point deficit, 8.25 to go. Jerry will be the first one to tell you that was just... Keegan for three, no good. Moody got a rebound. Thank you, Moody. Jeez, we escaped that one. So, absolved. Steph scores a uh, reverse layup delivered by Draymond. And De'Aaron misses. Tip out. Steph got it somehow. Way to go, Steph. That's your dexterity that's been missing all game. Clay three bricked it. God, Clay. And Keon against Steph. They they should just walk it up every single time. They don't need to. <laughs> Fifteen point deficit. Draymond will foul Lyles. Lyles wanted to and or a shooting foul. He's not going to get it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Come on, man. But how many fouls, Andre? Three fouls. Dre trying to roam around and, you know, paid for it that time. Well, down 15, uh, still plenty of time. So uh, first step is to get it to single digits. You get it to single digits, then maybe they'll get deer in the headlights. That'd be funny, though, if this was an epic collapse. That would be funny. Sabonis, Trace. Doesn't bite. Good job. Don't bite for anything, Trace. And Moody fouls Fox off the ball. Uh-oh. How many team fouls is that? That's what I'm worried about. I guess the bonus light will come on when it comes on. At least they get that part right. But anyway, um, yeah, I failed to look at the replay. Anyways, that's at least, what, two fouls? At least. Sabonis, so Trace. Don't bite. Don't bite on those. Fox and Moody can't get around it, but it's short. Trace rebound goes to Draymond. Draymond Lyles gets it to Steph. Lyles traps him. Draymond two on one. Moody alley oop. Hit it. There you go. Tic tac toe again. Just got to keep doing that, but should have came out with that. They should have known, but oh well. Blame the coaching staff on that, really. And they go slowly. Keon. Moody, good job, but we're on our heels. Keegan for three got it. Yep. Somebody did the wrong thing. Let's see who that was. Oh, Draymond went to help Moses, so just couldn't switch in the right time. Steph will have to do something heroic here. They double them. They go to Trace. Come on, Clay. One of them missed again. 0 for 10. Clay with probably the worst game I've ever seen him play in terms of just shooting the ball, let alone bad shots. They're they're all good shots. They just miss them. Down 16, we're barely making any, you know, chipping away. And Harrison's going to get a wide open three. Wow, that was a little too easy. Draymond helped out, and that was painful. We trapped Fox, that's why. So tic-tac-toe. Curry steps on the sideline. Oh, my God. Wow, six turnovers. Wow, are we really going to get embarrassed like this? That's really bad, man. Six turnovers. That is super bad. At some point, you might want to just wave it. But I don't know. Play to the bitter end. JK came in. Travel by Keon. 
We got a little too comfortable there. Good job by JK to do whatever he could. Uh, let's see. CP in the game. Clay against HB over to Steph. He's wide open. Logo, logo moonshot, no good. JK forgot to stay. Watch the ball, and it goes off of him. You, you got to go want the ball again, and he just stared and watched. But uh, Steph missed it. A lot of the same bad habits tonight. Dunleavy has got to change something. Even if we come out with the miracle, he's got to do something. Clay hacks Harrison. Clay just way off tonight. Rhythm's totally off. And so this is part of the mud that you got to walk through. We're walking through mud right now, and it's just part of it. Timeout, Steve. One more free throw coming up. Down 20, five minutes to go. Down 20. All right. At least hopefully the uh, – just you don't need to complain in the comments. I think I've done the most complaining. I should be doing the most complaining. <laughs> oh my god the doomsayers I, I gotta ban the guy sorry <laughs> i like tall asians i like people named mike but tall asian mike you're not a good fit for the channel we don't do that here why would you ever watch warriors game <laughs> oh golly <sighs> Yeah, well, you know, when, when uh, the thing is, when you guys thumb type the obvious, all it does is encourage other people to go off the deep end. So if you're thinking a negative thought, maybe just don't comment, you know, let me be the most negative guy in here. You know, we got enough blue wrenches in here that something, something, uh, you know, light of the tunnel ish will appear. At some point. So, and that's what you need in times of uh, struggles. I mean, don't you apply that in your real life? Like when, when you, when you get in a bad car accident, are you, you know, stepping out ready to complain to the world and go, God, why me? Or, or are you looking at the guy that rear ended you and you want to kill him or something? Like, I mean, you, you got to understand how to get out of a spot. And uh, you got to understand things are never going to go well for you all the time. And, and this is a metaphor for that. So, yeah, we can nitpick this and that and the other thing. Yeah. I mean, during the moment, yeah. That, that sixth turnover in the moment, that, that's, you can't do that. And uh, you're not going to win any games doing that. Regular season or playing or playoffs, et cetera. Uh, Mike Brown has you rattled. Keon Ellis has you rattled. You got to just file it. It's a learning lesson. So, I mean, what are you going to do? Are you going to turn this into uh, Twitter and just complain, complain, and complain, and just reveal to the world that, you know, your life sucks and you don't really know how to deal with it. So you use a Warriors game to retransmit that negative energy. Are you going to do that? Or maybe just at least just stop it with that and uh, learn something. I mean, the good news is that regardless of what happens, uh, I, I we got to get longer on defense. I've already said that many times. So I trust Dunleavy will do something to get longer. Um, and then the other thing is that, uh, the old guys can't make these mistakes and how many times 
how many times do you need to instead of lose regular season games, now you're losing a game that really matters and it's embarrassing. So I trust Steph and Clay will dial it back a little bit on those things and learn from it. And it's not easy. Like what what can Clay learn from this? Like, you know, well, I'm off. They're all good shots. Okay, well, we we got to get you involved in some other stuff. And it's tough. I'm not saying that's easy. JK, one-on-one Sabonis. Can't find a seam. CP gives him a reset. He'll just shoot a two. It's no good. Miles rebound or Keegan rebound. Running out of time here, but we're down 21. And uh, I think Mike Brown has found the uh, found the key for um, beating Steph. You got to have a key on Ellis type, and then you trap the hell out of him. So uh, all the times Steph has faced this, whether it was you know the Toronto game this year. Uh, there's probably a couple other ones. You got to go look at those tapes for it. Clay's got a bloody lip. HB, by the way, put a move on Clay, drew a foul, and I'm going to put them up by 23. He does. Really embarrassing loss. Really embarrassing, but good. You know, how else do you get these, uh, kind of, you know, sometimes overconfident vets to really look in the mirror. This is how. We find J.K. He's fouled by Fox. Good foul. J.K. fouled on a really good design play, but uh, should have had that before, but too late for that. But it's hard when you face the Kings suddenly, the way the Kings are now with their uh, awesome, you know, defense by Keon. And JK misses a free throw. Uh, yeah, we've been through this so many times. Uh, the old Warriors were kind of like this, super vulnerable. Uh, you'd be down 21. You'd be at the line. There's really little to no hope. Down 22, uh, little to no hope and, and really, you know, 0.1% odds of the King screwing this up. So uh, Sabonis scores. So it's it's a slow, painful, muddy death. But uh, I've been there. This is not surprising. I've been there in tournament games. I've been in championship tournament games just like this. CP for three. So I, I, think, I think you call timeout and you wave the white flag at this point. They're going to trap Fox. Keon, you, you, I think you got to sub out pretty soon. JK gets a hand in there. Uh, Fox will baseline inbound it. Mathematically, really impossible to get eight possessions in uh, 343. So right after this one, they're going to give the ball to us. I don't know. Maybe you'd want Clay to hit Clay to hit uh, one shot before before the night's over. They're still still trapping stuff, and it's a kickball on Keon. Well, congratulations, Mike Brown. I mean, like it's a it's hell of a job to find Keon Ellis in all of that stuff with an amazing bucket. I think he may have thought he got fouled. Uh, whatever happens, we're not going to get threes on our end of the floor because Mike Brown is completely taking that away. Uh, I just honestly, I want to get the vets out of there. Let's not risk any injury. HB one on one clay misses it. JK can't get to the ball, and that, that's happened three or four times tonight. So,
They go cross court key on floater. Good timeout and get him out of there, Steve. <laughs> For safety reasons, man. JK will not make the layup. Foul by Sabonis. Did we foul him out at least? That'd be funny if he fouled out. No, that's his fifth. Twenty-four point deficit. JK, can you make a layup? I mean, not a layup, a free throw. JK, make a free throw. He got off the uh, bench, but then they decided against it. So, I mean, if if Dean Dean is like, let him play, okay, let it sting. I don't mind that. Keegan for three, hits it. Even now? Even now, Dean? I think, yeah, well, I don't know. Two, two minutes, 13 seconds. Time out. Maybe now they're going to finally... Wave the white flag. So 26-point lead, I think. I think now is a safety issue. I mean, you got to take him out at this point. So I'm going to disagree with you. <laughs> Which time's left? 2.13. Yeah, there's some there's some looking at some positives. All right, so we got all the subs in. Even Usman is in there. Moody for three on the fake. Mike Brown also cleared out his bench. And offensive rebound for Lester. He'll get a uh, he'll get a trip to the line. Why would you say sack is not good? I mean, are you like angry or something? I don't understand that. Uh, that's false. Sack's good. <laughs> You're like when you when you say I don't think sack is good, it's like it's disrespectful to Keon Ellis of all people. Like he played great defense. You got to learn how to tip your cap. I mean, I don't understand that. Here we go, standing the obvious again. <sighs> Why is there this addiction to stating the obvious? Just let me state all the obviouses and the, that's it. I mean, you you go into the comments and you and you just you just really have that addiction to like let me do something negative and then somebody else will do something negative. Well, yeah, let's just make this a horribly negative place. We're the opposite of that. So I got to eradicate that. It's just we're, we're going to lose this game and then we're going to discuss what we can do 
to change things because we saw some bad habits. And that's what we do. We're not going to sit here and complain and nitpick what went wrong. We know what went wrong. It's the same formula that went wrong that we've said 81, 82 other times tonight. There was zero hustle. That's false as well. So you're timed out. There was there was hustle. You really can't just say anything about like, I would have preferred if you said, Steph, man, six turnovers, what? Or Clay, man, 0 for 10, what? Like, instead, you said we didn't hustle. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Morgan Stewart, that's your first ever comment on here. Is, is everything okay? Is everything okay? Are, are you going to let a 30-point loss, let's call it 30, are you going to let a 30-point loss uh, force you to – say something just keep on complaining it, it can't be that serious right it can't be that serious lester shoots a three no good so we will lose by 24 yep Uh, we you don't bet. <laughs> Learn how to not vent on other people's channels. You can vent without thumb typing. Figure it out. I'd strong disagree on that one. You got to learn how to vent without thumb typing. Let me check the uh, post game links. Let's see if we got any. There it is. So they'll light the beam. I think I'm still rooting for Sacramento just out of Mike Brown, you know. Don't spread your hurt. Learn how to spread your hurt. That's selfish, isn't it? Nikki, it's like, I, you know, we've had this discussion, Nikki. We've had it. And uh, I know you're hurting and everything, and you're probably going out of your way not to say all these negative things. Exactly. I taught you, right? So if you were going to go on here, oh, I'm hurt. So therefore... Let me say bad things about Steve Kerr. Let me say bad things about Clay. Let me say bad things about Steph. The list goes on. That's not fair to them. It's on you. If you're if you're happy with yourself, then nothing matters. It all starts with happy happiness with yourself. Do I need to go look up the Will Smith one? I need to go look up the Will Smith. Will Smith, man. Will Smith, if not me, would you listen to Will Smith? If not me. Let's look for Will Smith. Take a break. Hopefully you're not complaining. 
Don't complain. Be better than that. Be better than complaining in the thumb typing the complaint. Okay, where's my Will Smith one? Uh, he posts too much, so I can't figure out where to go. No, bad boys, that's old. No, five days ago. Yeah. Damn. Uh, I can't even remember which one it was. Martin Lawrence. No, that's not it. Can't be yesterday's. No. Where did I see this, man? Will Smith had the best post. I can't remember where it was. I'm going to find this. No. He said something about money. I had all, all the money in the world. You could buy everything that you want. You could have put all this money, let me put it in context of this, could have put all your money on Sacramento and made $10,000 tonight or $1,000 or whatever. A million. <laughs> that wouldn't have really made you happy, though. Yeah, I can't find it. Maybe it's an old one that somebody posted. Let me look at my other account. Maybe I sent it over there. Oh, gosh. It's going to be hard to find. There it is. Oh, Tyrese. Tyrese did it. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. This is the moral of the story, guys. Okay. Here is the moral of the story. Boom, copy. Pull this up here. If you're still with us. Here we go. All right. <laughs> oh man I don't even know if we need to give any more attention to anything that's been thumb typed in <sighs> Hey, this is what Dean said, and I published it on the website. Here's what Dean said. Um, right here, what are we trying to prove? We just want to keep playing with our friends. If the season ends tomorrow, I'm going to cherish this season and all the growth we've had. If not, and until it does, we can still get number five. So thanks, Dean, for giving us, uh, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel. I, I think it's, I always like, you know, getting blown out. Like it really teaches you a lot. And like, I don't know, maybe it's just the coach in me. When you, when you lose and you make all these mistakes, it's like, yeah, be embarrassed because then you'll remember it better. kind of, you know, secretly like the good beat down because it's like, how else? I'm trying to coach you guys. You don't listen to me. All right, go get beat down. Now are you going to listen? That kind of thing. Not that, not that Steve doesn't deserve any blame. I think that, again, lack of seven timeouts, using seven timeouts in the first half and establishing a culture where a timeout isn't a bad thing. A timeout isn't a punishment. It's just to ruin their rhythm. And Mike Brown had at least two of those in the uh, first half. So that's like already 2-0 in terms of like them calling a timeout 
that's not meant as punishment to their players. Um, and uh, we just didn't do that. And I, I think Steve needs to evolve that. And yet it's just a simple thing. But he needs to evolve that. And Steph needs to evolve the lowering of the turnovers. Just don't take any risk. And yeah, it's it's all a family. So everybody, like every issue is, is also can be facilitated by uh, Steve. And uh, just kind of like underestimating Keon Ellis, that's what we always do. We always do. Uh, like we're, we're the Rocky Balboa, as I wrote in the same article. Like you just, we, we always come out in game one and just screw it up. Only problem is there's only one game. So it's a one game series. Like we were down 2-1 to Boston. We were down 2-1 to Memphis, down 2-1 to Cleveland in the same year as Memphis. We were down, uh, probably were down in the 2014 Clipper series. Uh, we were down 3-1 uh, uh, to OKC in 2016. We were down 2-0 uh, last season to Sacramento. We're just not a good... Uh, we're Rocky Balboa. We have to get all beat up before we make an adjustment. And then we play the long game. And so um, that's that's the makeup of our team. The good news is that that wins you seven-game series. The bad news is that it doesn't win you regular season games. And it's certainly not going to win you a one-game playoff either. So... That's where you got to evolve and get a big uh, wake up call like this to really reflect and go back, you know, and how can I change? And it's going to require change. Hey, Dean. What's up, Rich? What's up? Good to have you. Yeah, good to be on here. Thank you for reading out what I sent you. Ah, no problem. Yeah. Dean joins us. Oh, I forgot to hit refresh on the uh, post game. <laughs> yeah, cover. Star circle. Uh oh, content available. not available. Oh, geez. Let me hit up Dean Agon and see if there's a problem. Do you have the post game link? Well, if you got anything to say, now would be a good time because I think I've talked too much. I don't know what yeah. else to say. I mean, we could talk about next season, but that's a whole well, lot. Let's talk about the game first. Okay, go uh, ahead. First, pretty uh, pretty tough um, loss because I felt like this is, um, you know, I don't want to sound um, bitter or anything like that. I really don't. But I felt like the Kings – didn't uh i felt like i felt like this loss is on us i felt like we beat ourselves today. yeah um well i mean is, good execution is, by by the sack but yeah it was more horrible execution by the doves in my opinion um well uh, here's the thing though the, the key on ellis and the trapping of steph you got to come up with some other type of execution at that point so i think it's a combination yeah but i can see that i'll let you let you go ahead oh yeah i, I can see what you're saying i just think that um what's going to stand out to me in this game is um you know how how soft we played all those bad three-pointers that we took instead of driving to the hoop I mean, that's how we beat Sacramento last year. They still don't have a shot blocker that can keep us from the rim if we're playing hard. But when you're playing, when you're when you're just playing soft, you know, they they made us take bad shots, and then we didn't really, you know, how many times did Darren Fox drive down the lane and some guy slid backwards as he was in the paint, as if he was going for a layup, and you knew he was going for that little, a little lefty hook floater type thing. You know, how many times? Uh, how many times did we just chuck up a three, you know, without without putting any pressure on the paint? 
Um, so I got to tell you, Rich. Oh, I, I don't recall that many bad shots, actually. They were soft shots, though. They might have been kind of yeah. open, but they weren't. They, yeah. There wasn't an aggressiveness. In, uh, I mean, that, that gets into, yeah. No, I mean, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's just that I don't see us changing our character in one game. It, it takes a, a 30 point blowout like this to go, okay, we need to change. Right. So. But this is, this is something that we were struggling with all season and all the yeah, worst aspects exactly. of it came out tonight, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately, but also fortunately, <laughs> like, yeah, let's hope so. These need to be addressed. So. And yeah, yeah, this, this is a good way to have them addressed. Absolutely. To get. And yeah, I'm, I'm not just trying to spin it as positive. It's just kind of like, I mean, that's just kind of what I do. I just see the other side of it, too. And it's like, yeah. if there's a game that's really going to get Steph to stop giving the ball to the other team, granted, I still give Keon Ellis credit. If there's a game where, just like you said, go strategize on getting a good two instead of settling for a three, Clay, then this is it. Like, finally, like, yeah. is anything going to wake you up? Other than that, you know, so I, I kind of see that, but it's, I think that's just my coach side coming out. Even, even Steve, I already mentioned, but yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting. Good to, loss. Uh, but a bad loss. <laughs> you what? What? It's a good loss, but a bad loss. Well, um, but yeah, I'll let you talk. Go yeah, ahead. no, I still think, you know, this was uh, a season of basically us being an amazing basketball team that lost nearly everything at the margins, you know, mm. just game after game after game, little mistakes, little lapses of effort, little, you know, jumping too soon or fouling softly you know or anything like that um but on the other hand i think they said number 10 seeds are oh and six in yeah now oh and one. seven yeah oh, oh and seven now right yeah right, right. um yeah i gotta disagree arma he says he hopes the kings get blown out against new uh against new orleans I, I kind of I'm I'm rooting for them. I don't think they you know, like show me anything Brown? that, huh? It's no affinity for Mike Brown. No, no, I'm rooting for the Kings. I'm rooting for the Kings. I'm I'm talking to Armand. Oh yeah, I'm from Northern California. You know, I know we have a lot of international viewers, but they're a fun team. I don't think they proved anything tonight uh, about their ability to p compete in playoffs. Um, yeah because the Warriors played so soft or not soft. It was dumb. Yeah. We played really dumb. Uh, you know me, I don't like to. Yeah. <laughs> but the Warriors were not, they weren't, they weren't. I, I, we, we didn't play the sharpest my game. We'll you're that. my co-host. <laughs> I invited you on here. Don't use those words. It's like, okay. We, just we, like we could have go played to church, a church. The pastor is going to ask you not to swear things of that nature. You know, yes. So let's, that's let's not, rephrase I, that. I, then. I don't want to, I want to, start like if everybody committed themselves to never saying the word dumb idiot stupid and just things that are not really expletives and erase that from their lives i think you would find changes coming so it takes a long time but like yeah so come up with other uh, words for for that same word we could have played a lot sharper yeah um, much more uh contact uh uh ready i think mm. um but i do think the kings can can play uh better than they played tonight too which i i think they're going to yeah. have to do if they, when they play the pelicans especially they're, if zion is able to play they're gonna need malik monk at some point down the road malik's not gonna play this week but or the is next an mcl week. thing is that right yeah he he said at practice he hasn't even run that's yeah. that's according to uh that's Anthony Slater. That's right. Wish he played tonight. That would have helped again, just because 
as soon as I heard, you know, injuries, guys questionable. Uh, exactly. Uh -oh. <laughs> Gonna take it yeah. easy. And they did. Yeah. How about, how about that as a word? Took it too easy, Rich. And uh, look what happened, man. Um, on the other hand, had a healthy season. A lot of growth. Um, you know, Clay not being in the contract here next year, that'll be nice. I think that didn't help him much. Um, just a shame that the Warriors went out this way. You know, really, really a shame because um, well, because because a good, tough first round series that would have been against the Thunder. You know, that would have been that would have been amazing. You, know, you can you can handle what happened what happens in that but to come out tonight and um just see when i was watching the team in 2022 i knew that we were going to be really really hard to beat in the playoffs because throughout the uh, there was the 18 and 2 stretch and everything i think we went 20 and 2 actually um and everything like that but we we just had this magnetic force to the ball to the open man you know we're playing really really um half half second type of uh hello bubbles <laughs> half second type of uh reads on everything you know um wiggins and kaminga and draymond and uh staff they were just getting to the hoop at will you know, we were attacking teams' uh, inability to guard the three and the post at the same time, and I'm I'm still a little baffled as to why we struggled with that these last two seasons. Um, because they can, I've seen the Warriors do it plenty of times uh, last year and this year, but um, you know, didn't didn't get a great JK game tonight. <laughs> too Stuff young, too down. old. I go back to that. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that because I think if we were the fifth seed, we'd be, you know, we would be, we could have done that easily this year, you know. Um, but all the all the blown games in the clutch, you know. Um, but hey, man, we were the tenth seed, and that's what happens to tenth seeds, you know. So if we want to change it, we gotta we gotta not fix that by by the first playing game, we have to have fixed it, you know, from the season. And uh, I'm really interested to hear what, you know, especially Steve Kerr and... Uh, yeah, we're ready for that, actually. Okay, cool. Very cool. Um, yeah, if, if you're a Steve Kerr hater, it's probably not going to make you... This is your hour of darkness. Enjoy it. <laughs> Here we go. Steve at the podium for a couple minutes. Not a lot. Three, they shoot 44 from the floor, and they advance to the playing tournament. Let's hear from Steve Kerr, presented by BMW. Do they just seem to come out really early and take a swing at you? Did you think your guys met that energy? Were you disappointed in your energy at the beginning? I just think they uh, physically uh, took it to us tonight. You know, the offensive rebounds early in the game set a tone. Um, you know, they got, got into us, didn't let us get into our offense. Um, you know, we hung in there. We had a good uh, good second quarter to keep the, the game close. And we liked, um, you know, the, the start of the, of the third, you know, getting Steph some space. And um, we just couldn't stay with them. They, they dominated us physically. Um, they, I think they had about 18 more field goal attempts than us between the turnovers and the uh, – and the offensive board. So they just, it was total domination. They, they, um, they deserved it. They were, they had a great game tonight. Um, Mike and his staff did a great job and um, give them the credit they deserve. How do you kind of, I guess, step back, view the, the future of this team, as, you know, especially getting eliminated this early? Yeah, it's, it's too early for me to even think about that. You know, um, you invest so much in, in the season and, and um, there's so much that goes on. Um, it, it's so emotional. It's, um, 
You know, the, the highs and lows of this business are incredible. That's why we're all kind of addicted to it. Uh, you can't find this um, anywhere else in, in life. I know I can't. Um, and you have to absorb the, the lows. Um, we've been really blessed here with some amazing players and, you know, multiple championships and finals appearances and um, the highest of highs. And um, this is the flip side. This is life. This is how it works. You don't, you know, you don't get to stay on top forever. So um, what happens this summer and going into next year, we'll, we'll worry about that later. Um, right now, I'm just thinking about uh, our guys and um, how uh, committed they were this year, the connection they had, uh, the effort they put in uh, to put us in a position to at least have a chance. And um, we clearly weren't, weren't good enough, but not for a lack of effort or uh, commitment from our guys. They were great all year. Um, it's um, incredible when I think about, um, you know, I just you think about how difficult and physical this game was. And um, these guys have had, you know, our core group, six finals runs where, you know, you have 24 of these games, you know, in, in one playoff run. And uh, that's what I was thinking about down the, down the stretch of that game as it was clear we were losing, that, um, you know, Sacramento dominated. Um, but our guys have been fighting for so long. They're incredible uh, competitors and warriors, and I couldn't be prouder of them. Um, but, you know, we've got a, an off season where we've got a lot to, lot to think about for sure. Steve. Um... All right, that was Steve. All right. And I was looking around for that post game link, just trying different things, and I don't know why they got rid of it. Funny. They had it and then they got rid of it. Oh, hey, Dean, it's back on. Isn't that crazy? Uh, they, they, I guess maybe they set it up wrong and then now they're. Uh, now there, there's a Golden State link for that, which is crazy. Ah, oh, man, I gotta wait 13 seconds for this ad to finish, and then we can actually go through the entire Steve post game if, if possible. I can't wait for this ad to end, though. Yeah, I think I think we can <laughs> rejoice. Okay. All right. We're going to get all of Steve right now. And I don't know how long it is, but we're going to get all of it right now. So let me just get rid of that. We'll go here. And here's Steve for, I don't know, X number of minutes. Uh, sorry. Okay, here we go. Give me about 10 more seconds. Here we go. Do they just seem to come out really early and take us away? Did you think your guys met that energy? Were you disappointing your energy at the beginning? I just think they uh, physically uh, took it to us tonight. You know, the offensive rebounds early in the game set a tone. Um, you know, they got, got into us and didn't let us get into our offense. Um, you know, we hung in there. We had a good uh, good second quarter to keep the, the game close. And we liked, um, you know, the, the start of the, of the third, you know, getting Steph some space. And um, – we just couldn't stay with them. They, they dominated us physically. Um, I think they have about 18 more field goal attempts than us between the turnovers and the, uh, and the offensive board. So they just, it was total domination. They, they, um, they deserved it. They were, they had a great game tonight. Um, Mike and his staff did a great job and um, give them the credit they deserve. How do you 
kind of, I guess, step back, view the, the future of this team, it's, you know, especially getting eliminated this early? Yeah, it's it's too early for me to even think about that. You know, um, you invest so much in, in the season and, and um, there's so much that goes on. Um, it, it's so emotional. It's, um, you know, the, the highs and lows of this business are incredible. That's why we're all kind of addicted to it. Uh, you can't find this um, anywhere else in, in life. I know I can't. Um, and you have to absorb the, the lows. Um, we've been really blessed here with some amazing players and, you know, multiple championships and finals appearances and um, the highest of highs. And um, this is the flip side. This is life. This is how it works. You don't, you know, you don't get to stay on top forever so um what happens this summer and going into next year we'll, we'll worry about that later um right now i'm just thinking about uh our guys and um how uh, committed they were this year the connection they had uh, the effort they put in uh to put us in a position to at least have a chance and um we clearly weren't weren't good enough but not for a lack of effort or uh, commitment from our guys they were great all year um it's um, incredible when I think about, uh, you know, I just you think about how difficult and physical this game was. And um, these guys have had, you know, our core group, six finals runs where, you know, you have 24 of these games, you know, in in one playoff run. And uh, that's what I was thinking about down the, down the stretch of that game as it was clear we were losing, that, um, you know, fat Sacramento dominated. Um, but our guys have been fighting for so long. They're incredible uh, competitors and warriors, and I couldn't be prouder of them. Um, but, you know, we've got a, an off season where we've got a lot to, lot to think about for sure. Steve, um, two, two questions for you. One, what, what do you think kind of kept Clay from really being able to get anything going on offense for him? Yeah, I thought they were really physical early uh, in the game. So his first few shots um, weren't great looks. And so I think he fell out of rhythm. Um, it can happen, you know, as a shooter, you, you, um, you miss your first few and, and the game isn't um, coming as, as easily. And uh, I give them credit for their defense. They were, they were really physical um, all all night and um, made it tough on us. I guess following up with the physicality of Sacramento, a lot of the turnovers and just their ball pressure on you guys, we talked all about needing to not turn the ball over heading into this. What, I guess, kind of caused you guys to cough up the ball so much and how did that change the momentum of this game? Yeah, the, fir the first half, I think we had um, 10 turnovers, if I'm not mistaken, and, and um, did a better job in the second half. But, um, you know, some of it was um, just... Um, you know, some careless decisions. Some of it was there. Um, I mean, De'Aaron Fox uh, had a couple steals on the ball. Um, so the pressure on the ball uh, bothered us. And, and, um, and then I think, you know, later on in the game, um, you know, Steph was trying desperately to get us back in it. And he, so he was, uh, you know, making some, um, some plays where he felt like he had to, to try to make something happen. And, you know, we got a little bit out of our offense at that point. Steve, over here on the side to your right. Um, following up on Kendra's question on Clay, how difficult was it for you to see him struggle like that, given everything he's meant to the organization, everything he kind of fought through this season to have a very good second half, yeah. to see it end like that? Yeah. What was that like for you? It was tough. It was tough. I love Clay so much. I mean, what he's meant to me um, in the 10 years we've been together. Um, uh, I've, I've watched him the last couple of years, you know, fighting the, um, the feeling of devastation from the injuries. And I've watched him this year um, really flip his season around with his approach. And I saw him you know, enjoy the, the second half of the season and play with a little more freedom, a little more joy. And so tonight was tough to, um, you know, to see him struggle. Um, but as I told the guys in there that, you know, it's all, it's all part of being an athlete and being an NBA player. I mean, there's, uh, there's incredible highs and, and really tough lows. And this was a, a, a tough one uh, for Clay and just, and for the whole team, you know, we just, we didn't play very well. And, um, uh, and it hurts, so it's all part of it. Uh, Coach, is it an inevitable that you mentioned being sentimental that I don't know how long you've started kind of feeling that way, but like kind of what were your thoughts uh, 
as you went into the locker room, knowing that the locker room may look a lot different. Or perhaps it could look the same. As yeah, I mean, and, and it, it, it's that way anyway. Even if you're winning um, every year, you lose um, guys and bring new guys in. And, you know, the relationships that you build in this job are, are really special because you go through um, so many emotional highs and lows together and you form um, these powerful bonds that last a lifetime. It's what I love about team sports. I mean, you just, you know, my, my best friends in life are, you know, my, my former teammates who I played with. And uh, there's something incredibly powerful about, um, you know, the, these relationships. And you, you just know that um, every year there's going to be changes and um, it's, it's part of the business, but doesn't, doesn't make it any easier. Steve, it felt like this game was much more like early in the season to help you got over where it's like they're throwing all this at Steph and you need somebody else. You've got a lot of guys who can score, but it feels like you just didn't know who was scoring that night. Just how difficult is that to run an offense when you don't know like which guy is going to be or maybe if two guys are having a bad night? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I've got to do a better job next year of um, – you know, helping us offensively, helping us find a little more rhythm. Um, I think we got a little too dependent on individual play this year. Um, last couple of years, really, we've, um, you know, we haven't had the same uh, rhythm and flow that we've had, um, you know, over the last decade. And uh, I think uh, my staff and I have to really um, look um, at everything we're doing and try to create a, a little more offensive flow to help our uh, our secondary players, um, you know, get get easier shots and, and, and better rhythm. Uh, just everything that required the second half of the season going 27 and 12 to kind of get to this point. Did you sense that all of that kind of took a toll um, having to win so many games like that just a year? No, I, I mean, I don't think that was why we lost tonight. I, th I think uh, we found a really good formula and a good groove in the second half. Um, to me, um, what this season is about is how many um, great teams there are in the West. You know, for us to, to win 46 games and be the 10th seed, that's uh, – you go back in the history of the league, um, 46 – on average, probably gets you the fifth seed. Uh, we got a bunch of teams going for it, a bunch of teams who have loaded up, uh, really talented, really well coached. Um, so the West is um, just a bear this year. And, um, you know, you got New Orleans and Sacramento. One of them's going to be out of the playoffs on Friday. Both have had uh, great seasons. And, um, but when you look at everybody above us, uh, you know, Dallas, Denver, Clippers, um, I know I'm missing several more. Um, you know, the, the, it's uh, Minnesota and, and OKC is the one seed. I mean, these are all great teams. And uh, I've never seen um, a conference so loaded. And that's why, like, I, I'm, I'm really proud of our guys and, and obviously disappointed in the end result. But I can't sit here and say, you know, Man, what, you know, one play here, one play there. Um, this is a this was a tough season because everybody's good out there. How do you, how do you kind of view your your season, coaching Chris, and and how do you view his future or non future yeah. with you guys? Chris has been fantastic, not only on the court but the leadership. Um, you know, he's it, it's a difficult situation for him that he handled beautifully. But I mean, he's always been the starting point guard for his team. But you look at our team and we're pretty small, you know, and even though he's one of our best players, if we want to throw our best players out there and he, you know, he's, he's one of them, you start, you know, adding up, you know, Chris, Steph, Clay, we're, we're you know, we're just, it's not the ideal roster for him. Um, but he was fantastic for us because he became our backup point guard. Um, as I've said many times, our, our non-Steph minutes were uh, the best they've ever been um, because of Chris's leadership. Um, when anybody um, was injured and he played with Steph, it's fantastic. Um, but it's tough to, to, to survive. You saw it tonight. I mean, I think their size and physicality 
um, overwhelmed us. And um, so when you look at the, um, the combinations that we have uh, out there, it usually kind of separates Steph and Chris and, and Clay. And so there's not as, as many minutes as Chris would like. But the way he handled it this year was incredibly so professional, um, such a great mentor for the younger guys. Um, but one of the great pros I've ever been around just his approach and his attitude and his sacrifice um, uh, I love coaching Chris and I, I really hope we um, bring him back next year and we, you know like I said there's a long off season we've got to we got to see how it all plays out Steven Sencor looked for a little while that Kaminga Pajemski and Moody were kind of holding you in this game uh, what does this one game but what is this under this kind of challenge, tell you about those guys. What does it add to them? Maybe going into the off season and next season. Yeah, I mean, I think all three had had uh, good seasons. Moses, um, you know, was in and out of the lineup, but but um, every time we called on him, including tonight, um, you know, he really played well. And um, I think both he and Jonathan, in their third years, have um, have really um, gotten better and. and um, uh, blossomed and uh, BP showed, uh, you know, that he's he's for real. As a rookie, he was. There's a reason we played him so much. Um, he's a hell of a player. Uh, Trace too. Trace had a tough night, but a great experience for him to feel this. And uh, so we got a lot of good young players, and and that's uh, very promising. Um, but we'll we'll worry about all that stuff, you know, later on. If uh, if Mike Dunleavy or someone else in the front office asked you, you know if you believe that Steph, Clay, and Draymond are capable of making another championship run, what would you tell them? I would say I believe they can. I'll, uh, you know, these guys are all still really damn good players. So um, hopefully we, we uh, can re-sign Clay. Uh, Draymond and Steph are both, uh, you know, under contract. So we're going we're gonna to roll it back next year. Clay is the question mark there, though. You mentioned that. I mean, how imperative do, do you view it as to keep him around? Uh, we, we need Clay back. I mean, he's, um, you know, his, uh, I know he had a tough night tonight, but what he represents for us, the spacing, um, you know, we're not a deep shooting team. We're a little top heavy. And, um, you know, Clay's presence means so much to the, to the spacing on the floor, to the flow of the offense. And um, he's still got good, good years left. And, um, and I know I speak for everybody in the organization. We want him back. Um, obviously, there's business uh, at hand, and that has to be addressed with Clay's representatives and, you know, Mike and Joe. And, but what Clay has meant to this franchise, as good as he still is, um, we desperately want him back. Thank you. All right. Draymond is ready to go pretty much. Uh, let me make sure I have enough memory on this computer. <laughs> and we'll get right to it. Yeah, we should. 80 gigs. All right. So Draymond's coming on. Let's see. Okay, I don't need any of that. Okay. Draymond Green, here we go. Really curious to see what he says. Jermon, you left at the score sheet. What did you see from the score sheet on this game, and what do you think? Where do you think it went wrong? Uh, we lost one eighteen and ninety four. That's what I was laughing at. Uh, I think they were just more. They were more physical than us the whole game. Jermon, you guys are used to having your season end so so early. What are the emotions? as maybe you're either checking out of the game for the last time you guys are walking off the court for the final time, seeing Clay turn back and kind of take in the scene. What are the emotions for you in those moments? Uh, just kind of upset. It's lost. Um, 
you know, it's a fun group to come and work with every day. So kind of sucks that that comes to an end, but yeah, I don't really know. Do you have confidence that you know, it's a fun group to come work with every day? Do you have confidence that this group will still be the core group here next season? Uh, yeah, I have no reason not to. Um, you know, they stuck with us through the good and the bad. Not so great this year, but can't win every year. So, yeah, I do have confidence until it's no longer. How vocal will you be about the need to bring Clay back? I mean, he's that's kind of the, the biggest question lingering. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously we want Clay back. You know, it's... Uh, You know, we've been through a lot, uh, you know, incredible highs, some shitty lows. Um, but the common denominator through both of them is that we've gone through each and every scenario together, you know. So, um, <clears throat> you know, it's obvious that we want to continue what we've been doing. But I understand he got a decision to make. Uh, he going to make the best decision for him. Um team got a decision to make uh they'll make the best decision for the team but you know um i have no doubt that even if you know which i don't think there's any scenario where clay leaves and that's the best decision for this team and organization uh but what i don't doubt is if if joe or mike or anybody felt that it was best that this team moves forward without Clay, that wouldn't be the decision they make because they believe that. You know, um, they've shown nothing but respect, loyalty, um, love, trust to us. So I got no reason to go into it like, oh man, they're not going to do right by Clay. They did right by me. Uh, they've done right by Steph. They've done right by all of us. You know, Clay got, Clay tore his ACL. Um, they paid him $160 million. So I have no reason to think that our ownership group aren't going to take care of us the way we've taken care of this organization. Uh, like I said, ultimately that decision will be Clay's. <clears throat> but I don't look at it like, oh man, they're going to only do what's There's a lot of organizations that will only do what's best for the organization. This ain't one of them. Draymond, as as, even as you guys went through this up and down season, you get ready for this game. Before this game, when you look at Steph and Clay, how much belief is there from you about what you guys can do going into this game? I always got belief uh, coming into games like this door dot situations. You know, um, each and every time uh, those guys come through. Uh, you know, Clay had a rough shooting night tonight, but he competed. Uh, you know, shots don't always fall. Uh, we got some got him some great looks that just didn't go in. Um, shots that he hit. Any other time, they just didn't fall. And so I always ride with those guys, man. They always uh, step up to the challenge. And it's no different than night shots just didn't go in. You guys are proud. You guys have had a lot of accomplishments. How hard was it to take a game like this at this time? Uh, loss is a loss. I don't really look at it like, oh, man, this game, what happened? And then we're done uh, this year. So it's just that. Dre, how would you categorize this season for you personally? Um, interesting, very interesting, but it was fun. Always enjoyed playing basketball. Uh, like I said, going to war with those guys in that locker room each and every night was made anything that I went through personally worth it, uh, because I got to step back in there with the guys that had my back each and every day. Uh, so I never really look at it like from a personal standpoint, you know, I've had incredible years where I've been all-star, defensive player of the year, champion, all of that. It's never about what it, what it necessarily is for me personally, you know, so, uh, I'm always one I take the good with the bad, uh, you know, I don't, not a front runner, I don't only show up when it's good, I show up even more when it's bad, you know, and uh, through the through the ups and downs in this season, uh, in time, you know, it's time to show up and, you know, I triple win. That's what I would do, you know, and I said uh, the, 
the bumps in the road along the way that sucked uh, made it a lot easier walking in the locker room and practice with those guys. So, uh, interesting nonetheless. I think I grew a lot. And, uh, you know, you take that growth, you channel it, find other ways to grow, get better, keep pushing forward. Uh, Draymond, uh, those first couple games of the season that you you guys played the uh, Kings. Uh, we were, you know, discussing that he had the Kings number at the time, and you were saying, "Well, you didn't think so, but it, it was just part of the learning process." Now they got one, and they get to move on. Do you have any, uh, you know, parting ways, you know, at least for this season, uh, you know, how they've been playing? Because they did have some uh, bad losses, but they withstand that. And like I said, they got you tonight. Yeah, it's a good team. Uh, you know, I don't think any differently of them because they won than I thought before. Uh, you know, what they're capable of. It's a team that took us to seven last year and we're able to pull out that series. Um, but, you know, they're a team to be reckoned with. You know, not last year, not this year, but, you know, as this, the years move forward, uh, they'll be right there. You know, great coaching staff. Uh, ownership group has done an incredible job. Fox is taking that next step. Uh, Sabonis. Keegan Murray continues to grow. Uh, HB being that solid vet for them. Um, you know, they got a good thing going. And you said down the stretch wasn't ideal for them. Uh, to even be in this situation wasn't ideal. But you got to take the cards that you dealt uh, and play the hand. And so, you know, they, they're doing a good job of that. They came out victorious tonight. And it'll be interesting to watch and see their growth. Germans, even when you guys were under 500, Steve always said that this was one of his favorite groups to coach, and he really loved coaching this group, and you alluded to how much you like playing with this group. Why do you think that is, even on a season where you guys didn't get to where you wanted to go, there was that enjoyment, and what is the lasting memory of this group, even right at this point? Yeah, it's team been through a lot, man. Um, you know, and through it all, nobody ever wavered. You know, you can appreciate a group like that. Um, chemistry on this team is great, you know, which always helps. Uh, and it was a fun group, you know, to show up with every single day. Uh, when the times were great, the group was great. When the times were bad, the group was great, you know. And so, um, yeah, you know, uh, what you take away from it is obviously it didn't end the way we wanted to end, but it was fun going to work each and every day. Draymond, you guys had 46 wins. Normal years, you're somewhere near the middle of the conference. This year you're in the play-in. Do you look at that and say, man, it's just a weird year, or do you say, man, it's a lot of teams between us and getting back to the top? Uh Every year there's 29 teams in between you and getting to the top, so I don't view this one as any different than that. But uh, I think I view that as the league has gotten better. You know, uh, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. And I think the league is improving. So I don't uh, necessarily view it as like next year if we got 46 wins, it'll be more normal and you'll be in fourth seed or sixth seed. I don't think that's the case. Uh, I think the league has improved and it's going to continue to get better. So, like, you got to figure it out. And I think, you know, when we look at our season, we lost, I mean, we won 46 games. I can count on you right now. I can count six losses to you right off the top of my head that, like, we gave away, you know? And so I think the learning experience is the games that you're supposed to win, you have to win. And... Some of the games that you're not supposed to win, you got to pluck a few of those away too. And that's becoming more and more true in this league uh, with the parity that, that there is in the NBA. And I think, um, <clears throat> you know, I try to pride myself on being a guy who understands the business of basketball, understand the rules. And I think you know, we're going to see more of that uh, with the new salary restrictions and tax levels and all those things. I think you're going to see more parity because of that. And so... I don't think um, I don't think that's going anywhere. I think that's going to be more and more that way rather than reverting back to opposite way. Thank you. Appreciate that. Your, your season with Chris, uh, what, what did you think of you know how he handled uh, you know the job he had to do and, and kind of his I guess unknown future with you? Ah uh, man, Chris was great. Um, I'm thankful and honored 
uh, happy as hell that I got the opportunity to play with him this year. Uh, that we all got the opportunity to, to be teammates with Chris. Uh, it's not something a million years since I've said a million times um, that we ever would have imagined. And, you know, other than winning, couldn't have gone any better. Uh, learned so much from him. Uh, built a relationship that will go beyond whether he's here next year or not, whether I'm here next year or not, uh, you know. And so, man, extremely thankful for C. Um, you know, there's, there's not, um, I haven't come across many, if any, guys like that in this league, you know. And so it was just an honor to play with him um, as a teammate, I hope. You know, we get to continue doing what we do here in these uniforms. And, man, I, I hope and pray that he's back uh, and that I'm back because it's an honor having him as a teammate, the way he competes. Uh, you know, you love going to war with guys like that. <laughs> Oh, it's a commercial. Pajemski. Wow. One after the other. Let me check my uh, available memory to make sure everything's okay. I just, I got to do what I'm passionate about. And what I'm passionate about is keeping it uplifting rather than what's happening right now on Twitter. So I, I, can't, I can't not do that and I'm not going to apologize for it. So if I challenge you, I challenge you to think differently. That's who I am. How would you just contextualize uh, the the experience this season as a whole? Everything you guys went through as a team. Yeah, it's um, very valuable for me and Trace just to see the highs, the lows, uh, what it takes over the course of eighty two games to be a pro. Um, for me, I couldn't ask for anything more in, in a rookie year because if you just see the, the, the all the good or all the bad, you don't get to see, you know the even mix of what I got to see. And I think that's going to propel me for my second year. Um, but like I said, having the, the vets, the young guys around me, um, just support me, being able to play heavy minutes night in and night out on a, you know, championship level team is, is special for me and some I won't take for granted, but it's also something I'm going to use to, to build on in the future. Brandon, uh, when you guys kind of emptied the bench at the end of the game, we got four Hall of Famers, Steph, Draymond, Clay, and Chris on the bench there. What's maybe the most invaluable lesson you maybe can take away from those guys? Yeah, everything's just about perspective. I think each of them have, you know, shared their portion with me and with Trace. Um, but everything's about perspective, and nothing is ever as good or as bad as it seems. And just taking things one day at a time and knowing that everything's not going to be good and everything's not going to be bad, as was showcased, you know, throughout our season. Um, but I would say the, the lessons and, and things that they taught me, you know, beyond basketball and how I could implement that into basketball. Um, as, like I said, I think I'll use that going forward to, you know, make myself and make this team even better. <clears throat> Brandon, you said this was a, a championship level team. So assuming most of the pieces come back next year, what, what do you think you guys have to do differently? What has to happen for you guys to get to that championship level next season? Yeah, just, um, you know, stringing together those those quality performances. You know, I heard Draymond talk about it. There's about, you know, six, seven games where we had 20 plus point leads and we blew them away. And, you know, we win those six. We're not even in the play. And so, um, it's just the, the the difference, like Steve said, the difference between the one and the ten seed is is very minute. And um, if we win those games, we're not even sitting here tonight. And those are the little things, the 
the little details that I learned, you know, how much it does matter, whether it's game one, 82, 51, um, each and every game truly does matter. Yeah, a lot of time uh, to have this one sink in, even while you were playing. Uh, just what were your thoughts as this was happening, as you probably understood that the season was ending uh, and, and the way it did? What, what were you thinking? You know, it's a horrible feeling. Um, you go out there and compete, leave it all out there, and it doesn't go your way. We obviously understand you can't win it every year, but there was so much belief that we could – make something of this season uh, and, and keep our hopes alive, trying to get a win tonight and taking it from there. Sacramento played unbelievable tonight. They played aggressive and, you know, King is making shots. The, the Fox is creating. Uh, it seemed like they got every 50-50 loose ball, offensive rebound. It, it was a, a tough way to end our year for sure because obviously been through so much all year. Uh, the last two weeks, I mean two months, gave ourselves a chance to be in this situation where you, know, you win one game, win one game, then you're right where we expect to be, but we're going home. So uh, definitely frustrating, frustrating, disappointing, to say the least. Uh, but you hold your head high knowing um, there's a lot more in the tank. And uh, for me personally, that's that's the mindset. After Clay has a performance as he does tonight, do you say anything to him, especially given that it's the last game of the season and he is entering unrestricted free agency? I know that everybody's going to try to connect that, but it's about the sense of pride and uh, I think just the committing him on a hell of a year. Everybody's going to talk about one game. And I know he wanted to play better. But, you know, we go through so much over 82 games. And the fact that he was able to turn his season around with a new role and adjusting to coming off the bench for a long period and then, you know, back in the starting lineup and just really just having fun playing basketball and being at peace out there. I'm more worried about that um, because I know he's a true champion and we all, you know, again, prepare ourselves to play, you know, our best when the lights are, are bright and when it doesn't happen, nobody needs to tell you anything um, because all we want to do is win and numbers aside, like that's the only thing that matters. So it looks like tonight you had two and three guys following you like they had a very specific game plan to take you away. Did it feel like that was kind of indicative of the year and trying to figure out how to attack these defenses and how to use that to benefit everybody else, so to speak? Does it feel like this was tougher than normal this year? Yes and no. I mean, uh, I think there's certain lineups <clears throat> that we have out there that – Teams are, you know, are going to make other people either be ball handlers or, or shot creators. Um, but we obviously have counters to a lot of stuff. It's just tonight was the extreme version of that, where I know they remember what happened last year, and uh, you know, got a lot of history with you know Mike B and and the way that he approaches the defensive end. So it was a surprise that it was that aggressive and bodies everywhere i think we had certain stretches of the game where we made them pay but over the course of 48 you know that strategy works so you tip your hat to them um you know i always find try to find ways to still be aggressive and had a couple you know loose turnovers but for the most part they just took it to us the whole game and there's really no other way around it 
you said you can um you can hold your head high knowing that there's a lot more in the tank what gives you confidence that you and the core of you clay and draymond have a lot more in the tank uh just knowing how we're built i mean we obviously understand the league has changed and you know we're getting deeper into our careers and we have to to evolve and um you know, make the necessary adjustments to win games, but we put a, a lot of time into it. I think I work harder than I ever have at, you know, being pre prepared for a season and, and trying to, you know, perform at the level that I expect. And I know those two guys have been through it with me. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I just want to win. And I know um, that – that's fully possible. You know, I know this summer is going to be uh, a lot of conversations and, you know, trying to set up ourselves to win and whatever that means. Um, I hope that's the outcome. What do you think about your season with Chris Paul and, uh, and I guess the, the, uh, your view on his future, either with you guys or not? I haven't played against him for, you know, so many years. Uh, there's a lot said about our relationship when I was coming out of, of college and shadowing him for a summer or two and him showing me the ropes. And then obviously the uh, playoff experiences that we had playing against him. You, don't, you, you know, I know, you know, him, his family, I know the way he approaches things. But when you see it on a day-to-day, -day, through the course of the season, you see how passionate he is about the game of basketball, the conversations you have, the – Way that we kind of push each other. Um, I had so much fun playing with him. You know, I, I know he's you know, year nineteen, um, and I don't know how this thing will play out. But he is a guy that you love playing with because he brings it every single day. He gives everything he has to this game. Um, a guy that you kind of battle with who puts the most time in like he's a you think you're at the gym early he's always there so it's kind of great to see somebody that loves the game as much as you do um and i know he's always going to find ways to try to be impactful um and you know we'll see what happens over the course of the summer but a team you know having him is, is a better team because of the way he approaches everything stuff uh, following up on kendra's question um Steve talked often about how much pressure Clay puts on himself. And he struggled the last few elimination games. Um, how, how do you see him? How difficult is that when the, so the lights are brightest for him to put pressure on himself? How do you, as a friend and teammate, do you say anything to him? Do you, do you see that? Do you see him put that pressure on himself? Or I'm curious your thoughts on it. No, I see him approach the game the right way, and it just you know hasn't worked out. You know, uh, has worked out for him individually with you know the the numbers and the way that he expects to play, and that's that's okay. It happens. It's the sports. It's unpredictable, and um, we've all been in that experience where you have amazing highs, and he's had those, and we've all had amazing uh, d you know deep lows where you know you walk off the court. And you're super hard on yourself because you know you, know, you wish it would have gone in a different way. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just part of what we do and how hard it is of you know what we do over and over and how long we've been doing it. So the spotlight is bright and you have to accept um, you know the highs and lows of what we do, but not lose confidence in yourself. And I think Clay's been a walking model of that. You know earlier in the year we were talking about his play and he responded so it's a tough way to end the season but I'm sure he'll be back strong Steph how, how do you feel I guess physically you've had to carry a heavy load especially with some of the changes that's been going on you know on the floor in the last maybe quarter did you feel fatigued did you, did you feel the burden I mean you talked about Chris Paul being in year 19 you're what year 15 how do you feel I know I'm answering this question April 16th with no more games left, but I feel great. <laughs> uh, if we had to play Friday, I'd have been fine. If, you know, going to a playoff series, I'd have been fine. Like, I'm built for this, and I put up so much time in. Um, 
And then, like, there's no sympathy. Oh, you had this burden to carry and all that. That's what we get paid to do. And, um, you know, did everything in my power to be available and perform at the level that I expected myself. I don't care what anybody else has to say. And I think I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, and just be with the perspective, I'm blessed to play this game. And I still have fun playing this game. And, again, I just want to win. And be in the best situation to make that happen. So that's what I'm looking forward to in the future. Steph, you talked about the highs and the lows and all the emotions. What did you enjoy most about playing with this particular group of guys this season? Just how we've handled all the adversity of this year. Um, you know, it's been an emotional roller coaster for sure. And you, you realize how much time you spend together. I think we talk about that every year. You know, this is nine, ten months of of a grind. And from the time this group showed up to some voluntary mini camps in the summer to, you know, training camp to all 82 games we played. And again, everything that we went through from some guys missing from time to time, you know, losing a, a member of our family to you know, looking up in the stands and trying to find a way to stay relevant down the stretch of the year. Like we, we always kept our spirit and kept the juices flowing in the right direction and kept good energy and confidence in each other. That's hard to do. Um, so I'm proud of that because there's plenty of excuses that you could have let go of the rope uh, a long time ago. And, you know, we had a really good strong finish to the season. I'm still a ten seed, but it's weird. But you're in a position where you have if you have life, and that's all you ask for. It just didn't work out. Uh, just, I guess, big picture. Um, what do you feel like? Is, you know, the young guys on this team can take away from this experience this season, and you know, moving forward, um, how can their development help? You know, get you guys to where you want to go. We asked a lot of you know BP, Trace, JK took another step a big step in the right direction. So invaluable reps to understand how hard it is to win in this league and, uh, you know, what it takes to be consistent every single night. So uh, hopefully they instill some confidence in themselves that they, you know, can contribute and will carry that momentum into the summer where, you know, they, they put the work in and, you know, whatever – mixture roster we have coming back we're gonna need some youth to come in and and, and help us and um i think we found some gems for sure so it's just a matter of continue to uh make the necessary adjustments as a team to understand what's the 24 25 warriors gonna look like and what's it gonna take to win uh, i think they felt that all year and hopefully learn some valuable lessons uh, Steph, just dream on and the coach just mentioned they want Clay come back next season. How confident are you that he will be back next season? I can never see myself, you know, not with those two guys. It's, I understand this league changes and there's so many things that go into it and we're not going to play forever, but, you know, we've uh, experienced so much together and at the end of the day, like, again, I know they want to win. I know I want to win. And that's all I worry. That's all I'm, uh, that's all I'm worried about. Well, I'm, I, it sounds like you think little changes, little tweaks are, are reasonable and you guys can win with that and, it, and big changes aren't necessary. Uh, I mean, I have, I'm talking to Mike and Coach and – this league, you never know, man. Like it's, it's, it's raw right now. Just sitting here, let me figuring out if I want to watch the playoffs or not. Um, on April sixteenth, like this is not for me. This is unfamiliar territory. So even answer that question, it's like I get. I just want to win, man. Whatever that means, I want to win. <laughs> So they'll do uh, exit interviews.
Hopefully Dean can come on because now I got to go do some work. Uh, right, cool. Hope Dean can come on because I really gotta go do this. Oh, that's the uh, NBA's little advertisement. Oh, uh, Zena Kada is saying we're 100 days from the uh, Paris Olympics, but we're really um, less than that from the training camp. Hey, Dean. What's up, Britt? All right. Good to have you. Be right back. He's talking about Clay retiring. Nah. I was going to get another contract with the Dubs, I think. And uh, we'll see how everything goes. Yeah. Um, what's up, everybody? Thank you, Dean Adon. Thank you, Shabaj. Thank you, Nexi. Yes, I don't know who BLS is. Sorry. Um, could you explain that if you can, Dean? Steph, Katie, Braun, and Joel pick and roll with Drew, Braun, Bam, defense. Bean? Bean Chambers? What's up, Pinky Lou? Thank you, Appalachia Apache. Like you followed. Great. I have a great off season. You lost the. Oh, it's the Philippine basketball team. Oh, okay. Nice. That'd be cool. Always good to have the Philippines in the Olympics, basketball-wise. Kobe B. <laughs> Thank you. That's very nice. How do I feel about them being eliminated? Um, we're the 10th seed, you know, so um, historically, not that there's been many years, but historically that's not been the best uh, indicator of success, being the 10th seed. <clears throat> I don't, I guess I'm still <clears throat> um, I'm still putting a lot of emphasis on the way the Warriors played tonight versus um, not that the Kings didn't didn't you know play with a lot of energy they hit a lot of tough shots too you know i mean it's just that's just basketball man uh harrison barnes and keegan murray and um david mitchell you know they really complimented fox and sabonis but I'm, I'm having a hard time not putting the onus on the warriors uh and the way that we played you know um but on to the olympics right for Steph Curry um, still think that we uh, are the most talented team in the league and that we're gonna win number five nothing changes really um, just had a bad game at the wrong time had a had a huge reversal back to some of the problems early in the season um, I know we can play better than that. I know we can play better than that. I just do, you know. Um, so I don't think I don't think I felt the way I thought I would feel because we didn't play anywhere. Cl we, do we I, I don't know if you even give this team a, a D tonight. You know, got kind of got back into the game, but there was a lot of points where I know that we can. You know, um, where where we can improve. Wiggins, you know, uh, up and down kind of game, but no, he can play better. J.K. 
absolutely him being aggressive would have turned the tide on a lot of the stuff, especially coming out of the the coming into the first, excuse me, coming into the second half. Um, you know, Clay Clay going over ten, I think it was. You know, people are going to look at the 0 for he wasn't he wasn't pushing it though. People are saying he's trying to. He took ten shots, just and, and it's pretty good ones. You know, maybe you'd like to see a little bit more. Uh, uh you know emphasis on getting into the paint from everybody um stuff a little bit of a rough game a lot a lot of contact where um you know i felt like the the warriors had been had been getting into the paint and and creating contact and that was uh you know the refs let both sides play physical but i i did feel like um We weren't getting calls, and we let that bother us in terms of physicality. You know, um, <laughs> you take around says we Indians love cricket. That's true, man. I was in London, getting a, a ride with a taxi driver from uh, from India, and uh, he said he was yes. And who are you rooting for in the uh, in the World Cup? He's like, oh, I'm rooting for England, you know. Okay, what about the cricket? What, what whatever the major cricket thing? He's like, no, like, you can't, you can't root against India. <laughs> I always thought that was funny. Yep. Um, Steph and Braun. Last time we saw them play together in a game, we saw Steph hit 16 threes. I, yeah, that's true. Um, it's possible, you know, we'll see. Um, obviously, Lakers going to the seventh seed, facing the Nuggets, a uh, conference finals matchup. Um, we'll see between the Kings and the Pelicans who gets to, uh, who gets to face the Thunder. That'll be fun. Um, Uday Karan's saying, can we get Bron if we draft Bronny James? No. You you get LeBron first and get his son. Well, you know, I, that's not the way I would approach it. Um, I, I think they need clarification on the you get him first, then you get the son. You, you're, just, you're just making a point. But the, the actual literal, <laughs> the literal, uh, what do you call it? uh analysis of what you said uh it's just like it's it's uh confusing um, what's well, confusing sorry do you get do you draft Bronny just to have a better chance to get lebron we don't know i i don't think you can definitively say no to that um well and then what i mean is if you is if you want to go get lebron what you're saying is then you go get lebron you don't go another route uh, so I, I don't think you can say yes or no on, on anything just yet. And you just, you know, but I, I understand if you're trying to um, advocate a frame of mind for that. So a frame of mind for approaching it for, for wanting LeBron or having a goal to get LeBron. So I, I commend you for that. It's just, Again, I, I want to stay away from just the absolutism of things because mm. I've been proven wrong so many times. So take my advice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely wasn't trying to say I'll we're going go, to get no, it Because there, right. be there might be a team out there that wants to do that. And then somehow two years in the future, you never know, right? Uh, so I don't know that you want to just shut that down. Uh, now, as far as, as actually if you pick – brawny you're 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 gonna have to try and glean some value out of that that pick and from what i've heard he's just not a good player so there's that there's that problem too but i think what you're trying to tell uday is that that's the wrong mindset to take if you want to spend a draft pick on brawny 
as sort of a lottery ticket for for LeBron, right? Yeah, I think the all, all I'm trying to say is that if there were a meeting, uh, sh- should LeBron not resign immediately with immediately with the Lakers? I would say like, if you come here, we'll go get Bronny because <laughs> I don't think he's going to be a first round draft pick. There you go. Know? And then it's like, well, oh, LeBron's already with the Warriors. You know, we can trade Bronny for three second round draft picks in the future because that's like you know that seems to be where he might go if if he even decides to go into the draft i don't has he declared i'm not sure about he has oh okay yeah but it's not it's not 100 percent. you know like he can go back right yeah it's not the deadline where you can't right yeah right right that's the waters type deal um I know all the Warriors fans say no, 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 but like you know, it can be fun. It can be a fun. Uh, it can be a fun team. Um, oh, next he thinks uh, he's just testing the waters and he won't uh, go into the draft. That's interesting. I I wouldn't be upset with that. I, you know, um, it's his career. He shouldn't. He shouldn't do something to help his dad, because <laughs> his dad doesn't need the help. That's you know? what his dad said. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure because he's a good because he's a good father. That's exactly, exactly. what he said. You know. So, yeah. um. But hey, you know, if it's out there, let's go for it, man. Uh, we're not meant to be kicked out of the out of the play in. Steph, Steph Clay, Dre, and uh, the young guys we have. We well, can play a lot better, better than we played. Yeah, huh? that's, that start of the season was just so bad. Well, after the six game winning streak, especially, yeah. Um, six game winning streak? Did we even have one of those? Did we have a or six and two? Maybe it was six and two. We yeah. started off the season with a couple good wins, but uh, I got to tell you, man, I think there's some rhythm here. Right, 2019 lose the tough finals. 2020, very rough year. 21 lost and playing. 22 championship. Right, but if we're going for rhythm, then maybe 2022 was 2019. 23 with all the difficulty and all the chemistry tension. Uh, maybe that's maybe that was kind of 2020, right? And you rebuild the team, go for kind of have an up and down season, learn a lot of lessons, a lot of things happen, you know, and you lose in playing in 24. And so if we were able to put together our road record this year, it was 26 and uh, 15, is that right? At our uh, home record last year, that's – 59 wins. Um, so, um, you might think I'm crazy right now. I feel like I'm a little crazy right now saying this, but I'm going to say it, man. I think this team is meant to be a title contender. And uh, not being in the second apron, we have to get on the second apron, of course. That's, uh, I think that's really possible, you know, because we haven't put together a stretch, a long stretch of the season where we've been playing at the level that our best games show me. Because when we're at our best, this team is insane. I mean, we're talking about. We're talking about the Nuggets needing a half court banked three from Yoke from their center to beat us, you know, or or the what was it six point Christmas game loss or, you know, uh, beating Celtics um, uh, early in the season, all that type of stuff, you know. So, uh, there have been games that hurt to lose, 
this one's more frustrating to me personally i think just because that was that was not even close to our best tonight. not even it's not it's like you know the astronauts weren't even the rocket weren't even in the rocket you know compared to the the heights that we were that this team was able to reach during the season that i saw uh, oftentimes it just that's frustrating man it's frustrating but i'm gonna trust the rhythm a little bit oh i just said you don't want to see us next year <laughs> i typed that in too Make a great team this offseason. Make a big team, big players. We need everything. We will have a draft pick. Twenty. I don't think we have our draft pick this year, unfortunately. Um, second, in the first round, uh, second round yeah, acquisition second. for the uh, Corey Joseph one, but we gave up a 2025 second rounder for that one. Mm, but okay, we have a 40ish from Indiana apparently. Of course, it'll be confirmed later, but um, we'll see. I'm uh, more Pretty and more convinced that one of the reasons this league is so deep is also because the drafts have been so deep. Yep. Not that every pick has been a hit, but that there's a TJD, you know, in the second round. There's a – oh, I'm, there's a lot of guys from the second round that I can't name off the top of my head right now, but um, – Definitely don't take that that pick lightly. Oh, my hair Wild looks Dean. All messed up. <laughs> cool. Oh, I got to delete that comment. Yeah. Uh -oh. What happened? Come on. People call Katie a snake. Oh, you know, why would we want Katie back? Or... Wow. That's so on, high Armand. school, man. That's so high school. Maybe they are in high school, so they got all that going on around them. Uh, I'm not timing them out and just deleting that. Oh one. yeah, Armin's just 15, so yeah. Thanks for uh, letting us know. Okay, so we'll we'll work on it. 15, man. Katie's so. not a snake. The media is a, is the snake. Hey, hey he was born hey, in '09. Katie's been in the league his entire life, maybe '08. So just he helped us become the greatest team of all time. You know, it's all good. Also, Rich, last time we got blown out in in an elimination game in the postseason was when? Do you even remember? I think it's going to be 2013 yeah. or 14. No, it wasn't 2014. That was game seven. Yeah. And it was somewhat close. But 2015 title, 16 lost by four, 17, 18 title, 19. Steph had a chance to win it. 20, we didn't make the playoffs. 21. It was a LeBron, 50 seconds left, three-pointer, and some other free throws or something like that. Against the Grizzlies, it was overtime. 22 won the title again. 23. Um, I guess 23, we kind of got blown out in game six, but um, that was game six in the second round. So and this year, man. I wish I could be... The way I sounded when I sent you that text, Rich. It's just, well, it's it's rough when I see this team beat itself too. You know, that's oh. that's really frustrating. That's really frustrating. I think it still holds, though. Oh yeah, I, I still believe that. It's just, it's not. You know, it's not the loss. You said it's, right here. It's yeah. What are we trying to prove? We just want to keep playing with our friends. If the season ends today, I'm going to cherish this season and all the growth we've had. If not, and until it does, oh, I did a double N. <laughs> and until it does, we can get number five. That's it. That's still true. I still feel that way. Just wish that. Dang, I just realized I wore an unlucky hat. An unlucky hat? Yeah. What, the Oakland one? Why is it unlucky? Because it's a flat bill. I'm going with the round bill. Uh, <laughs> for the for just the, wear it backwards next time right? <laughs> uh, really appreciate that we got to see the legendary Chris Paul and the legendary Steph, 
Steph Curry play a full season together in the same uniform. Absolutely. You know, the loss isn't on Rich. He's been he's been humble, but don't say that, Shamach. Come on. Uh oh. What happened? He said the loss is on Rich because of your hat. Oh. Just, <laughs> come on, man. No, no need to do uh, that. No, that's <laughs> I'll, I'll, if if it was that easy, if I, I could only dream that it would be that easy. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's more complicated than that. That's it. Nikola Jokic was the 46th pick. That's Which a great goes one, to show it? you of uh, the whole superstition thing just never works. <laughs> so, oh, well. You know what, though? I think uh, I have to disagree with you there, Rich, because one of my favorite players ever was Ray Allen, and there was very few people more superstitious than him. <laughs> Oh, really? And uh, oh, yeah, yeah. He shaved his head the same way. He took the exact same shots. He did all this, all oh, this stuff. Goodness. You know, uh, good old Jesus Shuttlesworth, man. I haven't watched that movie yet. I should. He got game. I guess I got time. Oh, Damn it. <laughs> yeah, all right. Oh, shucks. I'm going to do some stuff. By the way, everybody, I'm sure that we'll still be here covering big playoff games. So yeah. don't go away. Yeah. Don't uh, shut us off until the playoffs are over, at least. And then I'm sure Rich will have something great in the off season that we can talk about, uh, like the Olympics, maybe. How about that? So yeah, let's go. War is going to keep going, man. We're going to keep going. Yeah, that's that's the that's the thing. You, you gotta just like Steph said, you gotta keep evolving. What the yeah, heck are exactly. we gonna do this? <laughs> We got bounced so early. What do we do? Yeah. Well, we did get a healthy end to the season for all of our players. You know, no no major injuries or anything like that. That'll keep them out for next year so far. Um, our Bill on Twitch is asking, have we seen Nurkic Twitter? Uh, I tried looking it up, but uh, go ahead and send it over, man. Uh. He's he's just it's an ongoing thing. I, I try to just all right. I still want to see <laughs> why why do we do that? <laughs> why do we do that? Well, I just <laughs> you're eventually gonna get tweets that you're outraged by, and that one might outrage you. Why? Why voluntarily do that? Like I don't really care what Are he's you talking saying. to me. I'm talking to everybody. Oh yeah. Maybe even people that tend to do. Did you hear what he said? Did you hear what this guy said? Did you hear what that guy said? The the Do only really pushback. I don't do. really care because, like, I already know what I know, and I know that like Stephen A. Smith, Nurkic, uh, anybody is just not really going to change anything about that, which is. One thing the, that I always wondered, how did Steph become having that ability? Now I know it took me a long way to get there. I used to be more like the Draymond type. Yeah. I hope, I the, hope Draymond, they all converge, and, you know, get to the more. They, they still got room to grow, so they'll get there. We, we had all, huge strides I, this I year towards room, that. room to grow as well, so. Oh, we all do. We all do. We all do. So anyway, yeah. I uh, I don't the, know. The if only I can do that here. Yeah. Oh, did you hear what that that person tweeted? And like, yeah, I don't want to do that. I just the don't. only thing I'm gonna say, Rich, is that a Nurkic is an NBA player, and b most of the times when there are tweets like that and from players, the Warriors tend to play really well. <laughs> like they tend to like the you know like the Tar and Warriors come out today. Like, yeah, I didn't no. even think that was all that bad because I didn't think I thought that was funny. I I, 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 I the thought context. the Warriors would love that. You have this kid that is injured. He literally can't play. I mean, he's bored and he's anxious and he wants to do something. And it's hey, it's you know, it's the Warriors. Yeah, I There's wish the Kings would trash talk this more, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, Steph had a good, you know, comeback with the bottles and stuff yeah. and all of that. So absolutely. But you know that that's that one is more. I mean, even the Nurkic one, it's just kind of like you're looking at 450 NBA players. So 
there's just this and that and not everybody gets along some people do and uh it's a small little community but i, I just don't want to get too outraged by anything just you know good heads up but like I'm not here to go like, oh, but Nurkic is this or that, and he's he's not this and that. It's just like I'm so tired of that. Like, who cares? Just like Steph said, I just I just want to win. I just want to play games and try yeah. to win games. And Mr. Yup said we avoid playing if Draymond doesn't get suspended. Draymond doesn't grow the way we need him to grow to to uh, get back on the championship level next year. Looks like rather than this year, uh, if, if well, that doesn't happen. But I, I think that's not it. Mr. Yup, I think he's just trying to um, – the intention. It's just the intention to take a bad loss and, you know, I, I get where you're going with that. So it's all good. Yeah, Chell says uh, we wouldn't know. Stop with the speculation. That's true too and obviously very, very uh, well, Richian – Type of comment. Yeah. It's hard to it's hard to do the what if thing. You can yeah, absolutely. really go back and forth. I know, I know you can create a lot of NBA media content by doing the what ifs, but like then it gets tiring and then you're arguing about this and that, and it's you know becomes you know, you know, Judge Judy trial type stuff, and it's just yeah. Judge Judy and executioner. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen uh Hot Fuzz Rich? No. Nah. No, heard about it. Yeah, I can't remember oh. what it is. it's a little gory, but it's oh. uh, it's a police action film comedy. From, I, from I think I mean, it was that the one with uh, Simon Pegg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw Nick that. Frost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about it? Uh, someone. Oh, you know what? I don't know what it was. <laughs> um, oh, it's Judge funny. Judy and Executioner. That was it. Oh, that's in the movie? That's yeah, yeah. right by me. Sorry. Problems up beyond Dre suspensions. Well, I don't I mean Oh, we did have Gary Payton out. That that oh, that was nice. that was painful tonight. Yeah, for sure. He really would have helped. Yep. You know, so uh nevertheless, everybody sounded upbeat. In the uh, post game presser, wish we could have heard uh, CP3 talk, of course. Um, but uh, I will get him at the exit interviews tomorrow, maybe. Okay. Cool. Um, I am very sad. I'm not going to watch this team play until September. Yeah. You know that's that's really too bad, man. Um, Suck. Just because I love spending these nights with you guys, having uh, whatever days I don't have to work until late at night. Yeah. Uh, get to, and some days when I do work, get to hop on and um, spend time talking about the uh, what I still consider to be the uh, most amazing team in the NBA. Uh, the Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, Steve Kerr, uh, Warriors, you know. Um, yeah, I've really grown to appreciate Chris Paul, too, over the last six months. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, that sucks. It's because, like... I hate to say this, but all these other teams, you know, whoever wins the title, it's going to be a lot of pick and roll and ISO and, you know, the stars do everything. It's like, okay. Yeah. Uh, again, we, we were the 10th seed, but still all these other teams, man, there, there's nothing like the Warriors out there in sports. There's nothing. There's nothing like this team, especially when they're playing well. So, uh, Time for the next championship chase, man. Starts now, right now. Yeah. You know, 
Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I think it's going to be hard for for Dubs fans for a little bit. Not just because of the loss, but because they all the bear dynasty's over, bury the team, they're dead, and they'll kill them off, break them up. Yeah, you know, just all the same crap. And we're gonna prove them wrong again, you know. I think. I think so, at least. Um and uh game one next season. We trust JK. Gonna play Trace plenty of minutes. Gonna play Moody, you know. Clay going to be okay coming off the bench or starting, whatever the occasion calls for. You know, Steph going to be more mindful of um, of uh, just just being loose with the ball or, or maybe even having the ball in his hands um, when he's more dangerous off the ball at this point, something like that. You know, all, all this type of stuff. We, we figured all that out this season, just took the whole season to do it. And then we have this terrible collapse where I'm telling you the team, the, the best of the team that I've seen this season, especially near the end of the season, they would not have been blown out in this game. I don't know if we win, but that would have been another clutch game, another big time shots, another and it just it just none of it came together in the final in the elimination game to uh face the Pelicans, you know. Um, but Sacramento got their Game 7 revenge. Still doesn't count as a playoff series victory. Just doesn't because that's not a team that's uh, going to accept that, you know. They're, uh, they're absolutely looking to take on the Thunder if they're able to beat the Pelicans. Um so, you know, Kings, uh, Lakers, Clippers, Kings, sorry, Clippers, Lakers, Kings in from California, going to be in the playoffs. Um, you know, so as a West Coast dude, you know, California guy, I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, but uh, really wish this team would have shown up with the with the I guess I have to say sharpness again that I saw in the final stretch with Draymond coming back and I'm really excited to hear Draymond's podcast I want to hear what what he has to say there'll probably be a uh, light in the darkness <laughs> because you guys have to get ready there's going to be a lot of dumb stuff said there's going to be a lot of negativity there's going to be a lot of Yep, you uh, used the D word again. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right, I did. <laughs> gotcha. There's going to there's gonna be a lot of dirty words said about this team. There's going to be a lot of anger. There's going to be a lot of gloating because uh, everyone wants to see us fall. There's wait, no other team. Wait, what's that got to do with Draymond's? Thing? No, no, I just see Draymond's going to be an antidote to all that for me. Oh, Gotcha. Yeah. This podcast is going to be an antidote to all the other negative, um, disrespectful kind of stuff that's going to come from a lot of other people um, who are all too eager to see us uh, get buried before these guys even retire. Like, all you have to do is wait till retirement. They won't do it. They want us to get, they, they're loving it right now. You know, uh, uh, congrats, Chuck. <laughs> But uh, yeah, there's. Um, ah, what am I doing? Okay. There's. Uh, there's still a lot of hope for me with this group, just because I know what their A game looks like. Um, so. I can't wait, man. I can't wait to see how we rebound from this. Because I think I think we can. Two teams from both conferences in the tenth. 
over three seasons, hence an 0 and 6 record. Yeah. So they haven't even won a game, which is fair. If we wanted, maybe the biggest thing is if we really wanted to win this game, we would have beaten New Orleans. <laughs> that was a shot at yep. eight, uh, seven, wasn't it? Because the Lakers got eight and we had the tiebreaker, right? So. Got to win regular season games. Yeah. That's thing that we don't know how to do yet with the kind of the evolution they're getting. Well, but we'll have a whole season of the lessons we learned. Exactly. Year coming up, and yep. and hopefully a really good Olympics. I said gold medal. That's a little arrogant. Sorry, I'm an American. Uh, uh, a gold medal chase, because every team's going to try and take us down. But hopefully with that, with um, again just being under the second apron and having the flexibility that comes with that, with the lessons that we learned, with um, I, I can't think of any other 36-year-old that I've ever watched that needs to be double teamed as consistently as Steph. Still, like, oh, he turns the ball. Yeah, I get upset with that too. But like, no one gets double teamed like that when they're six-two and thirty-six years old. That's insane. So he's still like the greatest, you know. He just is, man. Um, but uh, unfortunately, this is a game you'd flush down the toilet. But it was a game to end our season. You know, if this is game 41, you just move on because you know you can play better than that. But it's not. Yep. So I have to I have to take that lesson and also now get trapped in uh, recency bias, too, because there's a lot of other good stuff that happened this this year. And. Um, I'm just. uh I'm really sorry that we didn't win more um, for this season, especially just because of Decky. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. Brate, you would hope that um, just because everything this this one group went through together this season, that we would be able to have more of a celebration, watch them celebrate with each other. And I can't say we here because I'm not on the team in that sense in any way although obviously hit me pretty hard that it happened in salt lake where it, like i drove past that place you know growing up and uh, that's that's really just unfortunate but on the other hand if decky were with us still he'd be laughing smiling saying you know don't want to see us next year so, oh, good. Young ones are in a good trajectory, Cello says. That's all you can say about next season. They'll be better and hungrier. Absolutely. Um, TJD, um, you know, had a little up and down. Uh, a couple minutes. Obviously, Looney played really well. Um, but BP and TJD are will never be rookies again. They'll never be, you know, unfamiliar again with uh, with postseason intensity because the Kings brought that tonight. They uh, again. I I I blame the Warriors for this loss. Um, because of all the things we, not blame, but I, I put I put the the onus on this team, but the Kings played with total total playoff intensity. Um, so that they've experienced it now, you know. Uh, wow. Ooh, Ruckus League is sent in a kind of technocratic post here. Oh, Amy gave us 25 bucks from 25 Hong Kong dollars. Thank you so much, Amy. Oh, wow. Queen Amy. Yeah. Amy. You're so nice, Amy. Let's see. Thank you very much. 
Miss Amy. I don't think it was deer. Just it's just a little bit different of a game, you know. Um, <laughs> he's the fifty seventh pick in the draft too, and a rookie, and we really relied upon him all season. Also, I'm hoping I'll never see a playoff game where J.K. is as hesitant to take over as he was tonight. I know he was. There was yeah. a lot of contact. Yeah, well, yeah. I know there was a lot of contact, a lot of areas where he might have been fouled. But picking up the dribble and looking to pass it away when you have an ISO situation, I I yeah. just don't. I, I mean, don't think Sabonis just retreated on him, so so he'll he'll have to have, you know, more more of a repertoire on that, and um, also the scheme. So, um, yeah, I mean, tough one, tough one to judge on because we just played so bad. Yeah, and I think. Uh, actually, when Sabonis was on him, he was willing to take that shot when Sabonis backed off. But early in the game, he would have uh, – I think it was Murray who was guarding him. And um, – oh, well, anyway, there's a lot of things we could improve upon uh, from tonight. Um, but, uh, oh, someone asked me to repeat the rhythm of the seasons. I was just saying that. Let's say 2020 is 2023, or 2023 is 2020, 2024 is 21, and 25, hopefully, will be something a little bit like 2022, you know. Um, I think the only thing that would mess that up is if Clay doesn't come back, personally. Mm -hmm. um, we need him, man. He didn't play well tonight, obviously. I mean, I... Can't show the He went. He didn't hit a single shot. You know, and Clay's yeah. 20, 20 points. That puts us normal twenty points, right? It's 18, 20 points. That puts us. That puts us right back in the game. You now it's a four point game. If he has eighteen, I think twenty three, uh, five point game maybe. Um, but uh, we have to have Clay Thompson back, man. You know, just seeing him and Draymond and Moody and CP on the boat and, you know, seeing how well he played as a, in the six-man role uh, and, and how much his, his energy changed and how much, again, also just how much hate he's going to get because he's, he's going to get skewered by people who don't appreciate um, what it means for, for this group. In part because there's no one else to compare to, you know. There's um, I went through it in, in my head last night. I didn't write it down to check, but I don't think there's any team in the NBA with the players won two championships, but they're with the same organization. Um, now that Udonis Haslam Haslam's retired, there's not a player who's won more than one championship with the same organization, other than the, other than the trio and Looney. Um, who've won four or and three with the Warriors? So the rest of the world has no. If they don't like the Warriors, they have no idea what that even means. They don't even. They can't because there's. It's not been around for a long time. You know where some of your best players won multiple championships with that organization, going back years. Um, that might that might not be true by the end of the year if the Nuggets win it or Bucks win it or Lakers win it because uh, they all have one, obviously. Um, but uh, well, Dylan Thomas, right? Don't go gently into that good night. Rage against the dying of the light. And uh, I think we're going to do that. Oh, Demon Gun said. What? 
Picky Lou, what are you what are you responding to? Yeah, where's DVDV? Hmm. Where is she? True. Hope she doesn't think it's Wednesday. That's the game's <laughs> Uh, person can. Oh, that's nice. Next, he says he has a lot of respect for you, Rich, because you've coached. Oh. You know what it's like to choose rotations and make adjustments without Google. <laughs> yeah. No AI or anything like that. You know, just gotta, just gotta go with what you, you can do. Right. Spreadsheet. Yep. 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 Might want to try looking into that next next year. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, DVD is a she. Uh, RJ is asking for KD to get back in the dub. Ah, I want to be against it. So then, should we be rooting for as many big names to have first round exits? <laughs> Ones that we could pry. So we're rooting for the Clippers. I mean, wait, Clippers is it Clippers Suns? No, it's Clippers it's, Dallas. It's Clippers Mavericks yet again. We uh, we <clears throat> have to root for Phoenix to be who are they playing? Minnesota. No, no. We, so we're rooting for Min Wait, no, but then Minnesota they might if they. Lose, then they might get rid of Cat. I think Cat's a little bit more realistic if one or the other loses. I guess I'm rooting for Phoenix. Me personally, I'll root for Phoenix. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, yeah. So if I'm rooting for them first round, yeah, just root for Minnesota to get knocked out and make the offseason a little bit more interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I, I don't. Well, I, I, I guess we have to see what's going on with Minnesota's ownership group to really get a handle on what uh, what might happen. Again, I, I would be surprised. Uh, from what I know, uh, Glenn Taylor doesn't want to sell now. Uh, the majority. Yeah. He still wants to remain majority because um, A-Rod and uh, A-Rod's group, I, I, I think there was some indication that they would uh, they would actually cut salary, so. But Glenn oh, Taylor really? wants to win, which which so I kind of commend him. Well, yeah, but it's also he agreed to sell it, and then they got good, and now he's trying to get like triple what he sold it for, too. You know. Oh, is that? I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He sold it for a billion and a half, I think it was. And he could probably get three. I guess it's double, but um, yeah. So, I think it. I think that might. Um, be something that has to be settled outside of the NBA. Actually, it's kind of kind of a strange situation up there. That sucks. Um, also, heard that this is just from you know national media guys, but I uh, heard that uh, the A Rod and there was someone else in that group that Taylor's saying they're. Um, I think his name's Lore or something like that. Yeah, it's something it's something like it's so uh, like uh, yeah, yeah. Um saying that uh they were now this is um what's this uh the previous owner's name, sorry? Glenn Taylor. Taylor, right. Taylor's group saying that they were um like late on payments or something like that oh. on these installments. So, so there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on in Minnesota. Um but well i mean that doesn't change the cycle of the nba <laughs> they gotta figure that out and uh, you know maybe the messier it gets uh the more cat won't get out of there you never know yeah. but we'll see it should be fun to see how minnesota evolves absolutely yeah let's see armand said for the next election uh, for the next election he'd vote for steph um He's only eligible to run last year. Uh, 
he's just barely old enough to run for president in the U.S. because you have to be 35 or older. So not old yet. Not at all. <laughs> what about Vooch? Nikola Vucevic, a big who can shoot and pass the ball. Great fit for us. Oh, who's playing? They're going to be. Who, who uh, they're going to be oh, no. do this now. Oh God! Tell me why. Yeah. First, first step. At, at Any time you propose a trade, you got to put the salary. Oh, I thought Butch was a free agent. If you're gonna, okay, then put that deal. Otherwise, then I'm doing the research for you, and I'm do, just at least do that. You know, uh, and then usually just based on the salary and the length of the salary, I oh, can tell nope. you how realistic it is. But no, it's twenty. It's exactly twenty million next year, and he's under contract till twenty six. So trade Wiggins for him, or what, what do you you know? Yeah, so yeah. you you well, need. I to mean, we have TJ D and Looney. Kill so. the onion, Uday. Don't just say a name. Yeah. Kill the the freaking onion. Like Shrek, man. Be high Q. Like. Just throwing out a name is, isn't fair to me. Like, come on, man. So, I, so I'm going to stop what I'm doing and uh, just for you and, and discuss how real a name is. You, do a little bit more homework. Go go peel the onion three times. You know, for who, you know, how much is he making? You know, how long? And then who you would trade for him. If you can't do those three things, then it, it's a casual throw of the name out there, right? Do those three things, save us a lot of time. Just just the it learning lesson. It might actually though. be good. You never know. Yeah, just a learning lesson, you day. Not not uh, trying to pile on you. Just that's how we, you know, that's how a lot of the other people in the chat operate, you know, because that's, that's the, the type of basketball conversations we like to have here. So, you know the rules now. I'm sure you do better next time. Oh, I mean, he could do it right now. He could look it up. I'm not I'm not saying like, oh, that's it. Bye-bye. See you no. next time. Like, no, no. Definitely. I'm willing to look at it. It's just that I'm, I'm actually busy doing these, uploading the interviews. So I'm not going to do that homework for you. I'm just not. <laughs> I'm not triggered. I just don't want to do anything. Nice yeah, of me. Come on, man. I don't think you guys get how much Rich, uh, how much work Rich puts into this. Like, he's constantly working, you know, for you guys. Yeah, I saw twenty twenty eight. Played CP earned around seventy four million this million this year. Hey, yeah. What are you doing that, man? That's that's mean. Saying I got triggered. That's mean, man. Oh, I got triggered one time. Only that's one. like that's like that's like Draymond arguing with the ref. Oh, he's triggered. Like, is that fair? That's not that's not fair to label him like that. He's just passionate. That that word too, man. Like, I got triggered one time. Actually, had a trigger whatever you call it because uh my mom got hit by a car i was watching a frida kala movie and it was an accident that took off her leg which really happened and i like i just what? started like feel sick and lose consciousness and get a terrible anxiety attack and wow. I, I had to lay down in bed you know so it's not like it's not a light thing you know it's not like oh that made me feel uncomfortable don't, don't be saying that stuff man it's basically like a, a minor PTSD yeah. attack, you know. It's all right. You you don't need to. Uh, you need to, um, you know, defend me on that. It's all good. <laughs> it's all, I'm just I'm just saying people people come on here and have, have labeled me this and that. It's just like let's stop labeling that. You know, I thought I gave a good example: the Draymond getting a tech and then going. Oh, Dre's triggered. Yeah. Oh, next he says Rich okay. has has his convictions and he respects it. Yeah, that's all that we need, man. It's a little respect, oh, you know. Come on, man. Like, 
asking you to do a little bit more homework on trades. That is not a huge ask. You know how we are. I, I just, that's not a huge ask at all. Maybe I guess maybe it is for some people. I don't know. The other thing is if you do a really good, like if you really look into it and all that, and it's good, like we're going to really appreciate that, you know? I know. Oh, right? Other, other I, channels I, I don't do, even don't, do they don't look get at, it. I do want to go look at Vucevic and all that, but uh, just off the top of my head, like I just honestly, I, I don't know if he's athletic enough, but we could discuss it. But so, Dean, you got the information. I'm, I'm kind of busy right here. Yeah. What do you well, think? Much, well, I mean, he's under contract next year, 20 million, the year after that, 20 went. 21.5 or just a little under that uh, um we have tjd and looney uh so I, that's kind of fine in terms of big men um it's i it's, guess uh then my next thing is okay how about if you in included uh well uh, salary matching wise it'd have to be wiggins and then we get Vooch and somebody else right well, or you could do you could do now matching salaries like if you did GP and Looney, but I, we're gonna give up GP and Looney for Vooch, right? So you know, uh, see what Dean's doing. Yeah. He's looking at the here it is. It's on hoops hype. You can go hoops hype warrior salaries. So so then those combinations probably don't make sense. So you got to find the right combination to make the deal even happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just. Uh, personally, I think this next year it's got to be a lot of Kaminga, um, really figuring out how to be what he was alongside stuff at his best this year, doing that all year long. And um, I think you start off the year with Clay as a six man, personally, uh, because he played incredible in that role, because, um, you know. He's he's just a great player at his age to to spell what, uh, one of the starters. And if there's any type of free agent acquisition that you're going for or anything like that, I think it's more in the um, uh, wing position, probably. You know. Uh, Wait, he's a free agent. Who? Oh, Vucevic. No, no, he's not a free agent. Oh, okay. I don't, um, yeah, I don't think so. Here, I can go to his. And I'm multitasking. Shouldn't be doing that. Uh, right. Um, oh. I, don't, I don't know that Vucevic yeah. is even a good fit in terms of the pace that we want to play yeah, at. He's, he's fully guaranteed the next two seasons, too. Not a player option or anything like that. Mm. So, um, and, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, just to let people know. So then we'd be tied into that contract for a couple of years, which is also makes it tough. But only two more years would be line up with staff. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I kind of want to go for more quickness and athleticism. I know he can shoot, but like, you know, more, you know, he can post. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I'm not just, uh, it doesn't jump off the, the page for me. Guy like him. Well, again, you would hope a lot of that goes to G to uh, TJD and, and Looney. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can see how Vucevic adds the, uh, shooting dimension i can see that um but i i worry about the defense though yeah know? me too yeah and just the older guys around him and he's a center trying to protect the rim and so i don't know i mean if mike dunleavy feels like uh mike Dan dunleavy jr i mean feels like it's the right move then yeah i'm all in but uh uh, I don't know. Armand's asking who we think is going to make it to the finals. 
I think it's Nuggets Celtics, man. Yep. Uh, it's not. It's like, oh wow, you know, you're picking last yep. year's champ in the not exciting the, at all. Yeah. Yeah, but it would be an exciting finals, and um, yeah. Who wins that? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I know. You hope they're all healthy, of course. Um, who would I root for? Man, I, I, don't know. I don't know that I'd want the Nuggets to repeat. I don't know that I'd want that. Really? Why? <laughs> root against that. Why? Because uh, then there's dynasty talk and this and that and. No, 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 no. I, I reject I that. You can't. You can't be a dynasty until you have three. You can't. Uh, but there would be. There's going to be dynasty talk. Yeah, that's nice. Were the Rockets Houston Rockets dynasty? No. They True. Were. True. They were great. Don't get me wrong. They were great. You have to have three. Yeah, I, I don't know that I'd be rooting for anybody. I can watch a basketball game and not root for anybody. Yeah, that's fair. Actually, I, I do that. I like to try. If, when I run a league as the commissioner, do you think I get to root for somebody? Like, no. No, that's <laughs> very, very fair. Very fair. For no injuries in a very competitive game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Therefore, you want the game to come down to the last possession and all of that. Make it fun for everybody. Yep, but you don't want any injuries or, or anything like that. Or any uh suspensions to obviously and you know, any kind of stuff like that yeah. to happen. Um That would make the Lakers fans go crazy mad if the Celtics win. Dean announced says, he, he, he. <laughs> I'm in Southern California, so. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, the Celtics were plus 14 over the second seed Knicks in the East this year. There were 14 Ooh, games ahead. Fun series. <sighs> crazy. So uh, what do you think we should do here on the channel during the playoffs, like specifically? That all depends on Friday, I think. You would you would want to follow the team that beat us uh, if they're able to make it, and maybe the Nuggets, who are the defending champs. I think we'd have to, uh, yeah, jump around so that we're not Just... playing favorites. Like, we can't be doing, like, we're less oh. warriors, so we got to dabble. Can't really do the uh, Kings. Oh, we're gonna watch the Kings game again and again now. Nah. Okay, That's maybe we can do marketing. a poll. Who do, who do you want to watch next? Bad marketing. <laughs> oh, you know what's cool is uh, you know we could we could choose uh, former Warriors like Dante. Yeah, there you go. Definitely. Um, there is Harrison Barnes. <laughs> But, uh, I know, uh, yeah. I mean, we'll do a Kings here and there, of course. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. all the time. If they make it, if they make it. Right, if they make uh, it. I do think we should cover Friday, the Kings. Okay, good. Kings, uh, Pelicans. Yeah. Right? Feels feels fair. They beat us. Oh, man, uh, yeah. So. Get get 100 views. <laughs> it's going to be, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I don't want to discourage anybody. Yeah. I'm just kidding. But yeah, man. Ah, sucks that the season's over. But oh well, we gotta we gotta move on and try and get through the mud. Well, we gotta get a healthy rested team for the most part, hopefully. I know yeah. the Olympics is little, but I mean if you get a gold medal, man, you hang that do the do the Kobe thing, you know? Hang that hang that gold medal in Jonathan Kaminga's locker. That could be fun. Hey, if anything, uh tonight, um Hopefully, and, today, and the USA announcement. I, I'd like to speculate that it increases the chances of Wiggins playing for Canada, doesn't it? We think. Oh, I'd hope so. Canada, and hopefully, will have up, a... any up team Canada, who, by the way, is coached by Jordy Fernandez, who's Sacramento assistant coach. Who? Oh, who is man. Uh, what? What else is going on with him? He might coach. Uh, I don't know. Another team next year. He's oh, definitely really? got Team Canada. Oh, Brooklyn. He's in line for Brooklyn. That's what it is. Over oh, Jacques Vaughn? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Man, yeah, Sacramento. Been... So many Warriors connections. It's unbelievable. I saw uh, LB, you know, uh, giving Steph 
Steph is props and everything like that. Oh, right? cool. And Draymond. Um, yeah. Sac- yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, again, whatever whatever game it is, please don't go away. We will we will cover the right ones. I'm sure on this channel and just. Uh, this is Let's Go Wars, always will be, but uh, we're, you know, it's still going to be the same fun, uh, informed, positive, respectful uh, basketball conversations that you guys are used to. And uh, we had a, we had a good time doing the finals last year, right, Rich? That was that was a lot of fun, man. You know? So yeah, uh, I barely remember it. Um, therefore, I, I guess it's part of my just the automatic process of trying to snuff out things I don't really want to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, man. Uh, thanks to, to some uh, Blue Wrenches out there for helping me out while I work. Oh, absolutely. We are. We're over five hours, Rich. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. That was easy. Good news is I, I get to save on my uh, couple subscriptions here. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with the YouTube TV, Dean, but I, I might need to. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Oh, season's over, Rich. Do whatever you want. Yeah. Got to keep something, though. Isn't there a cheaper option just to watch basketball other than Stream East? I mean, that, that, that is too slow of a stream. Of course, I mean it's a pirated stream, but like yeah. League Pass, maybe. Is you, League Pass is what a hundred bucks for a year? Know? Is that yeah. Right? Anybody know? Like, also, you can't get wait League Pass. Would that allow you to get your local stuff? It'd be good for me, but what about you? What do you mean, my local stuff? Do they allow you to watch the teams in your region on League Pass? I think Sacramento's out of my region. Not Sacramento. I'm talking wrong. about the dubs. But there are no dubs. So who cares? Oh, I, I meant I next mean, season. I just mean for the few, next few months. No, I'm definitely oh, going. I'm probably okay. going to try Hulu just hmm. out of spite for you. It's worth 76 TV. bucks a month, though, or something crazy like yeah, that. Yeah. I don't want oh to my pay God. 72 mu- bucks a month for you know May and June. I don't. But I got to make a decision. I got a week. That's like this over eight hundred fifty dollars a year, man. Yeah, I know it's ridiculous. So, if anybody yeah. has any uh, recommendations on how do you watch these games without paying seventy two dollars a month, give me that answer. Yeah, really. And That'd it's be... legal, too. Actually, I could probably use my dad's AT and T U verse. It's just uh, honestly, we should just be able to rent a game for a day on YouTube for a dollar fifty. That's like one hundred sixty right. bucks a month, or what? No, it's uh, one hundred twenty bucks a so year ridiculous. to watch whatever I want. And if I want to watch more teams, you get more money. Just let me buy whatever game I want. Insane, <laughs> man. Because they're the only things keeping the cable yeah. companies running too. It's just live sports, yeah. and that's it, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Now the cable companies they don't want to put their stuff online because why would they make, want to make money online when they can stick to the old system? What, what would you people be advocating for horses over cars? My God, <laughs> it's insane! No, the candles are better than light bulbs. <laughs> fires? What are you talking about? What no, fires? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Gosh darn it. <laughs> oh, well. I better figure something out soon. 219 rupees a month. What is that? That can't be that much. Week past, they won't show games if it's TNT. Hmm. 15 per month. It's $2.62 <laughs> a month. If it's 219 rupees. But it's international, so obviously the cable companies don't control that in other countries. But, oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, well, look into League Pass, obviously. 
figure something out. Yeah. Remember anything from the Draymond interview that was perked your ears at all? Um, well, I, I did hear something that I think other people will misunderstand. He kept saying, if I'm on the team next year. Really? That Draymond? Did. Yeah. But, oh, but really? what? we talk about the interview, the post game tonight, right? Yeah. Why would he say that? He's already signed. Because he's talking about CP3 being on the team next year. I oh, hope CP3 is on the team next year. I hope I'm on the team next year. I hope that I get to play with him again. You know, because I hope that he's on this team and I'm on the team next year. So people are going to misunderstand that as him saying, I might not be on the team, when actually it's just a good diplomatic way of saying if CP3 is back. And hoping CP3 is back, you know, it's to also add yourself into that, oh, yes. so you're not seen as trying to push a free agent off-season decision when you're not in the front office. I think that's something that a lot of people won't understand, but I heard it, and I think that's what he was saying. So, oh, great, yeah, yeah. Lewis Page says, "Thank you, Rich, from New Zealand." Oh, you're in New Zealand. Nice. Beautiful country. I haven't been, but I know it's a beautiful country out there. Oh, yeah. I wonder if he's, uh, where he's from in New Zealand. Oh, by the way, it's a, it's uh, Jaffa. Lewis is, is she. Lewis is she. Oh, sorry. I wonder where she's from in New Zealand. Matt Husky's from New Zealand, too. Golden one center. FB is Facebook. I don't know. Auckland. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. All right. So, Two uh, coasts. Well, uh, Two more votes in the poll, if you could. That uh, hit 100 votes for tonight, even though we only have 78 likes. No, no, no. Are oh, we doing an unsung play? I don't think there's any scenario where Clay leaves. Yeah. Better interpret yeah, I, that. I, 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 I really hope that Clay is back on this team next year. I can't imagine it, you know. I don't see how it would be better, if, especially if he's willing to not have to be the starter every night like he proved he was great at this year. Yeah. Um. <laughs> he, Stevon said, Rich is Mr. Worldwide. I like it. <laughs> Thanks. Absolutely. Golden State Warriors. Uh, Peaky Lou saw your Zig story with YouTube link. What does that mean? The what? Zig story with YouTube link. Hmm. What you talking about, Pinky Lou? Did you uh, oh, I just elucidate us? Yeah, yeah, I uploaded the Steph interview and she got a, probably a notification. Ah, uh, okay. Zig? Oh, IG story? Accidental Z there. Oh, I, oh, okay. I just right, right, right. Gotcha. Oh, yep. Yeah, that's what she said right there. Yep. Just being ignorant again. <laughs> I love that. That that you're not on social. I love that. <laughs> I'm on YouTube. Can't say I'm not completely. I leave a comment here and there. I feel bad about it. You know, not about what I said. Just like oh, commenting, posing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. But uh, hey, do what makes you happy, you know. Just go for it. And I'm on here too, so it's that is a lot of time on uh, an app. But we get to do long form, in depth stuff it's here. Fine, right? though. I, I think YouTube's different than it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it long doesn't form count. Comments, long you form can videos. go. 
you can go around and you know comment this comment that be yeah you have plenty of those but yeah no not on any other social media i mean i have a facebook from high school that i never checked but that doesn't really count i can't even do a facebook i think i've told you guys that yeah <laughs> that just sucks i'll give it a try tomorrow now that i have a lot of time i can you, you know did. It's so funny how the the pipeline of content, I mean, not not tomorrow, tomorrow's exit interviews and there's a lot tomorrow, but then the day after that, oh, Thursday, yeah. man, the uh, the pipeline ends. Uh, <laughs> what do we do, man? Until a uh, draft, really. And uh, yeah. and so it'll be interesting, but, you know, I, I, I look forward to the, uh, the little bit of freedom, but then a little bit of, uh-oh. What, what do I do with YouTube? What do I, you know, I got to figure something out. How do you, how do you do Warriors content when there's like, when the team's done other, other than tomorrow, the uh, exit interviews. So I got to come up with something. Maybe I'll try and get uh JD John Dickinson to hop on after the exit interviews. Maybe I'll, cause he couldn't come on today at halftime. So, Maybe maybe he'll be amenable to that. Um, I'm available too if you'd like tomorrow, Rich. Nice uh, after school. So yeah, I'll let you know. More fifty or on. so. Maybe a little, I might go to actually go to campus tomorrow. Um, so it might be a little later than that, but please let me know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll text you and all that. Absolutely. Some people sell their league pass accounts in the Philippines. Nice. Well, that's basketball, basketball, uh, so wild country out there. Man. What? Wow. Sell me yours? <laughs> no, just it's like, kidding. <laughs> it's like fake IDs for uh, eighteen-year-old college students or something. Yeah. I mean, if it's cheaper than freaking seventy-three dollars a month, then I'll buy it. You know, that's absolutely Sadly. insane, bro. Sadly, you can get. Here's the thing I don't need anything else, I don't need to watch you can this. get TV and internet for like that amount, you know, yeah, or close to it. Might need to get yeah. a combination of a VPN for playoffs. Yeah. I'm gonna look into League Pass tomorrow, really. Yeah. I've got to decide by the you know, four more days, April 21st, cancel YouTube TV and. No more $72 for you. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I might need to do the VPN thing. But then that really makes these uh, the stream yard impossible. Yikes. But uh, no, I could do it on that laptop and just, uh, I don't know. I got to figure it out. Might need to email you guys. You you tech wizards. You cholo and dean okay. hey we got we got the people we need in the chat that's one of the beautiful things about this channel yeah man. i'm gonna have to run it by you guys oh man yeah youtube tv 72.99 baby not cheap but it it has the advantage of keeping all of the oh i might want to keep it for one more month sad to say because I you, you DVR everything, mm. so I can go back to every game. Yeah, let me let me ask Cholo and Dean. Uh, can you watch? Can you watch uh, past uh, games, regular season games, uh, regular season games with uh, league pass? Oh man, that's a tough one. Might have to just keep it for one more month. I'm not sure. Hmm. Patello said yes, Rich. Okay. Dale said he was at the game, I think. But the, tried to chat, but the connection was too shaky. Oh. You were in Sacramento oh. today? Nice. I could have given you the uh the other password in the in the arena without saying exactly what it's for. <laughs> ah. Hey. I actually gave that to nudge, nudge, wait, wait. The numbers, bro, but he never got back to me. Actually, he may have gotten back to me. I haven't checked. He, he may have. Uh oh. <laughs> Let me see if he ever DM'd me back. 
I'm sure he, he he's probably not going to, he himself probably doesn't want to go live at all. Wow. I love these social media people. So this one gal that I follow that wants to increase her uh, followers and stuff. End of an era. Really? Oh, my gosh. So many casual takes. Like, we don't need people like you trying to go viral. Like, you're spreading off all this, the wrong vibe. I'd love for you to go viral if you were spreading positivity. And now you're saying end of an era? How, how does a warrior's social media gal how how do you say end of an era and you're yet you're a fan that doesn't make sense yeah. at all so I mean, you, oh god steph Whatever. curry's coming back next year right so what come on end of an era bury him they're dead oh i'm so glad they're gone oh get out of here we don't want winners to keep winning we want losers to win more than we want winners to win again why do we want a winner to win again Yay, they lost a clay Yay. jersey with a clay jersey. And it's like, so are you are you like end of an era? Are you like so basically you're throwing him under the bus? Yeah, we want clay to go. What has he ever done for way. us? In a roundabout way, uh, it's just like, oh man. It just uh, they're young though, they don't know anything. Literally, they don't. How young? 21 ish or less i would i would guess all right fine but you're you're like moody you're you're dean chambers is our moody wise beyond oh, your year troy watching the dubs game against the wolves november 12th 2023 it's playing Oh, interesting. I can't find the 2JD jersey in the NBA India store. Hmm. Um, I don't know. Maybe try the US one or I, if you can afford it, a custom jersey with those. Those are pretty expensive. Um, influencer. I'm an influencer. Here's some influenza. I'm an influencer. Oh, influencer. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> Forgot. Oh, man. Stop influencing what you're influencing. It's not what you want to influence. Be original. Why would you uh, influence what you can already find on Twitter? Yeah. What's I'm an influencer because I follow every trend that comes down the pipe. I follow them all. Exactly. I'm influencing. No, I'm the one influencing. They're not influencing me. Oh, God. All right. Bingo. It's not six months, is it? May, oh, June, God. July, August. It might be yeah. a like four. Is it, though? It might be. No, it's like four months until the training camp. Listen nope. to that to the Olympics. Yeah, it's, uh, is October, so actually, I think, I think it's not September. Uh, late September, like last couple days of September. Ah, well, getting into October. At There'll least be something happening in September. Five and a half, five and a half months. Five and a half, yeah. I'm trying to find a quote about Chris Paul from Draymond. There it is. I'm thankful and honored. Yeah, there we go. What was that? He's thankful and honored to have played with Chris Paul. Oh, Chris Paul's been amazing this year for us, man. What yeah. a great teammate. What a great teammate. Just uh, always ready to do everything for the team. You know? Doesn't it feel like we just didn't get enough reps? I always just feel like that. Like, 
we didn't get enough reps between Draymond and CP. I mean, granted, just like you said, though, he had to grow. It's kind of the only way for Draymond to really grow again. Yeah. Gosh, man. I think CP was huge in getting JK into the position that he was at this season. Oh, that too. And, yes. um, sure. You know, if I'm thinking back on the game yesterday at this point, uh, I feel like we didn't trust some of the things that we learned from the regular season enough. You know, didn't get, yeah, didn't like get those Steph Curry, JK pick and rolls. Oh, right. Didn't trust TJD enough in the back cuts. Oh, you know, Clay, Clay probably could have uh, played a little bit more with the second unit, maybe. Um, but yeah, okay, dare I say this? Here's here's a. I'm kind of doing this as a as a little bit of a headline grabber thing, but mm. it was almost like we approached the, tonight's game as a game eight instead of a, a, a new game. Game eight? Yeah. What do you mean? Game eight of what? Of the season? Last season series. Oh, game eight of last season sack versus GSW the, series. A game plan seemed to be like game eight, right? Mm. Rather than 2024 play in because of those things you just mentioned. Where was the Steph inverted pick for JK? And it just wasn't there tonight. Nature. Yeah. yeah. It was more remember. like, oh, we just won game seven. So, you know, we're good. This is a team we're familiar with. We'll figure it out. We'll mm. figure it out. We'll find a way to figure it out. Uh, well, yeah, you got to evolve past that. I don't know if we can figure it out anymore. Yeah. Yeah, well, on the other hand, if you needed any proof of what we need, <laughs> saw it tonight. Yeah, yeah. Tonight. I, I, I understand. And, and guess what? Uh, in a way, it wasn't game eight either, because then, then one argument against that is you would go, well, if it was game eight, you would have started Looney. Uh, but we basically did kind of, though, the outside of the first quarter. Looney played a lot more than TJD. We went yeah. back to that. Yeah. You know, not that he was doing bad. Looney was not the reason we lost. Not at all. Yeah. But and um, Trace only made a couple mistakes. It was like he wasn't like major or anything. No, he'll, he'll be a huge part uh, of the season. He next just year, gotta turn the ball over. Is the it's not yeah. not Trace's fault. I mean he had one turnover, but like uh yeah, it's just like man. How come? How come we gotta we gotta learn how good Trey Murphy and Keon Ellis is like, like that, and just pay for that? You know. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, well, that's kind of been the pattern all season, huh? Yeah, that's the part that sucks. Just like you were saying, so kind of beat ourselves on that. Yeah. Oh, uh, definitely. But it's uh, good 16 to see turnovers him. to their eight. Good to see him on the podium. Like 19 assists tonight. You know, yeah. saying that we got to evolve. Both of them saying that. So, yeah. And that's, that's, again, one of the biggest things I'm taking into next season is that we don't have to make those huge leaps into, into the next iteration because we did so much of that this year. But we revert we reverted back to like December Warriors basketball a little bit, you know. And uh that's really too bad. That's really too bad because we didn't really give ourselves a chance without um without just just trusting the leaps that we had made, you know. But We'll go into next season with that in mind, I'm sure. And um, that's all you can ask for, really. You know. Let's see what that's saying in here. Oh, Cholo's saying, Rich Dubs always bring out the best of their in their opponents. 
Kings were a mediocre team entering the play-in, but lo and behold, they played like a playoff team tonight. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, they, they uh, I mean, against us, yeah. Well, we were hoping for that game throw seven type records. experience. Throw all the records out the window because they're going to play us. We know them so well, and they know us so yep. well. We were hoping for that game seven type experience against the Lakers, too, in playing. Um, but, man. Again, I, I hate to hate to say this, but it's not really anything the Kings did tonight that really made me feel uh, bad. It's just, I wish we would have, I wish we would have seen this team at their best. No. Right. And I do tip my cap to uh, Keon Ellis, but it's not like, you know, it's not like he's an all-star and all of that. And it's like, you know, there's there's counters to that. We just couldn't figure it out soon enough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what else to add to that. We had we had the the team to do it, I think, but we just didn't. You know. Oh, Dale said this is probably the first play in or playoff game that he's not as upset. Cello asked, did LGW help you with that? I assume. I'm going to guess the answer is hopefully yes. Oh, that's Absolutely. cool. But he hasn't typed that in yet. Amy said it seems CP3 is happier playing in wars than in other teams. On oh, other teams, sorry. Um, it's going to be I, really interesting how everything yeah. plays out. The, the thing, though, one thing to remember is um, that what everybody feels today with all the guys is going to be different than the day of the, you know, you got to figure out what to do with this deal, which normally I'd say July 1st, you know, free agent date. But it's it's actually a little bit before that. It's uh, right before the draft, I think, is you got to mm -hmm. make a decision on the 30 million and all of that. And then so. I guess the good news is we're, we're going to... I think it's the day after the draft. The day after the draft. The good news is that the draft and then the day after the draft, uh, the draft is two days now, right? So is it the third yeah. day? Okay. I think it's I think it's the third, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hell of a three days coming up. I mean, okay, first, first day we don't have any first-round picks. Still, draft day is pretty awesome. There's still Even, trades, too, available. Trades, exactly. Yeah. So, and... End of June, right around the corner. Got to wait two months, two months and a week and a half. And then, oh boy, what do we do with CP3? What do we do? Yeah, craziness. Mm -hmm. So from now until then, a lot of time can pass. So, I mean, even even with the clay situation, uh, yeah, you, you just have to be okay with just like, okay, we got to just sit and wait. Unfortunately, just got to do it. Well, the, the clay situation does give us a little flexibility signing other people, potentially, you know. Yeah. Um, just because, as far as I understand, if we were to sign someone else without clay being re-signed yet, that... Well. Resigning him wouldn't prevent us from signing that guy, and then we, because of the bird rights, we can still resign Clay. So, a lot of opportunities still ahead. A lot of um, a lot of interesting stuff, I think. Um, coming up for the coming up for the Dubs, but we're gonna have the playoffs. We're gonna have the draft. We're gonna have the Olympics. We're gonna have the training training camp. You know, so um, shout out Olympic team, man! Absolutely. Kawhi Leonard as your 12th and final spot. That's that's pretty good. 12th final spot to figure out. Did they uh, release yeah, the final two-way players, roster? baby? What's that? They released the final roster. Yeah, Kawhi's the 12th. 
Oh, let me check it out. Bam out of bio. Man, we have a defensive squad. Drew Holiday. Oh, man. I mean, and an offensive squad. Like, it was very key. You got to get Steph Curry out there. I mean, that's he, that's a, <laughs> there's some, somebody that epitomizes American basketball in its current state. That's him. It's LeBron, Steph, KD, Embiid, Booker, Tatum, Davis, Halliburton, Edwards, Holiday, Adebayo, and Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty fun to watch, definitely. And also, I hate to say this, but that's probably the uh, last dance for a lot of those dudes in the Olympics, at least, because the next one obviously is twenty twenty eight. That's uh, who knows? Not all of them, but yeah, should be should be. Uh, that's a pretty good squad, man. That's a pretty good squad. Obviously, hope Embiid is is nice and healthy for the playoffs and for the Olympics. Um, but might get a little bit of a rested Steph too. Look, you know, the yeah, Olympics is yeah. not going to last as long as the playoffs. Exactly. Obviously, not playing in May or June. Uh, <laughs> You know, out of all those guys, is he the one that's knocked out first? I mean, he's going to be the most antsy to play. Yeah, I think so. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> Clippers, Heat, Celtics, Timberwolves, Pacers, Lakers, Suns, Sixers, Warriors, Lakers. Yep. Ouch. Yep. The but best player on the team got knocked out first. Yeah, ouch. Yeah. NBA 2024, baby. Yeah, really. Tell me about it. Oh, I'm just I'm typing in the name Mike Brown here as a tag, and um, remember what Steve Kerr said yesterday. Uh, he said that uh, Game Seven, um, he really he, he he really hurt for Mike Brown because you just beat him. You beat one of your best friends, and you know he's hurting. Tonight, the reverse is true. So Mike Brown, yeah, definitely got a little sympathy for Steve on that. So, yeah. Oh, man. We're not going to get any sympathy, though. Kings, oh, oh, love this young team. Hope they do well. Yeah. For us. Just in the inner circle. Glad the dynasty's dead. Yeah, get out of here. We don't appreciate your greatness. Get out. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Pipeline State for basketball. Oh, Blake Griffin retired too. Yeah, crazy. Oh, yeah. The number one pick the year Steph was drafted. I saw a thing wow. where he he made uh, six All Star teams and uh, five mm. All NBA teams, and nobody with with that many um, All Stars and NBA uh, All NBA teams has ever not made the Hall of Fame. So interesting. Yeah. I, I do think, personally, in terms of all that stuff goes, I would like to see an NBA Hall of Fame, maybe in, like, the West mm. Coast somewhere. Oh, plus somewhere he's got from, the uh, University of Oklahoma pedigree, yeah. too, that will basketball-wise. So the NBA one that I'm thinking of would be a lot more restricted. Yeah. But Blake Griffin's absolutely making the Naismith Hall of Fame in, in Springfield. I, it just has to. Again, like you said, with yeah. the OKC, with the – Number one pick with the accomplishments in the league and, and everything. Like well, they're that. not OKC. That that's just Oklahoma. They're OK. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, Oklahoma. Right. Sorry. Not OKC. But, uh, Clay Bennett's team that yeah he stole from Seattle. He did. He stole it. He stole okay. it. I'll never root for them until Seattle's back. No, I know. Never. Right. Yeah, can't root for OKC. No, nope. nope. I'm sorry, I just can't. It's nothing against Shea and all those no, kids. Nothing against Oklahoma. Only Once Seattle's back, against... I'll be happy to do it. But until the Sonics are around, oh, only against nope. Clay Bennett. Yeah, because <laughs> you know, we're yeah. saying nothing against. That's the saying. Totally against Clay Bennett. <laughs> for the sake of Seattleans, right, Pinky? Really, man. Oh, Seattleites. Yeah. Seattleites, my bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. How does Seattle not have it? Oh my God. Hopefully, hopefully that's changing soon though. I know, right? They are old and they are done. 
That's what Chuck always says. Chuckster. Oh, it's the Chuckster. <laughs> Chuckster coming in for some more blazingly intelligent analyst analysis. Bro, you are still alive? True go. <laughs> yes. I agree, Milo. Blitz. No Draymond for the Olympics. Yeah, no Draymond for the Olympics, yeah. unfortunately. By the way, De'Aaron Fox ended up leading the league in steals, I think. Did he really? Wow. Two per game. Swiper, right? There you go. Yeah. Oh, Pinky Lou, right. Pacific Northwest. Uh, yeah. I love them Sonics. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just a great city, man. So obviously an NBA city. Obviously an NBA city. If if any indication, remember when the Warriors went to play a preseason game there? Oh man, it was well, with KD too. Yeah, with it was KD. obviously it was absolutely nuts. I do think they need to upgrade an arena to be more modern, but I think they already did. They have the footprint oh. uh, arena, right? It's like owned What's by there? Amazon, I think. I thought footprint was uh, oh, no, no, not footprint. Phoenix. It's uh, eco. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, good. Well, then here, let's look at yeah. it. Uh, it's the uh, climate pledge. Yeah, right. Uh, 2018 to 2021, it went uh, one point a uh, one point one five billion dollar redevelopment, and has a capacity for. Uh, 18,300 basketball fans. So they're all ready to go. <laughs> they got the name, they got history, they got the arena, they got the city. All right. They never should have left, but yeah. Oh, Brandon Pajemski led the NBA in charges, right? Yeah. Nice. Got to see him and TJD on some all rookie teams, I think. He was well ahead of Brunson. I thought you said he had three more. Yeah, yeah. I think he won by three. Yep. Charges. Uh, how do you look up NBA league charge leader? Oh, I just go uh, Google oh, NBA, stats. NBA charges taken, and it takes you there. Balls recovered. Screen assists. Uh, charges per game. BP won it. Dro charges total. BP won it. However, charges drawn per 36. He was second behind Jalen Williams. J A Y L I N. Mm, yeah. AKC. Good. So, there are diehard fans here like crazy. Just like here, man. Just like here. Yeah, poor, I got to say, poor Kevin Durant, man. You know, to be that great of a basketball player, number two pick, and they are shooing fans away from your rookie season from the arena that's insane what that's happened insane. the the owner when the one year K kd played for oh. the sonics they were like trying to get fans not to come they were locking arena doors when the game was going on so you couldn't come oh, in late gosh and you couldn't get back in and ah oh. What a horrible way to start off your so career, beautiful, dude. And again, OKC has been a great fan base. It's 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 also a great NBA city. It just is, as we know on Let's Go Warriors, uh, 2016. You know that crowd was insane. It's one of the loudest arenas in the NBA. I got nothing against them. I just, <laughs> I want Steph to take a trip to Seattle to play a game, man. Warriors Sonics, you know, 
really want that. I'm sure we'll get to see it happen too. I'm sure. Of it. But uh, I don't know how much else I have to say, really, uh, other than uh, what a great season in a lot of ways. What a horrible way to go out. And we have a lot of opportunities coming up. We really do. So every, you're gonna, we're all going to have a hard time listening to the type of stuff that's going to be said over these next couple months about this team. But we have to stick together and have to remember um, how good this team can be when we're at our best. You know? Um, so I guess that's my closing remark since Chell is asking for that. Yeah. Seattle, Pinky Lou can't wear a 49ers jersey. True. <laughs> no bueno. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Football. Cousin Seattle is kind of a closet Warriors fan, even though he likes the Sonics to return. Okay. I don't know. Shivanchi's asking, we're not going seven hours? Uh, you ask any other podcast that? I bet you don't. <laughs> seven. <laughs> oh, I said six, though. I'd be able to hit six. Yeah. But I do I'm need to take a quick break. Oh. That's all right with you. Yeah, okay. But, you got to go uh, deal with your cat by bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no so problem. Got... I'm almost done with the uh, thing that I need to do right now, which is. Oh, I can wait till you're done. Get you the want. Steve Kerr one up there doing the thumbnail. So, yeah, just give me a moment and I'll, I'll get there eventually. Oh, yeah. Shivancha exit interviews are uh, tomorrow. Hmm. Yep. Yep. According to uh, what Rich said earlier. Oh, Dean of God made it back. There you go. Wow, there is no Steve Kerr and Clay picture for eons. What? That's crazy. Oh, Milo Blitz said, thanks for your time and work, bro. Oh, thanks. Thank you, man. Okay, let's see. What's something you that, okay? Huh? What's something that Steve said? Well, today. Um, Do you remember? Let's see. I'll find something. Hmm. I don't remember a quote, but I talked about Clay too. I did get a feeling that he was saying that he still felt that you know Steph Clay and Drake could compete for for a title. Oh yeah, thanks. Um, I like that one too. He's in denial it. right now. Yeah, nah, don't worry about uh, it, mate. You'll be all right. We'll be okay. In denial. Oh, we got some Tagalog, uh, Tagalog in the chat, I think. Tagalog. Tagalog. Sorry, sorry. Tagalog. <laughs> I love Clay so much. She said, I love Clay so much. Yeah. Yeah, that's my thumbnail, man. That's pretty cool. I love Clay so that's much. Perfect. Haha, <laughs> you guys were positive and you lost. You 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 were uh, negative and right like we were. Someone came in here and said that? No, no. Uh -oh. I was thinking about all the type of stuff I'm gonna have to hear. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, I love Clay so much.
Oh, man. I got to go move the car because they're doing whatever they're doing. Tree pruning. I don't know. <laughs> they didn't get it done today. Sucks. So I'm going to set my alarm. That. Nice and early in the morning after a playing game, huh? Well, I'm going to go and move it like as soon as I get off this live stream. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Surprised to be nonchalant after this loss. Well, yeah. I get what you're, I think he's talking about his own feelings, Trello is. But, um, We've been through so much, man. It's got to break our way at some point. I think. It just has to. Oh, Ashfell saying he always goes back to Giannis's response to the question about whether the season is a failure or not. No oh, failure yeah, in sports. That's interesting. Um, definitely could play better, though. Competitors to Team USA in the Olympics. Uh, Ryan says France, Canada, and Spain, probably. Yeah, I can see that. I think Serbia is pretty good. I mean, anytime you got Jokic on your team. Oh, can't say that, Amy. Come on now. Saying stronger than me, she's a woman. What? Have you ever. Uh... Oh, never mind. Oh, come on, Amy. What happened? He said. That Shavant is stronger than her because she's a woman. What? Thank goodness we ain't in that death group. What? Oh, Serbia. Yeah, Serbia with Jokic. Losing We're his playing mind. Serbia the first game. We are? Nice. Yeah. Awesome. I think they're a lot more worried about us than we are of them, but it's not going to be easy. Anytime you got Jokic. Yeah, absolutely. And a different, uh, just the different rules and everything, you know, it does benefit slower players, centers, things like that. So um, uh, I guess, I guess we'll see, you know, how Embiid does too, playing for uh, yeah. Team America, World Police. You know, in yeah. The oh, thanks, thanks, Cholo. Are you good, Rich? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Hold on, let's let me uh, screenshot this one real. Oh, okay. Because right, this one's a good one by Cholo. All right, keep smiling, keep smiling. <laughs> okay, you can go now. Thank you, Rich. Yeah. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, okay, cool. All right. I'm finally done, man. Jeez, oh, doing these videos. I, it's not supposed to be that hard. But it is. Especially when you're multitasking. <sighs> Hopefully I remember to post that on Instagram tomorrow. Second apron. Yeah, I should do a spreadsheet. I'll have time to do a spreadsheet, Dean. I mean, this is the spreadsheet right here, too. Excuse me. So this number is going to be... It needs to be under $183 million. So, you know, just looking at this, you're kind of like, yeah, we can't have that 30 million right there. Yeah, nah. <laughs> can't do it, man. Can't do it. It has to, if we're going to pay Clay, this has to go there. And that's why I just, I don't see CP3 coming back. He's, he's still got enough in the tank and there's still enough respect around the league. There's no way. He's going to make minimum. There's no way. So I I just, 
it doesn't make sense to me. Chris Paul, if he can't find better than a minimum, then his agent needs to be fired. I don't think it's Rich Paul, is it? Chris Paul, Rich Paul. No, I don't know, but um, this thirty million can't be there. <laughs> There's absolutely no way. No chance. There's no chance we're taking the option on that. So what do you do? Do you do you go? All right. Well, uh, yeah, we'll sign it, but then we're, we're you know we'll we'll option in for it, and then we're trading it for something. I don't know. Or you're trading him somewhere to get off of that contract. I don't know. Just the, the most like straightforward decision can really go either way. I mean, not go either way. He He's not making 30 million. No way. Uh-uh. Not on our team. He can make 30 million, but somewhere else, but the, it just doesn't add up. So yeah. Chances of Chris Paul being a warrior Slim to none. So then hoping that he comes back, that's just a hope. Transactionally, it doesn't make sense. That's like me. I got a parking ticket over here for, for street parking. That's like me hoping that the that I could protest the ticket to say, oh, but what if what if uh you know I've been a good resident? Doesn't work that way. You know, <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. No judge is going to say, all right, I'll let you off this one time. Nah, I mean, it could happen, but it's not happening. So I don't see it. And we only need to wait two and a half months for the answer to that. Man, it seems like a long time, though. Yeah, we're not going to be in the second apron. The restrictions, whatever restrictions you want to Google, they're just so restrictive that there is absolutely no way that we're going to be second apron. So this number has to be 183 million or less. So you got to fill that, fill that, fill that. Somewhat easy to fill the minimums. These are all minimums anyway. But yeah, we get under the second apron, but then what else do you do here? Are we good enough on defense for this? I like Jabari Walker. I like Jabari Walker, man. Can we get him? Or is he going to make more than minimum? He's at minimum right now. We just saw him in Portland. I think he'd be a good 3-4 type. They might want to get under the, uh, the cap itself. What's the salary cap itself? NBA 2024 salary cap. Luxury tax limit. I don't know. What do you call it? 172. That's only 10 million off. And then so let's look at second apron. 189. Okay, that's good. Much higher than what I thought. 189 and then 172. Can we get under 172? If we got under 172. If anything, this season, by making Brandon Trace part of the rotation... And then Moody Kaminga. This is why the whole, oh, Jonathan and Moses are going to ask to be traded. I mean, I look at this and I kind of go, well, here's your chance to duck under the tax, thereby duck under the uh, luxury tax, 
thereby stopping the repeater tax um, and just kind of keep the same team. No Chris Paul, but like one, what's the number again? 172 million. So we're, we're looking at the... Uh, Second apron, get under luxury tax, 172 million, 189.5 for the apron. Okay, so let's take a look at that one more time. 172. God, he'd have to get off of the Wiggins contract. There's no other way to do it. Twenty-five. Yeah, that base you'd almost be given the that contract. Yes, so minus thirty. No, we got some wiggle room. You wouldn't have to do that. Let me see. No, that goes there, and we're stuck where we are, 175. Okay. That might be doable. Minimum, minimum. Let's see. Um, we got a couple minimums. So that's only 4 million. So that's 179. 179 get rid of 30 it's 149 and we got to get to 172 that's 23 million oh that's why that's why we offered yeah so that's that's around the same number i don't know so then we're at What if we kept the same team? God, Lee. You'd probably, we might lose Looney because he's only guaranteed for three mil. <laughs> I hate to say it, but if you're trying to duck under the, duck under the luxury tax itself for one year, just get off of the repeater because you're not repeating. Yeah, it depends who's available. Of course, I mean, look, if if Cat and Marketing are available, I think you'd have to just put all the chips there. I mean, would wouldn't you wouldn't you trade for 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 Cat? And oh man, it's it's tough. They they'd want Kaminga though. <sighs> too many too many what ifs. I think. Uh, just spend your brain power if you're coming close to it happening. If it doesn't, I mean, the, the chances of it not happening are more. Uh, actually, I shouldn't even say that. Who knows? Who knows what will happen? Man, I got to fix the screen. This sucks. The Dallas uh, guys available next year, which is De Santos, Trace, Brandon, Moses, J.K., Loon, Peyton, Draymond, Wiggs, Steph, alongside Clay, making as much as Draymond, and uh, without the CP contract, um, and that came out to. One hundred and sixty-eight million one hundred twenty-five thousand five hundred thirty-eight dollars. So that's four million, three million below the cap, right? What'd you say? You want me to repeat the whole thing? 
Yeah, you popped on here. I wasn't even ready for you, and so you said some stuff. So I wasn't. Yeah, it's, oh. go ahead. Um, I did the salary cap for Steph, Wiggs, Draymond, Clay next year if he was making the same as Draymond, Gary, Kavon, J.K., Moses, CP, Trace, and De Santos, the guys who are signed other than CP3 next year. And it's at $168,125,538 if Clay makes the same amount of money as, as Draymond, that is. So there, there's two, like, again, like, hate to use the word timelines, but if there's, if you're going to add, if you're going to add Cat or marketing to Steph, Clay, and Draymond, then, then go ahead, spend. Yeah, absolutely. If not, then you got to do all these gymnastics. I mean, if we could get marketing, that would be unbelievable in my opinion yeah spend it'll, it'll yeah. all reduce in two years anyways mm -hmm. that would be good to be below the second apron too so. yeah that would be the next thing to do you, you got to identify cat or marketing really available okay now we're now we're gonna do it and then can we do it without going in the second apron that kind of thing but yeah i think you would you definitely i mean it's not our money but not yet. Good, but if, <laughs> if i were if i were joe lake you know if i if i could project out just one year into the second apron with these guys i think it's worth the gamble uh but who knows i don't know we're not even there yet no, it's barely the net next date after 416. So, but yeah, worst case scenario is just like what you outlined, which is uh, basically you're saying keep the same team. We can get under the tax itself, the luxury tax, right? I was trying to look that up. Um, what is the luxury tax for next season? Oh, 172. I'm looking up the cap. I should be looking up the luxury tax. Well, that is 172. The, uh, yeah, luxury tax line. Yep, 100. So that it's below the luxury tax line, which is great, great news. Yeah, so we can get there without really with just losing CP and uh, keeping the same team basically. <clears throat> and Clay coming back around Draymond. Can we fit Looney in there? Yeah, that included Looney in that. Okay. Because mm -hmm. he's the other one that has a optional type contract. Gary's going to opt into this. He'd be crazy not to. <laughs> you would think so. Would yeah. Think. Uh, he's, he can't stay healthy. I, I I don't think he's worth $9 million out on the open market. Yeah. Sorry to say, if, if he is full fully healthy for 82 games, maybe. But yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, sorry, Milo. Got to delete that one. Saying it will be a failure. Steph Clay, Dre, or old or the old watch. Got to bring in PG or veterans like that. So <laughs> Steph Clay, Dre, or old and PG and veterans are going to help. Wait. See, you were, nice. saved, you were saved by the bell, man. Is he? Good, though. Did we block him? Is this even? Just... No, I re I just removed the comment. I guess we'll give him a second chance, but he doesn't look like a fit for uh, for this channel. It's just, we'll give him an opportunity. That's potential, man. We'll give him an opportunity. Uh, how often has that worked out? Sometimes. Nas Reed, 13 million next season, 15 million after that. <laughs> Nas Reed, the hot commodity right now? Yeah. Come on. Why are you choosing the hot commodity? Who said Is he a hot commodity right now? I didn't he's know. a totally hot commodity. Yeah. Uh, but I yeah. remember we were really, really trying to get him. When Minnesota, he, though. 
when it when yeah. he's making a minimum, but he was definitely going to get a bigger contract. Minnesota, if Minnesota screws this up, uh, you know, you never know. But then, mm. but we wouldn't we we would rather them want to not retain Cat, not not retain Nas Reed. Yeah. Like, if Minnesota is going to break it up, why would we want Nas Reed when you can go and get right? You, you'd be rooting for Cat. So, uh, I don't know. That's kind of the funny thing about that. But watch, something will happen, and it's the, Nas Reed is the guy that's available and whatever. And I got to put my foot in my mouth. You never know. You just never know with this crazy league. Well, I mean, if we're talking about what we need, what the Warriors need, it's for JK and, and uh, TJD and Moody and BP to all, you know, take, take yeah, even so another step up. Anybody above a minimum, it's it's gymnastics. Like, there's well, no. We'll we'll have a taxpayer MLE that we'll be able to play with. If we're okay, but that's it. way below. I mean, that's like six million. Yeah, but it's not a. And vet men's only count towards half. The but tax no, too. no taxpayer. No, we get the non-taxpayer, which is twelve million, because we're not. No. Oh, if we're under the luxury tax, I guess so. Although, yeah. oh yeah, Let's start with the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is we keep the same team other than Chris Paul because the thirty million is yeah, no, nah. right? So um, and Clay a little lower in price. Yeah, well, somehow we fit Clay, but you know, Clay, Clay if if Clay's, you know, you're in the meeting with Clay. Hey, Clay, we'd really like to get under the. Here's our goal. Can you, you know, help us out? I think yeah. he would. All right, so that's Especially with the requisite scenario. number of years. I think that people are talking about oh, 48 over two. Well, the problem was two years, I think. And we don't, you know, love to sign Clay for longer than that, right? Well, you want only 33 it right here, like huh? take it no further than Draymond. Yeah, give him a yeah. two and an option, just like Draymond. Yeah. Also, also, uh, it, it's hard to go. Oh, he turned down two, two years, twenty four each. It's like, I mean, that was so long ago. Like you, you, you always bet on yourself. And the funny oh, thing absolutely. is, it, it looked like a bad bet in the beginning, and now it looks like a good bet. So all the yeah. people, people say, no, it looks like a terrible bet now. After they're going to learn from this, they're probably not going to learn from this. So now suddenly he's 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 worth. As good as 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 he is, like he, everybody here probably thinks, you know, yeah, Clay probably is deserves twenty five million, right? Probably that's that's what yeah. Draymond's made. You know, yeah. Match Draymond, okay? He Six deserves that. The year well, type. They weren't saying score. that. A yes. months ago. Like, like, so now you're gonna say it and then use that to your advantage to make your whatever whatever argument you were just. You're just manipulating the data to your advantage. Anyways, going back to that, uh, yeah. So if you're if you want to add anybody above the minimum, then you have to really think about it. So then that's why when people go, "Oh, Nas Reed, oh Vucevic," then I'm thinking, well, if if we have to go through this gymnastics anyway, then why wouldn't we go get somebody bigger and better? Than that. Yeah. So that's especially why for especially yeah. for going, if we're just going to spend whatever it takes for the for the rest of Steph's career, just go big. Yeah. You know? And also, look, I mean, you know, everybody wants. Oh, you need to get this guy, this big man, that big man, or whatever. It's just like, well, look, I mean, you. This is why salary cap tables exist. It's like. You can't have three Hall of Famers and then get more and then get more. Like remember when we got KDs, because luckily the it was on the bad ankle contract and the cap went up and all of those fortunate things. But like when we're paying what you know three Hall of Famers are worth and what Wiggins is worth. Why why three, should honestly, we be yeah. able to go and get a big man? Why? Like a Nick Claxton, a Nas Reed. No, that 
This is, I mean, that that's the them's the rules. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like uh, so that's why when you follow the NBA, it, it behooves you to check out these salary cap tables. Cause it, it'll start to make sense. You just osmosis even just keep looking at them. And then when somebody brings up another guy, then you go look at that one, like uh, Vucevic. Who's he with? Chicago? Yeah. So then you just go ahead. Just It's not, it's not, you know, it won't bite. <laughs> just go <laughs> and look at it. Not hard. <laughs> oh, and then you know what conclusion you come to? The conclusion you should come to after looking at 29 other salary cap tables, you go, you know, ours is pretty damn good. Like, you we have a lot of flexibility and talent. Talent, exactly. You look at the, and then you start to realize, holy smokes, Moody's cheap. JK, those are paltry salaries, and that's why the draft is so important. Pajemski, three and million. You, the next year after that, the year after that, the year after that, and the year after that, you basically. Control uh, the contract. We got a guy that's going to lead the league in charges for the next four years. I'm just saying it, right? Are well, he did it his rookie year. Why not? Gonna doubt that. It, and he's and we get to pay him less than four million, and then five point seven or whatever. That's is funny. and also also just the cap keeps going up every year. So you know, like, relatively speaking, this is oh, it's less and less percentage. These are home run picks. Yeah. TJD is dirt cheap, dirt cheap. For so the please of the go it's look. Ridiculous. Look at he's the, our Nas Reed. Sorry, Rich. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I mean, let's just take a look at Phoenix for a sec. <laughs> I mean, they <laughs> mean. They're still in the playoffs, Rich. <laughs> yeah, but like they got to make some decisions. Like, I mean, like when you have something like this, you damn well better win the championship or be in the finals. Because then you got some tough decisions because you, you don't really have, you know, talent up and coming. This one is is like the Rudy Gobert, 43 million. That's just like, I look at that and I go, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure glad we have the salary cap table we have. And then even Conley's making 10 million, you know. Wait a minute. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns' salary is going up by 13 million next year. Oh, yeah. My yeah. goodness. I mean, these are... So then you look down here and you oh, these guys... Well, who? What? Even Jaden McDaniels is going to yeah. go up by $19 million. <laughs> That's why, see, that when you understand salary caps, like, honestly, your enjoyment of the NBA just goes up so much more because you get it. You get these things. You, you don't need to do the whole, oh, what did he say on Twitter thing or what did Stephen A. Smith say? Like all of this knowledge takes up that brain space. Wouldn't you rather have that than, you know, it's like you, you're you looking for something to fill the content pipeline. It's that. No, it's nice going, oh, what you just, without even having to look, going, what you just said, oh, oh that guy's making this for that many years. That doesn't seem like it's reasonable. Oh, that's actually a good idea because we can afford that and that, you know, whatever. Because you've yeah. looked around and you've seen so many comparables. It's just like in, yeah. uh, it's just like in uh, venture capital. How how like Facebook gets funded, whatever they got funded in the first couple round. It's all based on comparables, just like this. Mm -hmm. Clay Thompson salary next season, based on comparables. Are gonna also obviously what he gets offered. Comparables and what he gets offered. It could also be what he wants for his career. If one of the things is, you know, uh, a million per point averaged, uh, that's still a good chunk of money. And uh, maybe he's saying, well, I want to, you know, look, if I'm coming off the bench and, and all that, I want to be able to give this team the flexibility we need to for me to be able to play until 40 and keep winning till we're old we're actually old you know um the warriors are in a good position in terms of the future in a lot of ways uh 
I am tired of losing, though, man. Rough last two seasons. Yeah. So whatever it takes, whatever it takes for anybody to to get this team where it needs to go, whoever starts, whoever comes off the bench. Um, you have to imagine that it's it's kind of silly to complain about your role for not having enough, whether you're too young or too old, when there's not 10 years left, unfortunately, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we're in a really, really good position mentally, financially, in terms of flexibility, in terms of talent, in terms of youth, in terms of experience, all the type of stuff. Yeah, it's a shame we can translate that into more than a play and loss. Excuse me. Well, oh well. Excuse me. 2021, though, Rich, right? If I had told you after that Memphis game we're winning the title next year, it would have been insane, right? It would have been totally insane. Losing to the Lakers and yeah. Memphis and getting kicked out of the playoffs as the eighth seed. We got kicked out of the playoffs by the ninth seed. That would have been insane thinking we were going to win the title the next year. But we have all the opportunity in the world. Really. There's no other team like this. We're still the most talented team in the league. Sorry. I know that's insane, but we are. We know the group that has the young guys and the veterans that the Warriors have. You know? And... Maybe it's time to adjust to the league, too, a little bit, you know, uh, in some way. But uh, still have a great coach. He's, no one's going to say that other than us here tonight. Uh, Actually, they say that around the league. It's just the Warriors, casuals. The media, I meant, yeah. Crazy. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. If you can find Red Arbach, yeah, okay. But we got we got a Hall of Fame coach. We got Hall of Fame players. We have incredible talents. Um, we've had to rebuild the last three years because of the second apron and because of Jordan Poole, CP3, trade, and, and all that type of stuff. But uh, – I mean, come on, man. We we got to get number five at least, you know. Just, yeah. Steph and Kobe, they're you know. <sighs> yeah, got to. You know? It's so hard. Yep, it's so hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. It can't be that hard if we've done it four times. <laughs> What's five anyway? You know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Man. See, Milo, Milo rebounded, man. We we cross. Oh, I know. Good, good nice. call. We we crossed six hours. I didn't even realize. Oh, oh, man. we're almost at six. Twenty. Six fifteen. It's twenty almost. Yeah. What a tough loss. Oh, look at that poll. So close. Yep. Right. Hundred seventeen votes too. I know that's a lot. Of course, I started the thing way long time ago this doesn't even add up to 100 percent. that's how close it was <laughs> 20 and 39 is 59 plus 40 is 99 percent. nice uh okay why don't i go through some comments that i that i was typing in there so that i can time stamp them right now to say that i talked about them Let's see uh there was a mention of how Boston made a big trade mm. last year, but it's like two of them, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. so one was Porzingis had had to become available. Yeah. To do mm -hmm. that, and then the second thing was Damian Lillard. I'm sorry, where where did they get Porzingis from again? Washington. Washington. Right. Right. Yeah. So and and then the second thing that happened was Damian Lillard. Asked for a trade, and then Milwaukee was like, "Okay, we'll we'll try that," which then freed up Drew Holiday. So, yep. um, in Portland. So, like, you never. That know. was in the preseason. He actually played a preseason game with Portland, didn't he? 
or he was on the team. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it was like it was like right near the beginning of the season. So, um, if you wanted to improve this roster next year, and and this is super debatable, but like, I wonder if there's anything you can do with the Wiggins contract out there. But it depends who's out there, who's available, and what you would want to do. But um, you know, maybe maybe just say uh, I don't know. Let's let Dunn Levy do it. But what do you think about Wiggs' contract, D? Well, uh, you would presumably be looking at another contender, probably, who I think would value Wiggins more than a rebuilding team. Like, rebuilding team would value a Kamingo type. We're not trading Kamingo because that would be financially ridiculous, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, at least not on his own, you know. And I think Wiggins would be pretty valuable for a lot of these other teams. I really do. I think it would be a huge help for Milwaukee, for instance. Um, yeah. Or uh, or anyone, really. Almost anyone in the playoff. The Lakers, he would be yeah. valuable for them. He'd be valuable for us, too. Um, so. Yeah, I think we have. Yeah, we have a lot of players. Would you ever. Huh. I don't know. I don't know what to do. It's a tough one. The mu mercurial one. Yep. So I'm back at. Oh, let's let Dunleavy do his job. That's uh, too hard. We we have to wait for the season to end to talk about this stuff. Is the real thing. Yeah. Because you know, um, Giannis getting swept in the first round versus winning the title. It's, it's just a whole, totally different league. Yep. You know, it's totally different. Yep. So um, I'm willing to trade Wiggins if we get a good piece. Yeah. But I'm not willing to move off of Wiggins for the sake of moving off of him. Yeah, it'd have to be. Unless it means we don't bring Clay back and then do oh, it again. Oh, that totally changes back. everything. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of, lot of moving parts. Uh, yeah. Just going through my notes here. Just As it should be. I uh, mentioned everything. Uh, just looking back at the game, Steph cannot turn the ball over yeah, like he did, uh, but Steve said he needed to do more instead of just uh, basically rely on him and Draymond to come up with stuff on the fly. Mm. Unfortunately, it <laughs> felt like the Lakers series last year, this game, in that it was Steph, and then we didn't have anyone else we could trust to yeah. shoot consistently. Which really sucks because I think if it were a seven game series, game two, we would have adjusted to it. But we don't get that. Exactly. We didn't win enough games. Yep. Uh, there's another note here. Uh, the whole thing about going back to the, oh, yeah, we didn't handle the punch, uh, you know, Draymond punching Jordan Poole the right way. And I just said, look, <laughs> I'm just, let's not spend our energy on, on the, all of those what ifs. Oh, we have to look at the at the that, progress that right now. This year. Door. That's a lot of cl behind closed door stuff. You're you're judging a lot of non transparent things. So that's so now even further distant past. Uh, let's not get too overcome by this loss that we have to go back and dissect and find someone to blame for something. And then what else? Um, yeah, I just think tonight, if there's anything good about this loss, is that it's going to really force Steph, Draymond, and Clay to just really think about this. Like, what what could I have done better? What are the some of the patterns that we kept seeing? And what about Kaminga? You know? Uh, yeah, Kaminga too. Yeah, exactly. Where was he? Everybody. Tonight. Well, he, he was he he did he did show up a little. But what were her, his totals? Um, it's just that uh, he didn't have a counter move like drive right in, seven boards. Drive right yeah. into two guys and hope there's a foul call. That's not the right plan. Like you gotta, I guess I guess it was that I'm don't really care about his. This is how good JK is. I don't really care about his stats. 
He's the second option for this team. His gravity is what I'm looking for. And I didn't see I didn't see his gravity. You know, we're like, oh my God, yeah, this is going to the lane Sabonis. again. They they stuck Sabonis on him, so they he just let him shoot. Sabonis, Sabonis can't and, block shots on Jonathan Kaminga. You know, yeah, but if, but so Jonathan would try to drive and then he'd drive into two guys. And like so at that point, you would need to make a coaching adjustment, and they did, but it was too late. You saw the uh the tic tac toe to JK one or two times, maybe it's only once. Yeah. And it, it just we're just not good at these one game or things. We need a whole seven game series. And then that goes back to what somebody else was saying earlier, like that. It's just like this team is built for the playoffs. The problem is the playoffs is a little bit to get to the playoffs, you got to win regular season games. And just like Draymond when he was on the podium. Yeah. We're 0 and 3 in playoff and play in games. 0 and 3. Oh, wow. Yeah. Have we already played three? Yep. Lakers, Memphis, Kings. Oh, right. Lakers and Memphis in the same year. Yep. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. So, but it, it, we saw some humility up there on the podium from Steph, from Steve, and Draymond. They're all yeah. saying, you know, things like, yeah, we got like Draymond saying like those are those are things we gotta. I can name six losses already, and, mm -hmm. and we gotta we gotta be able to win some of those. Um, so he realizes it, and Steve basically said he could have done a better job. And then uh, same thing with Steph saying that oh we gotta we gotta evolve, and. Uh, I also want to say, well, thank you, Mike Brown, for the wake up call. <laughs> We're going to really need to. We got some good, good film to go. Nobody's going to want to look at the film, but they will. I bet you Chris Paul already watched the game over. You know, he's that dedicated. Oh, yeah, definitely. I can see. So, yeah, we got to, we got to win regular season games. And yet, like I've been saying for the last couple weeks, um this roster oh man it's like we were 27 and 11 i guess 27 and 12 now oh yeah. a tremendous stat i saw somewhere on youtube hmm. that is very confusing when you see it but we were we were 18 and 23 we were 18 and 23 and then we were 28 and 13 is that weird number play yeah yeah crazy huh we were 18 um, 23 and then we went 28 and 13. over 41 games right so it's the first second yeah. half of the season yeah isn't that yeah. nuts what a yeah. weird number play but yeah so so how do you judge this team do we do we go into the off season and oh man it's tough this is tough well, I'm going to try and not judge them based off yesterday's game. Uh, right. I think about but what I would like to see, what I would like to talk about going forward. Um, oh. 28 and 13 is not bad, though. You know. Yeah. It's really not. Yeah. And um, so then that's supposed to get you to like 50 wins, presumably, and then you're not in the play, and then you get to play – a seven game series and recover from no we're going for the number one seed next year forget the play in you never start off oh i hope we're not in the play in we're going for the number one seed you know as as in every year we try that and uh yeah you just have to build a team around how can we be the best team in the league again i think we're the ta most talented team in the league oh celtics they have eight guys nine guys you have 13 four i mean d santos isn't a terrible player you know he's our 14th yeah. man uh 13th i guess lester probably or gee would be yeah. 13th or 14th uh but i don't know about 7 and 48 uh, but uh the road record we had this year we're just gonna go back 
going to go back to it. The road record we had this year was, let me make sure I got this right. Uh, Warriors 25 and six. Oh, okay. So 25 and 16 road record. Um, plus the 33 wins we had at home in 2023. So that's a 58 win season. We can, we can put that together, especially going into next season with all the things that we, that we learned from this season, you know, which is so important. Us. So it's a little wild to say after getting blown out and eliminated from playoffs by uh, a team missing two very two important players, wasn't it? It was uh, Malik Monk and who else? Kevin Herter. Kevin Herter, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's never happening again. Uh, Seventy-three nine. Well, never say never, but uh, yeah, well, they got unlikely. They got to expand to Seattle and another place or or two to even out the talent. <laughs> oh, that's true. There will be an expansion draft too, as well. Too deep of a league. Oh, and then somebody was like, uh, somebody on Twitter, like, I, I don't think I'm wrong about this, but like, um, next season. Oh, maybe we can get Paige Buchers, Buck Beckers, Beckers, Beckers. I think to the Warriors and like expansion. No, no, that, that's not how it works. You, you don't like, you don't have like twelve or how many number of teams they have. Like eleven or, or the WNBA team. Eleven or twelve. How many? How many WNBA teams? Sixteen, twelve. I think there's. I think it's an odd number. Well, yeah, with Bay with Area the, makes with it a Bay number. Area coming in. Yeah. So I think it's 12, it'll be 13 or something like that. You should trade for Caitlin Clark. Uh, yeah, that's impossible. But yeah, um, I, not, I think he's just playing. But, anyways, they're like, oh, yes, well, um, you know, if we got the number one pick, do, uh, you know, get the, do we get the number one pick? Bro, they've never done that in any sports league. You're the new team and you get the number one pick? Come on. It's an I think run. I think with the NBA expansion, you're given a certain number of lottery. I wanted to tweet back, "Were you born yesterday?" Like, come and, on, right? and then a, and then teams will select one or two players or something like that. Yeah, so, uh, exactly. lottery expansion to be part of the lottery expansion. That's an expansion draft. You don't get the number one pick. Huh. It's well, not. I think they get I think they get a lottery pick, so it could happen, but it's not likely because they don't have a high percentage. And they're probably going to get it next year. I anyway. don't even know yeah. if they get a lottery pick. Did, did the Miami Heat or Orlando Magic get a lottery pick? That's before I was born. Sorry, I don't think so. Yeah, it was. You get your, you get your. Not you. I oh. don't think they got a, a lottery pick. <laughs> the lottery didn't exist back then. But like, <laughs> you, you. Well, just you have got, to think. Uh, got admitted into its business. You got admitted into the league. You're the thirteenth team. We are not giving you all of these things. You're, yeah. you're supposed to be just be happy to be in the league. You are starting from scratch. We're not going to hand you a winning team. In any, if anything, we are doing everything that we can to not give you anything. The Charlotte Bobcats were given the, the minimum. Pick we'll the give you the draft. minimum to be competitive. That's not embarrassing. That doesn't look bad on us. That's fair. But we're not getting shit. The Golden State at WNBA team is gonna be a struggle for a couple of years. So, well, oh I, my gosh, I looked this up <laughs> and expansion teams do, did get uh, lottery picks sometimes. Yeah, uh, right. and we'll for see. instance, the Bar the Bobcats were given the fourth overall pick in the 04 draft. I don't know if it's the same oh, in the that's WNBA. Not bad. That's yeah. not bad at all. Yeah. So I think it's I think they get a certain number of lottery balls then or, or oh there you whatever. go whatever all right all right but not like a top oh, number shoot. one Bobcats percentage of uh, yeah they were good. that was 20 21 years ago though we hey man we're gonna have we're who gonna else, have a WNBA team to cover though man who huh? else came in yeah we're just covering I mean it's great to to have Caitlin Clark and all of these other 
stars that are getting more notoriety now to mm -hmm. come to the bay to play a game let alone yeah what a okay. great year it feels like this is a huge year for uh, at least women's college basketball i yeah. think with the draft with with kate and clark and angel reese they and, got, uh, uh, the numbers were like 2.4 million people watched the wnba draft and not even a million watched uh mlb's draft or nhl they got like five hundred thousand or six hundred thousand, and it's not it's not marketing. It's it's that the talent is there this year to be excited, you know, because you yeah. you've seen these players and you know they're going to be great. And and yeah. let's go Warriors is going to have a WNBA team to cover during the off season in the future. And what what about during, during the NBA off season? When off -season. you look up the Bobcats, what other team was an expansion team that year? They just came by themselves. They came by themselves, I believe. They made it number. We 30. had an odd number. Yeah. Strange. Okay. Number twenty nine in league, and then the Bobcats came, and then the gotcha. Sonics moved. But uh, gotcha. The Raptors and Grizzlies in ninety five were given the sixth and seventh overall picks. That's not bad. Okay. And we're restricted from picking first overall for the first four years in the NBA, but that was so long ago. If I say so gotcha. myself, that I'm sure the rules are different. We'll see. And there was some before that. Well, that's not too bad. Yeah, especially considering uh, this year's draft was pretty amazing. I mean, in my opinion, like Angel Reese going number seven. Yeah, I had no idea there were you know four other awesome college players. Who went to? Was it Cameron Brink? Brink, right, right. That that's uh, nuts. And then I was surprised that's the player Steph was talking about in his live stream, right? Not live stream. In or his. Instagram, so huge, huge difference. He goes live stream that I wouldn't that, know. <laughs> that a live stream is wild for Steph yeah. to do, but anyway, um, I had no idea Cameron Brink was going to go second, and then I looked it up. Mm. Everybody was expecting her to go second. Yeah. So wow. So that type of player, you know, and, and a good fit for the Sparks, and then barely. I I only watched like a couple of Caitlin Clark games and yet the Chicago sky, they got angel Reese and then yeah. they got the South Carolina center Cordosa. And mm. I saw that game and she was dominant. And yeah. I saw a little short about that. They, they were competitors and other teammates. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Love and they used to be rivals in high school. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Or maybe no, they, they, maybe they were high school or well, LSU and South Carolina are both in the SEC, so yeah, they were they they played against each other for sure. So man, Chicago Sky got two inside players, so that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to be able to watch the WNBA and go, oh, I know her, and I know her, and I know her, her, and her. Yeah, so pretty awesome. Definitely. Pretty awesome. Definitely. And also, I think one great thing about women's basketball, women's college basketball is that there's there's not that blue blood thing going on where south carolina if it was only in like men's ncaa you probably wouldn't have heard of them that much but with women's yep. college basketball these other colleges uconn started off that way of course um but these other somewhat smaller colleges have a chance at becoming really incredible basketball programs over the next over the next couple of years. And I think that's, I think at least for people who like college basketball and for American viewers, Canadian viewers, um, that's probably a really big um, thing for those teams. So you have that built in like Steph Curry, like mid major, you know, David's or, or Clay Thompson, you know, with uh, uh, Wazoo. Is it? Wazoo, yeah, which is Western Washington University. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, Pullman, um, near the Idaho border. <laughs> Crazy. But uh, I, I really appreciate that, you know, because those college fan bases, they're, they're, they're so loyal, you know, for the little, little schools too, especially. Um, I think that's, I think that's really cool. And the number seven pick, as we know, is, is kind of a lucky number. Yeah, if you had the right idea. Yeah, yeah. Also, also, uh, I don't know who we're talking about. Who who was the third pick? The other one from South Carolina. Oh, was that Cardosa? Might have been. 
anyway. Um, I thought they had the fourth and seven. Uh, the other player on South no, Carolina, seven, yeah. uh, Full Wiley. And then you got Juju Watkins mm -hmm. on USC. Oh, man. I tell you, there's some good talent coming out. Hey, we might be able to get one of them, uh, you know, further on down because you figure they're they're probably want to stay in college due to the NIL for a little bit, at least two years, maybe three. And so Golden State will be in the league by then and, you know, maybe have a bad year and then have a really good pick or whatever, and you never know. That would, that would be amazing because – uh, full Wiley on on South Carolina. Oh my goodness, you can already see it. She's got. I mean, that's a potential generational talent on the women's side. She's doing moves like, oh my goodness, like she's she's going into traffic on a fast break and she's going behind the back. Like you don't you don't see other women really do that. That's like a Jamal Crawford type. You remember when he would go into the lane and then cross over? And no one was doing and that she's back a in the day. Freshman. Yeah, that's crazy. 18 God. years and old. I haven't even seen Juju Watkins play, and they're saying that she's amazing too. And it's just like if she's oh my goodness, the talent is just reaching tremendous heights right now. So good time to have a franchise. Definitely. Yeah. Seems like it. Then we, we then we get two swings every year, right? <laughs> in terms of who we're who are following? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, content, be, you're you're long, man. Yeah, change everything to let's go Golden State. <laughs> yeah. No, no. We the people will know. Maybe I'll get. Yeah, hopefully. You think so? The same colors, don't you think? Lakeham would do that, right? Like keep the same color scheme type thing. One day, Chicago Sky kind of already have a lot of glory. Really? You know? Yeah, I think so. Oh, damn. Yeah. Okay. Well, that should be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's go, Warriors. That transcends time. We're not going to do anything with that, but yeah. we got to yeah. figure it out. Got some time. Got another year, probably less. Yeah, whenever less than either. Whenever they're going to figure out the name. Oh, we can't get rid of LGW though. Yeah, right? he wouldn't want to do a different channel. So nah. Yeah, it's almost two a.m. in California. Uh, no. It's still going. That's right. Uh, well, I'm I'm ready. What about you? Six forty-three. I don't know if I can go another seventeen minutes. Mm. It'd be really tough. I'd be willing to try if you want to, but also. Well, next next good. live is going to be Friday. It's just for the hell of it. It's yeah. going to be at 7 times the game. Do you know? Yeah, I think it's 6.30 Western. Oh, okay. But check, make sure I'm not off of that. Oh, well, too tired to check. I'll do it. 6.30. Um, for uh, sack six thirty Western on the nineteenth. Done deal. Yeah, I mean, what else you got going on? Might as well. I have to work, but all right. Well, I'll be Warriors here. Aren't playing, so maybe not do play by play, but be here to watch it with everybody. Again, please stick around. We'll we'll figure something out cool for you guys to keep coming back to. Yeah. So. Uh well, I guess it's time for the just us. Last time. Oh, this season. Nike Trail has the right shoe for it. Yeah. Sorry. We uh, ready? One more time for Decky, baby. Yep.
Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That's pretty cool. Brate. And Brate actually had one more note in here. The latest number on Clay, uh, what he's worth in the marketplace. Bobby Marks said mm -hmm. $30 million. He also said OKC is secretly interested. Um, but I I think I think what what you pay him is what you pay Draymond, and that's fair. And uh, as is fair. So I think that's what will get done. Despite all these, you know, okay, yeah, sure. OKC might be willing to pay 30 million, but like I think he'll stay for 25. That's what you gotta do. Yeah. That's my opinion. Um, lot is gonna be a lot of stuff on we're offering him more and it's kind of just trying to pry him away. But whatever it takes to keep clay, I hope that's what we yeah. do. Yeah. All right, everybody. See you Friday. Friday. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Dean. Right back at you.